YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. We've got the Sky Trader. 1.4 meter by FMS. Beautiful lights, beautiful sunset. We're gonna fly this thing right now on 3S 2200 Gen 2. This plane does one thing really good and that is looking beautiful. Look at that guys. About 60% throttle there. Back to about 50 now, out of the takeoff flaps. It's about 70% throttle in that nice climb. I'm gonna go up over this tree line and then duck down. Takeoff flaps. Beautiful forward facing lights. Boy, this plane does really nice in calm conditions. It's extremely beautiful, very scale looking. If you were a passerby, you would swear it's a real plane. We're doing this flight here because the sun just went over the horizon there. It actually went down right where the plane is now, between those two tree lines. So we got a real late sunset because of that tonight. Love being able to see through the windows on these planes. Try to get this thing in an attitude where you can see that. Even in this sky, you can see it. Oh, that's so gorgeous. Very bright LEDs. Very helpful for orientation. Mm -hmm. Love when I dip below the tree line and we end up with uh, just enough of a hint to tell us what, what we're doing. That is a motorcycle, not a manned aircraft, by the way. We've set this plane up with Crow. Before we lose our lighting, we're gonna go around in the bowl. We'll try a, a landing here. Landing flaps. And we're gonna do a go around because uh, I was so taken by the beauty that I forgot to get it lined up. The 75% pass there, just absolutely gorgeous. And yes, it will do things like this, but I don't recommend you do it because I don't think the airframe is really into that sort of thing too much. I mean, it certainly wasn't designed to do that. It was designed to be absolutely gorgeous and make you think a real plane is about to crash in your yard. Okay, full landing flaps here. Yeah, right, like I'm gonna quit on that. <laughs> so guys, not sure if you can tell this, but uh, out of the takeoff flaps now, she really speeds up when you take off the flaps. But why would you shut off the flaps in this plane? It just flies so dang good with the flaps. About a 60% throttle here. We'll drop it down to about 40. Go back here between the trees. Real close to that tree, actually. We'll take this other low point as our path forward. You doing good on those passes there, camera crew? Mm, I think so. Awesome. I can see it this time, that helps. Yeah, guys, we filmed this in all three lighting conditions that we experience on a sunny day. Insane light from behind, insane light from in front, and then beautiful sunset. That uh, forward-facing LED is a lifesaver in this condition. Yeah, it is. Because that was a pretty big blind spot there. 
Look at that anti-crash beacon on the tail. So, so cool. Lot of rudder to complete that turn there. Try to keep it nice and flat. Absolutely love the way this thing looks. Let's try just coming in for a greasy landing here. Chop the throttle about eight, nine percent. Ah, the camera crew blocked my view as I was touching down. Sorry. Can you move to your left, please, so that doesn't happen again? Thank you. Perfect. You're better there. I won't touch down at that angle now. Grass hops for the first time. I have intentionally stayed out of the grass with this thing because I just do not want to dirty it. It's so dang beautiful. Yeah. Really, that was about 80% input on the rudder there to keep that turn coordinated. So basically we just get her set up at the right angle and then we coordinate with the rudder. Hey, can you be beside me like usual? Thank you. There you go, good job. The camera crew and I are usually perfectly in sync and never have disagreements about anything. <laughs> never. So, gotta stay in your throttle if you use crow like I am. Look at that. Oh, that is so cool. The crow makes this thing a daydream to land, but it also changes the angle of attack quite a bit. So you can set it on the mains without getting that nasty stall right around ground effect. Let's check it out here. I'm really having to give it throttle to get here now. Out of the flaps altogether. Let's show you full speed climb. Shooting the moon there. It'll do loops and stuff, but I'd keep them nice and wide. That's about as much G-loading as you want to do on this frame. As you can see, why would you do anything else? Because it looks so stinking good doing it. It's like they just made the stop in Columbia and they just have to get all the way to where they're going real quick stay under the radar under the radar folks that's the name of the game just a short jaunt from ecuador <laughs> ow <laughs> you guys you wouldn't have believed me if i didn't do it guys you'll see she'll bite you if you're not perfect ow oh e they can hear it. Otherwise they're gonna be like, what's wrong with them? Is Brian having a stroke again? I think they've... Maybe a stroke of genius. Been decided. <laughs> so guys, this plane if you're thinking about getting it by FMS, it sure does show well, I can tell you that. But she'll bite you on the landings if you don't stick them. They better be greasy and delicious. Otherwise, you're gonna bounce just like I just did. Did you see the uh, bug zapper come on as I was going by? Oh no, I didn't. See, I think I've thoroughly jinxed myself now. Mm-hmm, apparently. So folks, we had to set our gains to four times on this AS3X and this AR630, not 631. So just like a real one, you basically got to fly it into the ground, folks. 
How you doing there, camera crew? Mm-hmm. I'm good. You didn't get hit, did you? <laughs> no, I'm good. Okay. Out of the flaps all together, just to show you why we need flaps. Watch how fast she comes. Look at this. Look at this, guys. <laughs> that was out of the throttle until the last bit when I needed to get flying again. That's why we got flaps on this, baby. Because if you don't have flaps, you're going to have a pretty narrow flight envelope. Oh, jeez. Grass ops for sure there. Good thing we got a spring-loaded nose gear. I guess we'll test that one now, huh? You would have almost thought I did that on purpose. No. P please think that I did, people. No, I'm not trying to grab the wire, just so you know. I'm going to say... I don't even see that right now. Feel. Drive by feel. Hmm. That's how I film. Well, you do a pretty good job driving by feel then. Or filming by film. Filming by feel. Feel. We'll slip this time. A slip and a bounce. Right over the power line. Oh, I suppose I should probably roll it over on its belly just so you can see that it does. It'll fly upside down, but I think it looks pretty lame being upside down like that. And yes, it'll do big juicy loops if you're into that sort of thing. But again, I think that's pretty lame. If people that are watching think it's real, they're gonna think it's not real anymore. Well, I've definitely tried grass ops more on this flight than I have the whole time we've been flying this plane. Mm -hmm. This will be the third flight. Got me again. Nice slip on the lineup and then... I think I know what's going on. It's the coolest it's been since we flew. Mm -hmm. I wonder if the air is just different because it was hot both other times. Mm -hmm. Like hot, like 90. And I wonder if we were almost dealing with a little bit thinner air now. Beautiful, guys. That time I put on the crow at the end. As you can see, the lights are very easy to see. Mm -hmm. Nice scale takeoff. A little bit of, a little bit of down elevator just to keep it dragged out. Yes. I do find that I like to lift one wing to take off with this plane, not just because of the nature of our runway, but because it helps to get the thing lifted conveniently. See what I'm talking about on the mains? Mm -hmm. There's no ground clearance. You got about as much ground clearance on the tail as you do with the prop, which is about three quarters of an inch on a perfect roll or a perfect flare, I should say, not roll. Sorry, guys. You're well past your timer, correct? Oh, am I? <laughs> I better check it. I'm 1445 on video. Really? Yep. Oh, I'm two minutes. I'm two minutes and three past. Whoops. I must have mixed it. I must have missed it. We'll pause and go get it. Okay. So we're gonna taxi it back. 
Not sure if you guys are picking me up yet, but. Should be. One of the best aspects of this model is just how beautiful it is on the ground. And as you can see, it flies. It's very, very orderly in the air, but it demands near perfection for landing. And our conditions are amazing right now for flying. FMS did a really nice job on this model. I think it's been out for some time. 1400 millimeters of pure beauty. Definitely not the easiest plane we've ever built. The build left us kind of scratching our heads on a couple of different steps, but we were able to get it done. Stabilizer also did the same thing to us. The AR630 gave us a little bit of fit because it misallocated its position. And yet ultimately we just had to redo it. We made an assignment in error to one of the ailerons because as you can see, we set up crow. Because there's crow, that means that we had flaps on a Y cable and ailerons independently controlled. One of the flap channels was on what would have been the gear switch or the gear channel. And as a result, we made an assignment of the flight mode on the same channel within the Ford programming. So that caused us some fits. You'll see it if you watch the radio setup part of the unbox build radio setup. Look how beautiful that white light is. Chrome spinner is gorgeous, actually perfectly balanced, no problems whatsoever. You can probably see a reflection of the camera crew in it. I was very nervous that that was not gonna be good, but it turned out to be really good. The prop has been perfectly balanced. The spinner is wonderful. Very simple mechanism on that. The cowl does come off. We chose to tape it on in addition to the two magnets that hold it on just because we don't see any reason to have it flopping around. The FMS logo on the upper left wing comes applied. Otherwise I probably would have left it off. Not that I have anything wrong with the FMS logo. I just think it looks so scale otherwise. I'm sure it could be taken off. Really flat, matte finish on all the decals. Super we nice. love the way they look. Yep. The two Ford facing white lights are definitely a very high K, like 6K probably. And so they're almost a purplish blue hue. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, very, very happy with the lights. And then the anti-crash beacon is a little bit speedy on its, re, uh, on its flash rate. Putting the tail on was a real nightmare because of that red anti-crash beacon. So we basically made it through. Those two antenna on top, you may want to think about not putting them on because it is hard to get the batteries in because it is a bottom loader. There's no straps included on this plane for putting your battery in. So I took and mounted some I made a loop that holds the battery and then I can just stick it in because as you guys know, I don't really like to put Velcro onto the batteries directly. We normally don't taxi nearly this much, but I just can't get enough of looking at this thing. It's so pretty. Love the forward facing lights, how bright and intense they are when they're forward. They actually are both in perfect alignment, which is really helpful when you're coming in on final because you can actually tell where you're going. Unlike many times you'll get these LEDs from some of the economy manufacturers and they're kind of pointed wherever they got them when they stuck them in there. These ones are jigged in nicely. Although the red and green are not omnidirectional as I'd like to see them be, they're omnidirectional enough to be able to see the red from the opposite side as you can see now. And the green is true too. Very, very bright when it's pointed straight at you. The only thing missing on this is a white tail light on the back of the rudder, which would really make for a beautiful lighting package. Again, you can't have everything on every plane. Even a real plane wouldn't have all the features you want necessarily, but very satisfied with the way this thing 
behaves, how it flies. We just had a lot of hiccups along the way and you'll note that from the very long unbox build and radio setup. I would say it was worth it though. This plane is beautiful. And it is most definitely a scale flying plane. I would call it a scale flying replica. If you want a fun flying plane, get the 1220 Ranger. The 1220 millimeter Ranger flies better in most conditions. It does not have flaps. It does not have LEDs. It's very simple, but I can tell you this, it's easier to fly. If you're a beginner, get that instead. If you're an experienced pilot or an intermediate pilot, you're gonna be fine with this. If you're a beginner and you insist on having this, you're gonna be very frustrated with yourself and you're gonna think you can never land a plane. So I would definitely get the 1.2 or the 1220 more specifically Ranger. Very, very good choice for a beginner pilot. Safe works great, AS3X works great. We do have this set up with safe. We didn't show it much on this video, but we do have three flights. We'll share all three. Not sure which one's gonna show up best on camera. But as you can see, we've been taxiing around for another six minutes now. Mm -hmm. Or excuse me, uh, the, yeah, about six and a half minutes. Just love the way this plane uh, looks in the sky. It does everything I wanted it to, which is look gorgeous and be a good scale looking plane. Um, we had a number of different issues. We go over them in our other flights, so we'll just let you watch those. Obviously, I hit the grass. Yep, just the grass marked the plastic is all. No big deal, I wiped it off already. The spring-loaded nose gear obviously saved our tail. Yep, as you can see, still working good. Instrument, do the instruments glow? No. no? Okay. You can see them, though, still in this lighting. Yeah. I just really, really like the way this thing looks, guys. And if you're all about scale appearances on aircraft, this plane is definitely up your alley. If you're looking for a great flying plane that's super fun, sport, aerobatic plane, don't get this one. Get the 1220. It's way better in that sense. It's way more forgiving on the nose gear. And also, if you're going to do grass ops, I think you'll be more inclined to have good luck with that. But even still, I think you could get away with flying off the grass with this. I'm just not going to be doing it because I don't want to clean it. The foam never cleans quite the way you want it to. Yeah. Also, the antenna, because they're up here, it does make it kind of challenging to get to the battery. There's two clickers that you pull in and then the bottom comes off. And you can see the way I Velcroed in my battery. And then that's where we put our receiver right there. Our receiver thinks it's positioned the other way, but yet we have all the corrections going in the correct direction. We're in four times gain and we're just a little bit over half for our stabilization uh, gyro settings here, okay? This is where I have my gain set. 2200 3S, you can see where I've got it set. So it's just kind of the edge of it is right there on the edge of the black. Um, they only give you one point. They don't give you a range for your CG, which is perfectly fine in my opinion. Just tell us one point, we can make our adjustments. There is an opening back here and you would absolutely be screwed if you didn't have it because it's not very easy at all to get in there. My tape that keeps those wires from getting tangled up, pulled up, so my bad there. I might put a little glue on that to hold them. Um, there's a, I call it a laundry chute that's right there and it goes between the top wing and then down and you can pull your wires through with that. And without that, it would be terrible to get your wires through this plane. And also it hides them nicely mm -hmm. so you can barely see them. Yeah. Very happy with this, but make no mistake guys, this is a scale plane. It is not gonna be an aerobatic plane. Yes, you could do aerobatics with it, but I think you're gonna break your wing. The support stops about here. Then it gets a little bit flimsy. Okay, so just be aware. Also, I ran a long piece of clear tape here all the way down to about here. And then I ran a tape here and a tape here. You can't see it in video, but if it was bright, you might be able to make it out. Right here is another piece. Long piece here and here. Why? Because these had to be glued in and our glue hadn't set up enough and it wanted to yank out on just one of the wings. So again, not a deal breaker, but a little bit disappointing in flight performance world. I'd like to not see that. Uh, definitely wouldn't let that stop you from buying this plane because it is awesome. Back here, the tail is glued. The horizontal stabilizer is glued. 
Then there's a wire that gets pulled up through. Then your vertical stabilizer gets glued down. This is glued. All the surfaces, all the control horns are installed with two screws each, every one of them. One, two, three, four, five, six of them. Not a big deal, but it does take a lot of time, so be aware. And you have to build every single clevis onto the wing. These two come out of the fuse by default, but you have to work them out so your control surfaces line up. Very nice control surfaces, very nice decals, very nice finish on everything, but fit and finish was not so tidy on the wing, in my opinion, because of these struts. I think we had a little bit of a molding issue here, and I think that's why we had trouble getting them to, uh, getting them to bolt together. So we'll see. Might've been a fluke. I kind of doubt it though. So just be prepared to deal with that. Not a big deal, just a little clear tape fixed it. Other than that, really, really fit and finish issue here too. I noticed there was a crack exposed. Nothing major, definitely forgivable. Piece of white tape would cover that up, no problem. You'd never know it was there. But in terms of stock performance, the plane flies great. The landing gear are super solid. Uh, very forgiving in the air, but not forgiving on landings. So if you're gonna fly this as a beginner, and you're flying off of really well manicured grass, I think you'll be fine. But if you're flying off of a paved strip, you're gonna probably think you're gonna have trouble landing anything because this thing has to be, I mean, you gotta be perfect to get that thing down without a bounce. And it does have noisy gear. That's not uncommon for wheels and wheel pants on RC planes. We've seen it on a bunch of other planes uh, that are in this class and it's not a deal breaker for me at all. Um, that is a lot of information, guys. We did three flights on this one, mostly because we really want you to get a feel for it. We want you to take yourself, if you're on the fence, get off the fence, look in the video description. You can buy this for your very, for your very own. Uh, go through our unbox build and radio setup and see where we ran into problems. You can avoid those problems. And then our flap settings, I think was the only thing that we actually changed. So we'll go down to flap system. And we just kind of adjusted those. We ended up going with the crow configuration where the ailerons went up, as you can see there with 100. If you wanted to set those downward, I feel like it makes the roll rate so anemic on landing that it gets a little bit scary. So I was like, whatever, we'll just go crow. And like tonight, in this calm, still, denser air as it's been cooled down from day, uh, from, from this morning and this late afternoon, I felt like we could have reduced that from 100 down to like 50 and we would have had almost better results because we were sinking too fast. That being said, once you get the mains down, you can turn it on and it'll just fall right on the ground beautifully. Um, other than that, good scale pilot, good scale details. It's a great scale plane. Get one for yourself. If you wanna support us in other ways, we've got Patreon and PayPal listed as, low, uh, as well below. And then if you don't like this plane, there's millions of other choices. And when I say millions, I mean like 30 other choices that are all very good. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching guys, come back for more. YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. Look at this beautiful box. You've already seen it. We haven't. This is the Sky Trainer 182, also known as the Cessna 182 by FMS, 1400 beautiful millimeters long. This is a plug and play. Very excited for this one. You may have noticed we've been doing a lot of Cessnas lately, <laughs> <laughs> but I've been waiting for this one because I'm super excited. Oh yeah, look at that beauty, super scale. We are most, well, not we, I am into mostly scale planes. And uh, so when I get a scale plane, it makes my day. Ooh, look at that fancy dance. Three bladed propeller. Okay, so this flies on, it's got a 40 amp ESC, six nine gram servos. We do have flaps installed on this, finally. Uh, 60 millimeters back on the center of gravity. It flies on 11.1, 2225 C. So we've got two batteries set out here, a three and four S, I'm not sure which one. Uh, we'll use, we'll probably go with a 3S. It should be fine. It's amazing. This is a big plane to run on a 3S pack. Um, I was amazed that that yellow Ranger over there, the 1220 runs on a 1300 3S. 
So it's just, it's kind of incredible. Very efficient planes. This thing runs on an 850 milliamp. So, and that's a 2S. That little Ranger runs on a 2S. So as you can see, we've got beautiful wheel pants here and then a spring loaded uh, nose gear, not a spring nose gear <laughs> like that. <laughs> we were making fun of that. How you uh, like that? No, I don't. <laughs> okay, so this thing has uh, a chrome spinner. It's got a detailed pilot. I'm excited to see this thing. It's a composite main undercarriage and steering nose wheel. Okay, removable EPO cowl. That might be nice. Then we can get to the motor and all that. I think that's kind of a... Serviceability is getting better on these models. This plane's been out for a little bit. Oh, this is a plug and fly. If you get it as a ready to fly, it comes in four different finishes, but most people, excuse me, it comes in ready to fly or plug and fly. Ready to fly would have the reflex, which is the uh, FMS's answer to AS3X. It's a stabilizer. It's nothing, nothing too incredibly special that I know of. And uh, the reflex system is exterior to the receiver, I believe. So I'm not sure how all that works because I haven't ever actually had a reflex in any of our planes, but I've heard some people say that they're great. So I don't know. I can't speak to it because I've never used one. Except technically, I don't know if that's reflex in the Ranger. We got that as a ready to fly. I don't remember seeing that little logo. I don't think it was a reflex. It, it is a stabilizer, but it's got auto leveling and all sorts of stuff. It's kind of like when you get certain planes from Horizon, they call it airware, and then other times it's just straight up safe select and I don't know exactly the delimination between those. Okay, so first thing I notice is that the prop appears to have popped out of its holding position. 11 by six, okay. So that's 11 inches, okay. Six inches of pitch. Beautiful prop, very simple looking. That should work fine. Oh, it's straight. Yes, it's so stupid that we care, and yet it's so annoying looking at the manual that's been bended, bent, bent, bended, bended. Oh, look at that. There's an LED. Nice. That's so cool. And then a simple 1S pH connector. Ooh, I don't like that. There's no control horn in there yet. I do like the decals. I do like the carbon fiber spar on the vertical stabilizer there. Mm -hmm. That is carbon fiber. It could be fiber. It, it might also be fiberglass. It's hard to tell for sure. But this thing is extremely light. Beautiful decals. Mm -hmm. Really looks clean. That's a big LED too, so that mm -hmm. should be good. Assuming that's an anti-crash beacon, so it should flash red. Um, okay, so we have a Horizontal stabilizer. This doesn't seem like this is in the right spot, um, but it's not damaged, so who cares, right? Very strange. Okay, so it looks like some sort of an embedded hinge maybe on this one. It might just be a glue reinforced pinch hinge. It's thick, because it's hard to move. I don't see any mechanism in there, and I don't see anything in this either, so it's flexible. I don't know how I feel about that yet, but to be honest, it kind of depends on how much support we get from the fuse. This thing isn't a really like huge uh, stabilizer, but it is a pretty big elevator. So, I mean, that's a big elevator. I think part of the strength comes from the fact that it's bent. And when, when you have a surface that's otherwise flexible and then you bend it, then that's gonna strengthen the surface. So, I don't know, but it's not always gonna be bent. Sometimes it's straight. Depends on where you're flying. Okay, so what else do we have? Always pull out these, um, they, they use this foam to pack holes. And the reason you need to be careful is because the whole entire landing gear assembly is in there. Looks super nice. Really, really pretty. There's metal that's embedded in that plastic. Show the people at home, that's amazing. Okay, then we have the chrome spinner. We've got a couple of Y cables. And it looks like we've got Linkages, a couple antennas, looks like a few steps. So that's pretty sweet right there. That nut sack is super full. Yeah, it is. And we've got inset nuts and then little spots to receive 
whatever comes out of the fuse, it looks like, and on the wings. Those are wing struts, of course. So it looks like we got a wing joiner here. Let's actually just cut that. That is carbon fiber, I believe, yeah. Sometimes it's really hard to tell the difference between carbon fiber mm -hmm. and fiberglass. Fiberglass is gonna look a lot like the carbon fiber, and if it's a black, uh, a black carbon fiber, then you can usually tell from the way that it cuts on the end, because it'll cut weird. It's also a lot lighter. Ooh, yeah. I love this flat blue. That mm -hmm. is a beautiful color. Nice end numbers. Nasty, nasty reflections are cut down by these matte finish on all the decals. Yep. We've noticed that on a lot of the FMS stuff. Really a good touch. And then obviously this detailed wing. Beautiful. We've got an LED here. I'm assuming that this is going to be a red or green, I would hope, but it's, it's not colored, which I really like, actually. That's mm -hmm. cool. Looks more realistic to me. And then, of course, we've got gear. What? Gear? Why would there be gear? These are for the lights. They must be, yeah, they must have just, oh, this is, those are strut adapters in there, not steps. But this decal covers up nicely. And the thing I like about this is that you can get to it. It's serviceable. Looks like pinch hinges, pinch hinges on the flaps, pinch hinge on the aileron. That is a big aileron. I don't see any reinforcement on those. It looks like the spar goes out to about here. Yeah, I don't see any reinforcements. The only way, ah, uh, there is just a little bit, maybe. That's usually indicating that there's some sort of a reinforcement, these little slots. Yeah, there's probably a piece of fiberglass here, okay? And then this is a pocket that receives the carbon fiber spar. It goes out to about here. So we have good support. I mean, there's gonna be a little bit of flexibility out on the end of the wing, but it's limited. I would say that it's strong enough. I mean, this is flying on a 3S 2200. It can't be that heavy when it's all up. Well, it's only 1400 millimeters. It's not. 1400 millimeters is pretty big. I mean, it's like, it's a lot bigger than that plane. Mm. It's almost like double the size of that plane, the yellow one. Here, let's show the people. Uh, double the size is maybe a little bit of an overstatement. I stand corrected. See? Yeah. But look how narrow the cord is. Yeah. So this thing is more of like a trainer and this is more of a scale plane. Because if this were scaled up, look how big of a difference that would be. See? It's not, it's actually a narrower, narrower. wing than this wing. Mm -hmm. Here, now you'll know. You'll note that there's no flaps on this plane on the yellow one, but there are flaps on this one. And look how big the aileron is. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. it's, like, it's like almost twice as big. That's crazy. It's just always funny because you get into a scale plane and a scale plane is gonna behave like a scale plane. I guarantee you that that thing is gonna be a powerhouse compared to this thing. Because it's just so light and it's got a huge wing, very low wing loading. Okay, so I'm just kind of looking inside. I don't really see anything else. I think that's the gist of it. So this is called the Sky Trainer 182. Ooh, I'm getting a little nervous because I'm squeezing it on the way out. Ooh, that's not a good feeling. Oh yeah, that's pretty inside. Wow, it looks really nice actually. That is cool. Did you see the instrument clusters yet? Mm. Look at this. They even gave us a column that lines up here to bring all our wires down. Oh, nice. Very smart. Look at the instrument cluster. That is Wait. so cool. Wow. You're not gonna be able to see that very good. I, I hope there's a light in there. How sweet would that be if there was? Okay, so this is very weird. Oh, it's a receiver bank or no. Why do they have this here? Is this where we're supposed to put the receiver? I don't know. That's kind of strange. No, it's just access to the servos. Although there's a bunch of wires down there, so we're gonna have to grab those from there. Looks like this is probably where we're gonna end up putting the battery in. Oh, really? Yeah, I know. That's what I was thinking too. That's where the ESC and that's where they want the battery. So you could put the receiver in here if you wanted. Maybe we can tuck it on one of the sides or you can put the receiver back here. That thing is hard to get off. That's a bummer. 
Yeah, that's that's gonna be a pain. I am not, that's gross looking too. Ugh. I gotta clean it. Um, okay, so it's a little strange that they put this on the end because my understanding was that we had a chrome spinner. Okay, so hold on, you see the cat? Give me that. Don't eat the foam, goof. <laughs> the cat was trying to eat the foam. So, sorry about that he distraction. He won't eat bacon, but he'll eat foam. He'll eat foam. You know, foam is very appealing to cats, evidently. Um, all right, Wait, so. there is a spinner. In yeah, here. no, I know, I saw it oh, earlier. Okay. I was just saying it's a little strange that we have that on there instead of yeah. a nut. So, maybe they needed to get the CG corrected a little bit. Okay, so that's everything in the box. So we'll take a second clean up and come right back with the build. All right, YouTube. So we're back with the FMS Sky Trainer, the 1400 millimeter Sky Trainer 182. And we're gonna get the build done today. Much to the chagrin of the camera crew, <laughs> we have to mount every single one of these control horns. Not a big deal because they're not glued, they're screwed. Which is why, unusually, we're gonna be using a drill today. This is an impact, not a drill. But still, whatever, same thing. Okay, so it looks like these take two screws, as you can see from the base, and each bag comes with three, okay? This would be probably for the rudder. This would probably be for the elevator, okay? So one for each. And then the wings are different because they have two of each and their respective control linkages that will go for the flaps, okay? Then of course, we have some glue-on items. This bag contains the antennas and I think maybe some steps. They might be strakes. I'm not sure if it's strakes on this type of plane, but anyway, this is the things that actually receive the, uh, the struts right here, okay? Yes. And then we were left with two different nut and bolt sacks. This one's got quite a few nuts in it. This one is mostly That one bolts. came in with, with the gear. This one came with the gear. Yep. So we'll put that with the gear. So the camera crew was so kind enough to get everything sort of pulled out of packaging while I was cleaning up the box. The camera crew is annoyed because the manual says that all of the bags are labeled and, and they're not. none of them are labeled. That's okay. We forgive them. Mm, you can. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're going to do first is we're going to take and get the control horns mounted. Now, on this plane, it should be pretty obvious which way things go because this is, this is gonna be above the fuse. So you can see that above the fuse is on the, the left side. So over here on our left, that needs to stick out the side. Okay, so we'll just pop this open first. And these things are pretty easy to put on. Fortunately, if you have a drill, it does go a lot quicker. If you have to glue these on, I hate doing this process because then you glue them and then they never seem to be quite set up by the time you're ready to use it. Okay, so we've got the extra screw. We'll keep those in case we lose one because these are dinky. Okay, so now my experience too with these things, this protrudes on one side and it doesn't protrude on the other, okay? That's because this has a bit of a contour to it. I've seen guys that, that swear up and down they're supposed to go this way and I've seen guys that have sworn up and down that they go this way. My take has always been try to make it as flat as possible if it looks good. So that's what I'm gonna go with. Then on this side, you'll note that it reaches into the foam as well. Pretty sure I know which direction that goes. It's not gonna go this way. So that helps to confirm my theory that the protrusion goes into the foam like this. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. Also, this is supposed to be closest to the hinge point as possible as per standard model building principles. Now, I don't know which way the screws are supposed to go. I believe they are supposed to go this way. Ooh, but I just thought of something. It isn't impossible. See, these are countersunk screws. Why do we not have flat heads on these? See that? Why would we use a countersunk? I don't understand that. At least we have enough thickness to receive that. But you see, this is gonna bite. So you could actually put that on either side See, does this pass through? See, it passes through, so it actually goes from this side. Goodness gracious, why would you want it to go from that side? Because then you gotta get the head of your screwdriver. Right there. It fits. If it fits, it's okay. So we're using a number one bit here, okay? That's gonna make it a lot easier. And if you're so inclined, you can pre-drill 
as in drill them together off the plane, but it's, it's such, no, no, get in there. It's magnetic, so luckily there's enough carbon in these things to hold. You guys may know that I almost never use drills on my planes. And you can see that it protrudes through quite a bit. I have gone to extreme lengths of cutting them off in the past. I kind of doubt I'm going to be doing that on this plane. I think it's going to be tolerated. The extra tip length. What do you think about the extra tip length? Well, I mean, it can usually be tolerated. Okay, good. Cutting it off seems a little excessive. You know, I mean, it's what the doctor ordered. <laughs> so as you can see, that works and we don't have to wait for glue to dry or set up. Okay. Um, that wasn't too bad. Slightly better. So if you were going to cut these off, couple couple tips. One, you're going to have to take them off, which sucks. But take off the short one first, cut it, and then put it back in, get it in place, and then take off the long one, cut it. Oh, really? You can't yeah. just clip them off? Well, you could try to clip them, but if you get a tool that's big enough to cut that thing that's not a big enough head to damage this foam, mm -hmm. then you'd be very yeah. hard pressed to find that. Okay, so that process is gonna be identical for these things, um, but we'll go ahead and go through it just because we're gluttons for punishment. So there we go. So we've got a uh, little bit shorter screws here. Thank you, FMS. Would have been nice to have a little bit shorter screw over there. They did provide three, so check this out. Check this out, guys, watch this. So if you get the wrong bag by happenstance, this is what you're gonna know. See? Oh. Yeah, so I just got lucky and got the right one, okay? So I'm gonna use, that'll be my extra screw. So that's going in my bag of extra screws here, and I'm gonna take one of the short ones, and I'm gonna use it on the rudder. And that's gonna mean the protrusion, the extra tip length will be less. less since it's not a problem for you, obviously. Oh yeah, that's good. And I am being very sparing on, it's not like I wanna go in there and, you know, crank the thing down. Yeah. Yeah, that looks a lot more appropriate. At least it's even now. So I don't know if they put them in the wrong bag or if we just kinda did something wrong, I kinda doubt it. Okay, so this one, same thing, this is definitely the bottom because it's gonna key into the opening on the fuse. And you do want this pointed toward the hinge side. Okay. Now, just so you guys know, we, we go into more detail on planes that could be trainers uh, than we will on some of the more sophisticated, more fast flying, crazy planes that are definitely not trainers. And so we don't uh, mean to insult your intelligence if you're watching this and you've built hundreds of models before. We just don't know what our audience is gonna be comprised of before we get there, you know? So please forgive us. Looks like, you know what? We're gonna need the long ones here. Look at that. Those short ones are too short. I'm gonna to have to compress the wing. So it looks like these longer ones were actually the ones that went to the elevator, surprisingly enough. That's where those labeled bags would have come in. Labeled maybe. bags would have been kind of handy. I agree, I'll go with you on that one, camera crew. Okay, so we want to go inside toward this front corner. I'm just glad I don't have to cut them because that's a pain. I remember building a few of those Volantix planes back in our earlier days. Millions of control horns. Oh my goodness. It felt like it was never ending. This would be the only time when it's kind of nice to not have flaps is because it's one less control surface to have to put this on. But anymore, our planes are coming with all this stuff done, which mm -hmm. is really nice. So I'm kind of surprised. This is a little bit, this model's been around for a while. But it's just, it's an oldie but goodie, you know? It's a legit good model that's been around for a long time. And to be honest, some people like doing this stuff because they know that it's right. It's one less thing that could be screwed up. I'm not one of those people. <laughs> I don't care. I just want it to be built. 
Um, so okay. Do you have another short screw now? That you I have want two to, short screws. Do you want to switch that out in the rudder? So you have two short oh, screws in the rudder? Well, yeah, that's not a bad call, camera crew. We're doing it. No, wait. What? No, wait, what? In the rudder. Is that a long one? The rudder? Mm -hmm. That's a long one. And then I'm going to see if the short one reaches. Because mm -hmm. then it's one less protrusion. Now let's see if it works. Ooh, yeah. It did work. Is it enough? Probably. There's Good enough a, for me. There's a, there's a possibility. I mean, that would be kind of a bad one to have rip out. You know what? I don't think it's worth it. I think it's worth it. Let's just stick with the longer one to be on the safe side. I'd rather have more penetration, deep penetration. Mm -hmm. I mean, is it better to be fully penetrated or have deep penetration? I don't know. It's kind of like six and one half dozen, you know? <laughs> six of one, half a dozen of the other. There you go, there you go. So you do okay. have, you know, just a little bit of protrusion on both sides. Look at that though. When I move this control horn, one side moves more than the other. Can you tell? Mm-hmm. I can tell in person. It's kind of hard to see it on. On camera? Yeah. I think what I need to do is I need to exercise this hinge. That's what I mean by exercise. I mean, that's the most exercise I get, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Show the people the wind outside. That's crazy. It's really windy. Oh yeah, you can't see it from here. The trees are going nuts right now. Yeah. It hurts my soul. I know. We can always tell when it's really windy because the corn moves a lot. Okay, look. It's getting better, but there's still, I feel like there's gonna be an inherent roll. Eh, it's probably not enough. Probably not enough to matter. But I would really like to see that not be a factor. So make sure you work your elevator a little bit. Kind of want to work just this side more so it's freer than this side. Okay. It's a lot better now. It really is. Look how much better it is. Yeah, so work it, work it, and that'll get that foam stretched out a little bit. Okay, so that's the only one that's got a symmetrical hinge point. So I think that's the only one we need to really worry about in terms of um, exercising the joint. We already exercised the rudder a little bit earlier. Okay, so now the wing is kind of the same scenario. Um, there's a place here for an antenna that'll get glued. It's actually got like a stab point. You could stab it, but it's, I mean, it's going to get glued. Um, okay, so when you have servos and you're not sure what position they're in, you can use an XBC battery checker like this. I'm just going to grab any old 2200. This happens to be a 50C, so we can really do it fast. <laughs> can move it back and forth okay. millions of oscillations per second. Okay, so that's in the automatic discharge cycle, so it's partially charged, but that's fine. Okay, so we have tape down here that's holding the excess wires. Obviously, these are going to need to go down and into the fuselage, but for the moment, they're going to need to be out here so I can test things. And why do we test things in this position? Well, it's easier to do it now. And then we can get the control horns installed when yep. they're centered. Yep, exactly. So on an XBC 100 smart checker, you can press the click button and then go to servo test. And then that brings up a servo. Now, I don't know what speed these are, so I'm assuming this is right at this point. Okay. So this is supposedly the flap. This is also where you confirm your labels are correct. So the minus is toward the USB plug. Oh yeah, buddy, she's alive. So now you can double click and it'll go through a slow sweep. Oh yeah, we're not gonna have any problems with overdriving. We can probably overdrive that quite a bit actually. That's a nine gram digital servo by the way. Okay. So that's where the flaps are going to be neutrally. So that'll be zero or it'll actually be minus 100 or plus 100. Then this will be the other setting. 
So with flaps, you don't go to the center, you go to the inboard portion or well, the front part. Where did I dump my sack? Or did I dump my sack? You didn't oh, yet. I didn't, okay. Hey, the other thing, when you dump that out, we need to double check, because that could be aileron, aileron, and the other bag could be flap, flap. So I guess we need to make sure they're the same, right? Uh, they look they look like they look the, same the same length. I think, they, I think, they I think they're the same. Okay. Don't you, well, I mean, what difference does it make? If they are the same, it's not gonna matter. We're gonna be right. doing both wings right away, so we might as well show the people at home. The screw went way over. All right, guys, you come to Brian Phillips RC for the most exciting, riveting RC experiences on YouTube. Mm -hmm. We dumped our nutsack on the ground. Okay, so let's lay these here. See if the length is any different. Now, you wanna pay attention to where the threads start, yep. not where the clevis is. Oh yeah, those are the same, same. don't you okay. think? Yep. Yeah, they look the same. So yep. the other thing you can do too is um, those things when they're new, especially when they're on the end like this, where there's very little penetration, I like to take and screw these in a little bit so that I have them at the same points. But also it's really hard to do this once they're on because sometimes you're the first person to actually work the threads through the plastic, okay? So that's good. All right, so now do we need to work this? This one feels pretty loose, so I think we're okay there. This obviously is gonna go downward like that. Downward meaning these things go into the foam and this thing comes up, pretty obvious. And then this goes on the other side, so that's gonna be up and toward the wing tip. We do have long screws and shorts. There's short, there's short, there's a long, there's, so there's three long, a bunch short. Oh boy. Do you mean to? Okay, so let's talk about like this. This is aileron, 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 potentially flap, flap, one short of all the flaps. So I think one is gonna be the long for the flap and then one will be short for the flap because the thickness is much thicker here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll see how that goes. So up and toward the wing. So we'll drop that in. Some people would not use a drill for this. Like typically I wouldn't use a drill, but there's just so many of them. And you'll note that I'm letting it slip. I'm doing that on purpose. I'm not trying to strip my screw. It's just that this is a number one tip. It probably needs a number zero Phillips. Um, and also I don't want to strip it. So I'm just going to let it slip. It's not going to hurt anything if I don't put a lot of pressure on it. But if I do put pressure and it strips the thing, then it's going to be really difficult to work with. So I just soon avoid that. Okay. Now this is a short screw. See what I'm talking about. And then I just use varying amounts of pressure. I've got my finger back here to back it up. Yeah, that was perfect. That, that's the way it should have been. Mm -hmm. I think we got that. Okay, so now that that's done, we've got it pushed forward. And uh, what I'll do is I'll take these two. They look about the same, so we use those for the flaps. Now, what I usually do is I'll lay this out like this, and I'll just figure on which direction I want the zigzag to go, the Z-bend. Okay, did it say in the manual where to put them? Uh, do you mean to double check? Yeah, we better. It looks like it's going to be outside hole to outside hole based on that little test. I thought that there was a... It yeah. looks like... Outside to outside. It looks like outside hole in the picture. It doesn't say specifically. Yeah, it's good. I mean, it's lined up perfect. So I would say okay. we just kind of got lucky on this one. So normally I would wait to push these together but because we have a servo tester involved, we know, now here's the big catch, okay? If you get this wrong, when your machine turns on, it's gonna go to the other side, but this is the exact pulse width modula modulation output, okay? So that's fully pulled in, that's fully pulled out, okay? That's neutral. So worst case scenario, it'll start neutral, you have to set your settings, okay? No big deal. I'm confident that that's where we want it, I'm gonna go ahead and snap this through. Then I'm gonna slide this down and we're done. And what my camera crew was complaining about earlier, and I was also complaining with her off camera, is why are we doing that? Mm -hmm. 
But you gotta remember, back in the day, this is the way every model came. So we can also test the light, which is kind of cool. So this is a gear wire. I don't know why it says gear. Why does it say gear? And there's two of them. Oh, cool, forward facing. Okay, so there's a negative and a positive. So all you have to do is line it up to the plus and minus, pretty straightforward stuff. And then you'll see what the lights look like. Okay, red, very good. And negative and plus. Oh, that's so cool. Those are bright. Now, just to be clear, guys, the, the pulse width modulation does not control the light in case you weren't already intimately familiar with that. This is basically just taking power. So you can control lights with controllers. I'm not sure if there's a channel for that uh, somehow in a mixer board. I didn't see anything, so I doubt it. So these are just gonna be on. And I'm not sure if we have like a bunch of Y cables that came with this or what, but there we'll be looking. There are some. Yeah. yeah, there are Y cables. And actually there is one that's labeled gear. Gear, oh, well and that's like why they did that. Three, maybe. Okay, so this must be the aileron because it's not labeled. Okay, so we'll plug this one in and it should spring to life. Went right to the middle. Okay, so we'll go through a sweep real quick, just make sure it works. Looks good, we're not hitting anything. So we'll click it back to the middle. Now that we're in the middle, we can go ahead and get our assembly done. Now you could just put these all on too and then come back and do that later. Really doesn't matter which direction you go. Pretty simple. We'll probably just do off camera the other wing because it's exactly the same process. Yeah. And you know, like our videos are already tediously long and we know you guys love listening to, uh, listening to us enjoy the process, but uh, it might go just a hair faster off camera. If you need an extra 30 minutes, just start another video. Yeah, just start another video. You can fill the gap. Yep. Okay. The nap wasn't long enough. Whatever. It's like when you watch golf and then you wake you're up like, and man, you're that like, was, oh, that was refreshing. Wow, I love great. golf. Listen, golf is a very popular sport. It is. I like, I like golf. I just don't do it. Right. Cause I'm too much of a cheapskate. Exercise thing again. Oh yeah. Exercise too. You know, the long screw looks like it's not necessary. I think we're going to go back with the short screw. See how much it's protruding. Do we have enough short? Um, yeah, yeah we'll, we we'll have enough cause they give us a bunch of extras on the shorts. See what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. I have to support the back of this in order to make that work. I used this long bit thinking I would need it and I didn't need it. So now I'm sort of regretting it because it's awkward. That'd be a lot of work to take that off there. I mean, yeah, it's like a quick disconnect and <laughs> sitting like way over there, way over there, that, 10 feet that away. That one over there? Yeah, yeah. way mm -hmm. over there. I don't know. Struggle through. Yeah, we'll just have to, we'll just have to wallow through. But the key is guys, I'm not forcing the issue. I'm just letting it slip. That's critical. Because if you force the issue, the drill will win and then you'll lose your control surface. All right, so that's in. Everything looks good. This surface moves really nicely. Sometimes you'll get these where they don't want to move down here, but they'll move like where the control horn is. Mm. And then you get really crappy deflection. So I didn't notice any reinforcements in there. It must've just been a well-designed piece. All right, so this is the other one for the flat. So I'm just gonna lay that there. Okay. And these two are for the ailerons. You'll note that they're, you know, about the same length, but really this is, this is not gonna matter because we're gonna adjust this to be flush with here and flush with the flap, okay? So I'm just gonna grab this and work it a couple of turns. I'm gonna go in a few. Oh, it's like I'm holding this really hard. If you have a pair of pliers, it might be easier than holding it with your naked fingers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it looks like this is gonna be, yeah, I see the Z bend on my finger. <laughs> <laughs> Outside hole still. I believe looks so. Looks like I need to go out another half a turn. I'm just kind of lining up the shaft and the sh just where this is gonna go. And I can tell that that's gonna pull this in a little bit. So I'm just kind of guessing a little bit on where it needs to be. I could probably just slide it in. That'd be just about as easy. Okay, see this? I need to go out because it's gonna pull it in a little bit. You go out, maybe one more turn. Ooh, that's pretty good. One more. That would be good. Yeah, I think I went too far. 
Let's try this. Okay, now that it's in there, we can feel the edges and see if they're solid. I'm confident we're solid. Go into the slow sweep. I like it. I think mm -hmm. we're good. Okay. So now I had toyed with the concept of setting this plane up because it has fixed landing gear of setting this up with uh, reflex or crow. So I can do uh, ailerons up and flaps down. So I think we might try to do that just depending on how we set it up. Now with eight channels, we could do full independent control of each surface, but I don't really think I'm gonna use this full length as an aileron. It's just not necessary on this plane. Uh, that's a huge aileron. I think it's gonna roll very fast. So if anything, we're gonna have to really tame the ailerons as it is. And so I want the flap and this thing to act together. We can do some cool, fun things with it. So we'll show you how to do that on the AR-631. One of the reasons I love the AR-631 and the AR-637TA is that A, you get AS3X and safe if you want it. Um, and then secondarily, you get a little bit of telemetry on the 631. The 637T, you get like full suite of telemetry regardless of what ESC you have. But if you have an avian ESC, either one will give you full pack telemetry, which is really nice. And it's full range telemetry. Whereas the 631, I think they call it like flyby telemetry, whatever that means. Means like you're, you may get far enough out that you don't get full updates on telemetry data. We've never had that problem. So the Air 637A, or excuse me, the Air 637T uh, is gonna be like long range because you've got a barometer on there. So you can tell you get a very, which is pretty cool. And I love those things on sailplanes, not on airliners. That no. was the first time we used it when we learned it was in there. It was pretty cool. Um, but in terms of the, the, the one complaint we have, the 631 is still the same, which is we don't have pack voltage. And we just think that's ridiculous. We do have receiver voltage. So if you're flying a sailplane that's a pure glider, then that's gonna be fine because you'll still know that you're losing. Problem is when you're losing voltage to that degree from a BEC, you're pretty much like screwed at that point because you're, you're just going to drop fast. Um, and plus running servos and things like that do, you know, consume a lot of power, especially in that type of environment because you're an hour and a half into the flight. You don't want it to, you know, like stop being controllable. That's very dangerous. So my predisposition is Horizon needs to make that work. We need pack voltage. So whether it's an, a, an adapter or something like that, that's what we've been pushing for. Uh, but otherwise, very, very happy with them. They work great. Forward programming is huge because all we do is set up the wing type in the, in this case, the NX-8. And uh, you could use the NX-6 for a plane like this, you'd be fine. Um, or if you go all the way up to the IX-20, doesn't matter. The point is forward programming makes it really easy. You set up your wing type, your, well, they call it the aircraft type. And then um, you set up the wing and the tail and it just basically applies that to AS3X. Back in the day, it used to be a humongous pain in the butt because everything had to be mixed to the primary flight Con configurations and then you could um, you can make changes from there but now it's just super easy all the trim works all the flight modes work it's really nice especially when you get to the more complicated planes so that being said if you guys are curious they recently released a new 10 channel and if you're wanting to buy one of those things just follow the links as usual there's a, a generic link to horizon hobby you can go there buy whatever you want but we'll link to the transmitter the receiver the battery, and then of course the plane as configured, which was a plug and fly. So we'll have that linked so you can buy that for your very own. At the end, you'll help support the channel by doing that. And we appreciate you guys doing those things because it does help to fund our channel. And that's obviously how we keep the airwaves filled with radio controlled noise. So anyway, we're to pause. We'll do the other wing off camera because it is identical and then we'll continue to build. All right guys, so we're gonna keep building the uh, plane here. This bag has antennas in it, antennae, and uh, a couple of different pieces. Those pieces are the pieces that go on the wing. These two that are individual are the pieces that go onto the fuse. That makes sense? Interestingly enough, there's a hole. See that? Mm -hmm. They don't screw on, do they? No, it says glue. Okay. So I don't know, maybe at one point there was like a carbon fiber joiner or something that went through the fuse. 
but we'll leave those for the fuse. And we're gonna basically put this wing together right now so that it's together. And on the last plane that we built, that was a, a Cessna, um, the yellow one there, mm -hmm. we put the receiver on the wing. Mm. And I'm not sure what we're doing with this one yet, because to be honest with you, it's kind of, I'm not sure like where it's gonna fit. Um, and, and that is a challenge sometimes on airplanes is figuring out where to put the receivers. Okay, so that goes together. I'm not gluing that, right? I just basically put it together. That's yeah. all I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So if we were to put the receiver on the wing, then we would have to have all this stuff plugged in up here, which would be nice. Because then we have a rudder and an elevator, and then the lights would all have to come up too. Or is there any lights in this thing? Anyway, it doesn't really matter. We're gonna glue these things first. Okay, so we're dumping out this whole bag so we can see all the pieces. Um, obviously we got all these lined up here so they're smooth from surface to surface and edge to edge. So these flaps are, are fully uh, collapsed is what I would call them. They're not extended. If they were extended, then it would be very hard to line everything up. So make sure you do that as you're building. I'm not sure if I mentioned that earlier. So where do these ones go? Are they on the horizontal stabilizer somewhere? No. Do they go on the top of the wing? I, I know that these obviously go here. Mm -hmm. And it's very evident which way is which, okay? But it's not so evident up on the fuse. See, they're molded differently. So you can't mix them up, right. okay? So the way we're gonna glue these, and this is a structural component, but it is also a decorative component. So I think you're gonna need it on this plane. So this is just China glue. You could use mucilage or foam to foam. If you don't have this stuff, okay, so I'm just gonna put that glue kind of heavy on there. And the glue was not provided. This glue was not provided. No, you have to provide your own glue. If you don't have glue like this, this is China glue that came from a dynam. One good thing of working with dynams. Okay, so we're gonna stick this down in here. Sometimes they come with too much glue. Sometimes they come with like not enough. <laughs> it's pretty comical. Okay, so we just spread that glue to both surfaces and we're gonna let it cook. China glue is like my favorite type of glue on models, but sometimes you need CA. CA is like super glue and you can use kicker. But you see how that gets stringy? So I wanna just kinda leave that there so it can sit and we call it, I call it cooking. I'm gonna show you what foam to foam looks like. Foam to foam, this stuff does dry. All of this stuff dries. So what happens is once you pierce the tube, then it's gonna set up. So I put a, I put a date on there. So it comes with a little piercer. So you pierce it. So that's why we use up the glue as we get it. This is foam to foam. It's very good. It comes out sort of running like that, but then it sets up really good. This is clearer, it's more clear. But I've noticed that this tube kind of holds its shape. So what happens is when you're done squirting out the glue, it like, it keeps coming out. So you gotta be really quick to put the cap back on. This is good stuff. It's reasonably inexpensive, but it's not a big tube. Mucilage is cheaper and you'll get a volume. This would be like the small size. They have a bigger size too. And that comes from Hobby King. Uh, we do have links to it. That stuff is very nice. But what happens is stuff at Hobby King is like out of stock for months and months or years or whatever. So you have to find a viable alternative. And then people like me find something like this that works good that you can get like every day at, um, oh, and there's like poison warnings and things like that. You get the mucilage and it says the active ingredient is magic. Like, I don't know how they market it in <laughs> North America. This stuff is even worse. It has nothing, nothing on it. So it's like, you know, do not eat, do not swallow, do not give to your kids. You know, those warnings that us Americans need um, to stay alive. Okay, so this stuff is getting really, like really sticky. See that? It's already super sticky, okay? And it's a contact adhesive. So once you get that glue spread, then you just stick the two components together. And then if you have a mess, okay, there's two ways to clean this up. I like using Q-tips. What you can do is you can get into where it's sticky and you can actually pull it out of the joint and it'll clean it up really nice, okay? The other option that works really good is if you have a part that you wanna unglue, after it's been glued for months or years, 
you can take Kicker and it will break that glue down. Now, word of warning, Kicker takes also will break down paint. It will lift decals, but it accelerates CA. So if you're gluing this with CA and you needed to be up in the air in like five minutes, you can put CA on, stick it down, put a little bit of that uh, kicker on there and it would be set like right now. You could use it immediately. I like this because it's a longer, stronger hold. It's a little bit of the elasticity. So like if it gets bumped really hard, like on a bad landing, a lot of times you can just push it back together and it'll stay. So that's why I like it. But if you have to undo it, you can actually undo it by putting kicker on there and it will set and then you'll just be able to pull it apart. But it will undermine that, that uh, glue. So you have to clean it out and then start from fresh. From fresh. Okay, so you see how that's kind of set up a little bit. So it's a super, super sticky now. If you let it sit too long, you won't be able to push the parts together. It'll push the foam out of the way. Okay, so we're just gonna kind of work that back and forth and forward and backward. And that's the same exact type of, um, you know, glue that you're gonna get on that foam to foam. The difference is you can buy this while you're buying your receiver and then, you know, your shipping would be covered generally because you're gonna be like over hundred bucks. By the time you buy the receiver and battery or whatever, or just buy that the next time you get a bind and fly from Horizon. So anyway, that's the way it is. I mean, we know how it is, guys. We got links, but we know you guys don't wanna pay shipping anymore than we do. All right, so all these wires are bound together here or they're gonna be bound together here, okay? They actually give you zip ties, which is kind of nice. Mm -hmm. They don't tell you to do that, but I'm telling myself to do it right now, and so I'm gonna do it. We didn't need those for something special, did we? We haven't read the whole thing yet. We haven't read the whole manual? No. What? All right, I was busy. It does seem like a good use of a zip tie. Yeah, I'm gonna zip tie it. It's probably like, please zip tie the wing to the fuselage. <laughs> I can just see that now, now that we've committed. Okay. Since we don't have any other zip ties in this house. Yeah, right, exactly. It's the only it zip tie in our entire, to replace. entire building. Yep. So I'm just gonna get some side cutters so we can clip that excess off. So now that you see the way the wing goes together, it's a pretty nice wing, uh, looks easy, easy enough on camera, I'm sure. It's just a lot of steps. Not, not any of it is hard. Um, so I think the next thing we need to do actually is probably glue these onto the fuse so that they can start setting up Okay. because that's the one function that you forget about is that it does take a little bit of time for this stuff to work. And so you want to get it glued soon in the build process. Okay. So we'll just pop these out. We'll do the exact same process, but since, well, I want to use the same type of glue just cause like I said, this stuff does wear out over time. So if you use this stuff, if you open it, it's going to set up over time, no matter what you do. Okay. So just kind of doing the same general principle, get the glue on there. The other thing that's nice is if you get that on your hands and it's, it's not, see that's keyed. So you can only put it in the right hole. Okay. Oh, wait, you can only put it in the right way, but you can mount it backward. So you want that to shoot up like it's gonna go up to the wing. See how I just kind of spread that glue around so that it covers all the surfaces that I want it to touch. And then if you look close, we've got it all the way along all the faces and we're missing a little bit in there. So I'm gonna actually take and get a little bit more glue into this spot here. You could apply it to both sides as well if you prefer to do it that way. I just have found the best way to get a good spread on the glue is to basically put the two parts together while it's fresh and then pull them out. And then that'll coat everything nicely for you. And then while that's setting up, it won't drip or anything generally, unless you go way crazy yeah. overboard. Um, and this little bottle will build a couple of planes. You know, most planes, you don't have to glue much together anymore, but honestly, I, I don't know. That's just one of those gripe points that people have like my camera crew and me and every other person that's ever built a radio controlled airplane. A lot of people don't like gluing stuff and I don't blame you. It's, it's not, you know, my, my favorite part either. Well, for us, it's just, it's just extra tedious. steps. And if you were sitting here like listening just to music it. and the kids were running around and 
being obnoxious. Yeah, know, right. Then it would be, so, it'd such be a different. better experience. It'd be it, well. It's just different. I mean, people yeah. do this for fun. It's not like they're they hate the process, so they wouldn't do it. I mean, some of these steps are fun. It's fun to watch a, a product come out of the box and get built. But like for me, it's about flying it. That's that's my that's what I want. Yeah. I want to fly the thing. I'm less about building and more about flying. And I know a lot of you guys feel like it's a it's a lost art because people don't build anymore. Well, I've I've built from stick built planes and all that too. Um, I just don't. My grandpa and I used to do that together. Not he would build them, and then I would help him get the radio set up and buy all the electronics and everything. And then we would we would make them fly, and he just got a kick out of it. And I did too. It was very fun. Of course, he passed away. So, um, see this extra glue here, guys. One other trick that usually works. It's not exactly rocket science here. If you do get a little bit on the outside of where you want it, you can try to clean it up like this. But my experience is that if you do this, it almost always smears and it looks bad. Mm. So the best thing you can do is get your Q-tip, okay? And what you wanna do is you wanna actually have the, the glue somewhat set up on the tip of the, the Q-tip. And so I'll roll it tight like that. And then I'll actually roll it. You see how this pulls it off? The one issue you're gonna run into if you do have to do a big cleanup like this, you see how it's pulling it off? It's gonna pull, and sometimes it'll pull it from where you want the glue to be, but then other times it'll take a little bit of a shine off of the foam. So you need to be aware that that's possible. So if you're concerned about that, get a little kicker, put it on a piece of a corner of your napkin, and just wipe around the area that you spilled. And it will amazingly do the job very well. And then also the funny thing is like this, this nastiness on this, whatever disgusting stuff is on here. Sometimes you can get that stuff off because it will stick and you can peel it off with this sticky tip. Was, you don't want to waste a sticky tip, do you? See, it just took it off, whatever it was. Whatever disgusting was on there. Huh. It's crazy. It'll pull stuff off that you didn't think could come off. Okay, so it looks like this was the first one. See, now it's getting to the point where it's like wanting to stick to everything. And sometimes if you get this sticky like that and you let it tack up too long, you won't be able to push it in. So the key is you put a little bit of fresh glue on the outside, it'll let it slide in like a lubricant. Because you do want to get good deep penetration. And if you don't get deep penetration, then somebody's going to complain. So we'll just slide this one in too. I feel like that glue worked really fast today, like faster than usual. Hmm. It's kind of weird. Now you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm squishing the, the fuse together by the two contact points. That's pretty hard on the fuse. And then I got a little glue there, another, another spot where, see this? Look at this. It just picks it up. Then it's gone, okay? All right, so those were the critical ones. I think so. I thought I heard a tractor. I thought I did too. <laughs> um, okay, so now there's another two pieces that need to be glued, and I don't know where they go. We might need to like pause and look at the... We'll pause and look at the directions. manual. Okay, so we figured out where it was. That's where those go. We uh, couldn't figure it out because it's never actually listed in the manual anywhere. So these two little components, we're going to have to glue those too and get those stuck in the back here. This is a non-structural component, so it's not maybe as critical. Uh, so CA would be fine if you'd rather use CA. I like this glue for this sort of thing, so I'm gonna use this glue for this sort of thing. Now that hole goes all the way through too, so be a little bit careful you don't make a giant mess of everything. So you see how the flat, there's no molding points here, so I got that on the wrong side actually. It doesn't matter, I'm just getting glue onto this. So that's gonna go like that when we're all said and done. So then set it down on this plastic piece. Looks like I probably need to get a little bit more, oops. 
I guess never mind. One of them is going to have those two round spots going up. Oh. Yeah, unfortunately. So this must be like a, a little, it's probably an antenna in real life. The noise we heard was the neighbors cutting their alfalfa. Earlier we, we heard a noise and we we're like, what the heck is that noise? So if you heard us kind of looking around, I don't know how you would have heard that, but. Okay, so we'll get that in there. Once that glue sets up for a second, we'll stick them back in. This one's already starting, you see how stiff that is already that's good mm -hmm. we might let that sit for just a second because i don't want to fight that if you pull them if you put them in too prematurely then they'll want to like slowly eep out if it's dried a little bit then it'll stay in there like even if you try to pull it out so respect the couple of seconds it takes for that glue to set up and you will thank yourself later okay so what's next after that by the way it did say to put a zip tie in the manual we noticed that too um, these things are solid now. I feel like we're totally good there. Well, we have all the control horns mounted. Yep. And everything is glued. Right. So we could actually start landing gear assembly. We, well, we could also put landing gear on. Yeah. That's the last landing step. gear and prop. Oh, it is. So we should do that first. Why? Yeah. Why is that the last I don't step? Know. This is, see, this is where you would be basically opening up. This is where you would start with a more modern plane, it seems like. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just trying to verify that there's not like a right up way or down way. And if you look at this, it's got an angle to it. It's got a little bit of a special swoop at the front, okay? So that's what I'm looking at. And then if you look at the box, It's not even installed. No. Okay. So I don't know why they do that to us, but. <laughs> Makes it super, super easy. I think it's because sometimes the pre-production models that they use for artwork, they don't have these things yet. All right, so that's good. We'll just kind of keep an eye on that, make sure that stays straight. I do mm -hmm. like that, it's very cool. We could actually mount the tail. Is that what they suggest? I think that's what they suggest first. Okay, why don't we do that? Let's lay this down on top of this bag in case that part would pop out. Okay. Then it won't glue to the counter or something funny. And the horizontal stabilizer can go on first. We aren't gluing them, are we? I don't think so. What holds oh, it on? How do they go on? Okay, so in looking at this plane, oh, by the way, I noticed this off camera. They mentioned it, but I didn't show you guys. There's two magnets that hold the cowl on, which is really nice, but you do have to get the landing gear installed before you put your prop on. So in fact, I'm gonna oh. take this off just to make sure I remember that. Oh, think about it. Okay. Because otherwise you can't get this thing in, which by the way, I didn't show you this in the unbox, I should have. That is sweet, pretty stiff still. But that little oleo strut, that's, that's something cool. And then free spinning wheels. If you get wheel pants that don't spin free, I'm squishing, I'm squeezing here. You might as well take them off right now because there'll be nothing but problems for you. Mm. Okay, so just looking at this, there's no screw holes on there. Do you, okay. Looks like we're gonna have to glue that, hon. Hmm. That's a bummer. Well, I guess it's good we started with it now. Yes, also true. Okay, apply glue to the horizontal stabilizer where it mating with the fuselage tail. Yep. Sure. So we do, we do okay. glue it. So we have to glue it in a certain order and we need to make sure this wire continues to be pointed up. So if you guys don't have glue, you need to get glue. Well, good thing Sing. it's windy out. Yeah, no kidding. Okay, so this is gonna go like that. Let's just dry fit it first and make sure we can figure out how we're gonna get that wire through. That wire is not sticking very far up. Oh no, my goodness. Not. How in the heck are we gonna do that? Can you pull it more? Maybe. 
I better be Ooh. able to. Ooh, that's not cool. Oh yeah, oh, I got there. a little bit. Okay. I don't want to pull too much because then I'm not gonna be able to get it on the other end. Right. Okay, so my thing is when you're not sure exactly where the surfaces are gonna mate up, put it on the surface that has to be added, okay? So that way you can tell that you're not gonna over glue. Oh. I'm pretty sure you can do this. We just gotta be careful not to get it too much in the middle. See how I'm covering the sides too, a little bit? You do have to have enough glue to hold the thing on there, okay? It's kind of an important surface. Um, and then I'm actually gonna spread it. Spread the sticky stuff all over the surface. Okay. So once we get the sticky stuff all spread out, all the way down the edges, in every different direction. You can actually spread this with a brush pretty nice. The mucilage is so thick. Oh, and by the way, if you do get mucilage from Hobby King, uh, it's thicker to begin with. So you don't have near as much time to work with it, but sometimes that's nice because you don't wanna have to wait around. Now, I think I can glue the front face, I think, but you definitely don't wanna get any glue back here, okay? So when in doubt, you can apply glue and then you can apply it to the other surface. But remember, it is not gonna give you hardly any time to work with it. So you need to be Johnny on the spot with this step, okay? So don't, don't, get, don't get this started and then like go make a sandwich, okay? Cause it's gonna take a little bit of effort to get this done quickly. Mm. Remember, this is the pivot point here. Mm. We're gonna run out of glue, aren't we? Mm -hmm. That's okay. The end of an era. Can we make a sandwich then? Are you saying you're hungry? A little. Okay. We can make a sandwich when we're done with this. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we got a little glue there. And then we're just kind of working around the edge. We don't want to glue that wire because if we have to tug it back to the front to make connections later, we don't want to have to fight it. Mm-hmm. Okay, now you'll note that I didn't score or cut the plastic or I mean the foam at all. Uh, some people get really hard on about like, oh, well, you, you know, you need to rough up the surface. Yeah, okay, go ahead. It's fine. It's not gonna hurt anything. But especially in an unpainted surface, there's gonna be some mold release. It's just a factor. It's not gonna, it's gonna glue, I promise. Now, if you sit there and rub your finger on it and there's like oil on your finger, then you need to clean that. Otherwise, you're fine. Just guide this. Camera crew, I might need. Yeah. No, I think I can get it. Ooh. I thought I could get it. I have an idea that's gonna work nicely though. Okay. I think I'm gonna take my forceps and I'm gonna use forceps to hang on to it. These are forceps or hemostats. If you don't have hemostats, this is, I think I spent like five bucks on each of these one of the best tools you can have for RC because you will use them more than you think you will. Mm -hmm. The only thing bad about this tool is um, the fact that it's another tool in your kitchen. <laughs> oh, dang it. I can't get through. I'll just have to use this to guide it. Because it doesn't seem like you would need it, but it's very hard to make that angle because the control rod is limiting where you can hold it on the other side. Okay. It's all right, it's worth it for the light, guys. If you've ever done this yourself, then you'll know exactly what I mean. It's so much easier to just have the manufacturer do lights. Hey, do you see what I'm doing here? Yeah. See how I'm kind of locating it? I'm looking at this groove that's been cut. And then I'm looking at that groove that's been cut, the relief, and that's how I'm positioning it. I'm not like using measuring tapes and strings. Now I'm wiggling and just kind of getting things as square as possible 
without going to great extent. I wanna make sure we're free and we are. Now I'm gonna start looking to see for squareness. It's one of the disadvantages of a glued together tail. If you do it wrong, it's wrong. But there again, you're the one that gets to do it wrong. So as opposed to sometimes you get these things and you expect them to be right, rightfully so, and they aren't. Mm -hmm. So that's always very frustrating. Okay, that's down. We gotta kind of cook with gas. Hopefully I can find that cable because what I'd like to do is I'd like to attach this and then pull it down in. Oh. Because I don't want to fight it. Right. But I got to get glue spread out too. So which one came first, the chicken or the egg? I, well, I think you need to dry fit it first, right? Yeah, I do. Okay, so that's together. You know what we're going to do? Hold that wing there, camera crew. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use that tape. There was a piece of tape that came off the wing. It's a fiber reinforced piece of tape here. And that's gonna, well, rip my sack. Ooh. I hate it when that happens. I'm sorry about that. So, as you can see, I've got this fiber reinforced tape here, which is quite sturdy. And I'm gonna use that to hold this together so that it can't easily be undone. Now, it'll still be able to be undone, believe me, but I'm just gonna stick it on itself like that and then I'm gonna trim the excess. Mm. That's gonna give us a good crack at success in terms of keeping that in position. Now we may have to also go to the foam to foam, so I've got the foam to foam handy. Okay, so that's cut. All right, so now we need to glue all the way down the length of that. We've got this last glue here that's already setting up pretty strong. So if you wanna just keep holding that tip, that'd be really helpful to me. Okay. I'm just gonna squeeze out the last little bit of this, just wherever it'll go. Okay, so that's, so we open that on August 24th and it's already empty. And it's like September something, early September. Early September. So yeah, <laughs> we're going through too much glue. Okay, so you see what I'm talking about? It's already coming out, okay? See how that's clear? That's a lot of glue. I know it is, but I don't want this thing to come off. Yeah. Okay, you gotta glue the top too. Oh, I hate this step. This is where it's like challenging because you're not 100% sure where everything's gonna line up. But you do have to get glue on there, guys. If you do not get glue, it will come apart and it will be a huge disaster. Okay, now see, I stopped, I stopped and it came to a mostly stop, okay? So now that that stuff is on there, you good camera crew for a minute? Mm -hmm. I need to probably spread that with a clean Q-tip because my other Q-tip is getting a little bit useless. You always wanna keep Q-tips, forceps, scissors, drill bits, impact drivers, all these things in your kitchen. Yeah, you just have like two extra drawers to spare. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you'll note that that smells a little bit different, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. It does. I don't know. I'm having trouble focusing on my You are? Hand. You're having right. trouble focusing? Well, I only have one hand. Like, are you distracted by well, talk of sandwiches? Also that. <laughs> okay. So we'll get that there. Okay, so that looks like a servo pass through right there, but we do not pass a servo through there. This comes through the bottom. I don't know why they've got that servo hole cut there. I think it must have been a redesign at some point. They decided to do it a different way. Mm -hmm. Okay, keep that glue away from your pivoting structure there. You just hmm? touched the elevator. That's okay. okay. I'll clean it off. Okay. See? Got it. Thank you for the warning because I couldn't see that very good. Mm -hmm. All right, so now what we're going to do is we have to really unfortunately slather some glue on the other side too. That's going to stop. Really? Yep. Okay, go ahead and actually keep, how about we try this? I need to flip the plane over. This can hang and it won't hurt anything, okay? 
It's kind of slick on the decal, so be careful. Be careful when you're doing this step. See why I taped it now? Okay, mm -hmm. so we're gonna go to the edge of the counter. Now watch this. Hopefully, well, it might be here actually. I don't see it there. I don't see it anywhere. Is it on the upper? Oh, there it is. Up there? Yeah, I, I think I see it now. Mm -hmm. It says rudder on it. That's why I was confused because I forgot they labeled them rudder. Okay, so you see this? These are the cables, okay, that are gonna be for the receiver. I don't know what we're gonna do yet, hon. I'm honestly not sure. So that's the rudder, the actual rudder. This one's the elevator, the actual elevator. This one is the gear, which is our light. Then this one's tangled around the servos for the throttle. So there's the throttle. And this is the gear, okay? So what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to be able to grab that fairly quick and pull it through so we can get the wire pulled in as we go. Do you want me to hold? No, I'm gonna let gravity hold it. Okay. I'm not gonna make you hold that. Okay. But what I do wanna do is just make sure we're not gonna damage anything when I flip it. So when I flip it, very carefully keep everything off the glued surfaces and then just slowly relax this back down. Okay, so now we're good. So now you won't have to search to find it. Okay. Those four steps lock, so it's kind of nice. Okay. See why I taped it now? Mm -hmm. Oh man, that's scary. I don't, it's gonna go, I, don't I don't know if I can get it to, I've got plenty of length now to work with. I may have to push it down from this side to avoid the risk of unplugging it. Mm -hmm. I was trying to talk my wife into doing these videos. I'm like, oh yeah, this one will be easy. This yeah. one will be easy. This will be super easy. At least I don't believe you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually this one, I, I didn't know that this wire was gonna be such a pain, but it is what it is. It's gonna be worth it. Tail lights are cool. Yeah, that is true. I'm just having a really hard time getting it started. And I think what's going on is it's just in a spot where there's just a little teeny bit of glue that got on it. I feel like it went that time a little bit. And if you disconnect it now, it's gonna be disconnected and it's never gonna work, but you're never gonna get that back out either. So you gotta be kind of sparing on how you do this. The other thing you can do too, if you're in any doubt, okay, remember that glue is setting up, so we gotta work quick. Grab yourself a battery, Yep. Grab yourself the XBC battery checker. This is going to give you some BEC voltage. And then you can plug this thing in. Is it on? Nope. Really? Okay, do I need to go to servo test? Servo test? Yep, there, red flag. Okay. So it's on now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that plugged in while we continue to tug on it. Okay. Because if we get to the point where it's disconnected, then we'll know we don't have to work anymore. And we have to figure out how to switch gears to get it back out. Still on? Mm-hmm. Okay. Man, that wire is small for that thing. It's not going. Can you, since it's so small, do you just glue it in the? Yeah, you could do that too. That'd be one option. You could totally do that. Especially now that you have more through than what we started with. Yeah, that's true. 
I don't think we're gonna have a choice. I think it's where it is. Yeah. So that's just gonna get laid down flat in, in the goop. Okay. I don't like that at all though, because then you're gonna have the thickness of the wire to deal with. Can any of it go up? I could also cut a car, I could carve out. We'll carve out a little bit, that's what we'll do. Okay. That was kind of a challenging step there. It would have been nice to see a little bit better design on that, because it wasn't very easy to get that cable through. Mm -mm. Okay, so I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna carve a relief, just a little teeny relief, not very deep at all. Okay, so we carve that little relief. We just need a spot to park the cables, okay? Remember, we don't, we don't want this very thick at all because this is gonna be a weak spot, but it's in the center. So the leverage is gonna be on the outside most of the time where the glue is gonna be acting. Plus this isn't gonna be seen at all, except for on the video. So again, sometimes you gotta be a little bit willing to uh, swallow your pride and do stuff like this if you need to make it sit right. See how that's gonna have a spot now, a pocket. I feel like I need a little bit more removed. There we go, that might be about right. Okay, I think we're gonna be good there now. That should give us plenty of room for that to sit into, correct? I think so. I think so too. All right, so now very reluctantly, I gotta get glue on the other half now. Yeah. Okay, I wanna try to avoid this spot here. And I'm trying to just do the bottom now. Okay. And I need to be where you are, I'm okay. sorry. Can you come over mm -hmm. by the counter here? This is kind of time sensitive too, so. Normally it's not a big rush like this, but with glue, you just gotta do what you gotta do. Glue waits for nobody. See, I just got that on the wing now, dang it. And this is, this is part of the reason why the manufacturers have somewhat gotten away from having glued together surfaces. It's just, it's, it's not like it's super hard. It's just one more point for problems to happen. Mm -hmm. And problems that happen affect the manufacturer too, because you know, it's like then all of a sudden they're on the hook for everybody that screws up and doesn't get the glue in the right spot, you know? Right. And then, and even if it's not really their fault, they, they get blamed. So in, in my opinion, I would say it, it's very wise for the manufacturers to get away from the glue joints as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we go. So now I gotta stick the tip in and then it's not gonna slide worth a crap because, mm -hmm. and then I gotta get this thing worked around and I gotta be mindful not to get glue everywhere all while pushing that stupid red cable, red and black cable back to the center where it can go into the pocket that we created for it. Yeah, and I think it's there. I think we got it into the pocket. Because if we didn't, it would be bulged up. I guarantee it. <sighs> Again, why did they not do that at the factory? Oh, it's because the box. The box would have been a lot bigger. That's why they didn't do that at the factory. All right, so now I'm gonna cap off my glue and we're gonna basically work that for a minute and just see if we can get it as square as possible. We're not even gonna worry about anything else. We know that we got the beacon done. We've got the parts together. This is where you wanna be careful not to crush foam because it's gonna, you're gonna be inclined to like grab and push hard. Spread out your weight as much as you can when you have to do that. I'm trying to push it forward. Mm -hmm. It's good, it's in. But remember, we want contact points on this bulkhead here too, okay? Then also we wanna make sure the elevator's still free, which it totally is, that's very good. Also, we want that part to glue so it's closed and it looks nice and the rudder is still free, but barely. Um, now, I'm gonna take one of these glue Q-tips. I'm gonna wipe the tip off so we don't have excess glue. Okay, see, 
We're gonna wipe that off and then look at this. I'm gonna move the rudder out of the way. See, I got a little bit of glue there. I'm gonna try to pull off the excess now. See how it's pulling off? Because I don't wanna see that, it's ugly. And it should mostly come off of there because it's a decal. Now that's gonna be mostly hidden too. It's probably not a big deal. But then I also got a little bit here on this wing. So you can see all I'm doing is just kind of rolling in it. See how it pulled all off all at once. Same thing here. Just kind of want to work the tip and it will pick up all that little excess glue. You see, is it going? Can you mm -hmm. see that? Yep. Okay, good. Yeah, you can see it when it pulls up. Yeah. So I don't know if you guys can tell what I'm doing. I'm just cleaning up my mess from earlier. That was, that was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. It was way intense. more tedious mm -hmm. than I thought it was going to be too. I'm now you'll note that the tail is dropped down like that. I don't like that. I want that to be up there. See how it's up there. Am I missing something? Okay. We know this is working. I'm going to unplug. Yeah. Okay. We can get this stuff out of here. I'm glad we tested that. Yeah. That would have been. That would have been kind of catastrophic at the end. Yeah. We wouldn't have realized what was going wrong. That looks really nice by the way. It does. Looks good. Sometimes you got to step back so you can see the forest of the trees. Check these things while we're at it. Press, make sure they go in good. Okay. It's good. Now we're going to look for squareness. Just make sure everything is solid. Looks like our, I have to hold this kind of funny to do this. Looks like we need to go up just a hair. I'm, my visual reference is right here along this surface, okay? Oh. So what I'm doing is, of course the camera crew is blocking me. I'm trying to find a horizontal plane that I can line it up with, like a door jam. And I'm using, or like the counter. I'm just looking at the horizontal stabilizer and currently the horizontal stabilizer is off just a hair. Okay, so I'm just trying to straighten it. It's been glued for a little bit, but it's also easy enough to straighten, okay? What is this black thing on the edge of the wing anyway? Do you know what that is? Black thing. That thing. Oh. Just like a piece of tape? Yeah, something. I don't know, something green. Probably a piece of parsley from somebody's lunch. Nope, I haven't had that yet. <sighs> the people in China. <laughs> Not ours. Jeez. Okay. So, show the people. Line it up so that they can see this. And then they can see the horizontal stabilizer. And you can use the TV mm -hmm. as your reference. So once you get that straight, you should be golden. Now, the last thing that I'm concerned about in terms of glue is right here. This spot, no, right here. See how it's not held down? Oh, yeah. Oh man, when I pull, it doesn't come apart now. The glue has worked enough. So you see I'm closing this gap here. I'm looking at it here and you guys are looking at it there. And then this gap here also. So if you can't get that to close, I have another solution for that. It's pretty easy. And that would be to take and pierce through with something like um, probably a toothpick. And that'll hold that foam together. Once you hold the foam together, I'm also gonna take this, just the wooden, well not the wooden, the paper part. I'll slide it down in here. I just want to make sure I have something to push up hard against. See how it's pushing? Mm -hmm. So once you push it, and you get it at the right angle, it's going to basically close that gap, which is what I want. Because that glue is there. There's definitely glue there. It's just if it never actually gets forced into itself, it's contact adhesive. It's not going to gap fill or anything like that. It's certainly not going to reach out and pull it in. Okay. Everything looks good. Gross, there's a hair on there. Okay, now moving the elevator. Everything is moving even, both sides. I'm looking at the tip here and here. Oh yeah, we got that good. Now I'm just kind of making sure all these things move. Yep, we got it, we're good. That was a lot more intense than I figured it was gonna be. All right, so now that we have the tail assembled, 
We just need to periodically, because of the glue, we have to go back and re-tighten some of these pieces. That's something you have to do even with this contact adhesive. If you use good stuff, it's gonna take a little bit of retightening and rechecking throughout the process. And in this case, I had a little bit of goop coming out. Also, you can let it dry and it will poop out of there and you can cut it with a knife uh, because it'll, it'll bulge out like a bubble. Then once it's out, you can, sometimes you can grab it with pliers and rip it off, or you can grab it with pliers, pull, and then cut it with a knife and it'll suck back in a little bit. It looks fine, you'll never notice it after that. Okay, so the next step would be probably to do control horns, but we're not gonna do control horns now because I want that stuff set up 100% or at least more close to 100% before we land those. Yeah, Agreed? I agree. Okay. So now the next step for us is gonna be to probably get the nose gear and mains installed, right? So let's do that. Are we okay flipping it upside down? Oh yeah, okay. it ain't gonna come out. Okay. I, I probably couldn't pull that apart if I wanted to. Okay. So be aware of that. Okay, so this thing here, this is a warning about cutting your hand off or cutting your hand. I just had somebody in the comments here the other day got 26 stitches because he tried to stop a turbo timber with his foot. Don't do that. Don't do that. Or I, something like that. I don't even know how it happened. I hear about these things from everybody. And, you know, fortunately, many, many, many people are very good at owning up to, you know, like, hey, I screwed up or whatever. But what happens is sometimes we hear a lot of people that, are like, yeah, the plane caught me. And it's like, the plane didn't cut you. You cut yourself with the plane. It's like the plane is an inanimate object. It doesn't do anything. So, you know, I mean, until you command it to do it, guys, let's just be realistic here. Um, and it is radio controlled. So you need to keep in mind that, uh, you know, you're flying this thing, especially if you're around other people, you need to be very careful. These things can hurt people, but they generally don't because people that fly these things come to have a certain appreciation for the dangers that they pose. So, all right, so we're good in there. The ESC is loose, that's kind of weird. Doesn't look like there's really a lot of option there. Like there's a place it's supposed to go or whatever. That would be really easy to replace if you ever have a problem. Um, but it might be a bit of an annoyance while you're playing with the toy, the airplane. We we'll want to check the direction of travel too, just to make sure that we're good there. And then obviously this has an XT60 Hextronics connector, and that will work and it will made up just fine with an IC3, uh, which is what we're going to be using. So let's grab the landing gear and get these things installed. So the mains have four holes, pretty obvious which way they go. If you do it wrong, they won't fit. That is a really good fit. That is really, really good. I hope this plane tracks straight because there ain't gonna be much adjustment there. No. But I love the fact that that went so smooth. That is awesome. And uh, we'll bring this over so it's ready to go as well. I don't know how that's gonna go in there. Looks like probably a set screw, a grub screw. Okay, so this came with a total of, oh, there's only, there's only four. So they gave us one extra. Okay. Okay, so there's three and then four. And then like I said, one extra. FMS is good about giving extras, but just be aware of that because if you're not expecting extras, then sometimes you assume you missed something. Yep. And that bag of screws was in the bag with the landing gear. Yeah. Separate from the other. I had to push that to get the, the head through. Mm. Very nice assembly. Looks way, way, way nicer than some we've seen in the mm. past. FMS is really does a good job of building some solid airplanes. You know, like there's no reinforcements in this tail, so it does make me nervous, but I am fully confident that if it needed reinforcements, there'd be reinforcements. You cannot say that for every manufacturer. FMS is, is good. There's, there's a number of different manufacturers out there that I would uh, be very concerned about. And there's a number of manufacturers that are they, re they really do a nice job. FMS is one of them. We've been super impressed with XFly. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, E-Flight does a good job. Horizon Hobby products in general are very good. They don't always have the best, but our experience has been that most of the time they put out class-leading products. Obviously, we work with them. We work with FMS. We work with 
XY, we work with Banggood, we work with Amazon, we work with a bunch of different companies that uh, provide different radio controlled airplanes and we are not beholden to any of them. And one of the first things we do when we start working with a company is we say, hey, are you guys okay with us telling the good, bad, and the ugly? And if they say no, then we pretty much, that's the end of it. That's why you'll notice that certain companies don't work with us, interestingly enough. Ironically enough, Hobby King offered to work with us and we turned them down. <laughs> Not forever, just at the time, it just wasn't gonna work. Um, and Hobby King does some stuff that's okay, but we've just had enough Dynamask experiences. Yeah. But even the people that sell Dynams, like BitGo has been great. We work with BitGo Hobby, obviously. They've been great. They've really done a good job. They make it right. They understand. They're responsive. They get it, you know. Not everybody is like that, you know. So we've been very happy. That was two millimeter drive, by the way, hex drive. Gets that in there. All right, so we have ample power cord. That's really nice. So if, if you did need to replace this or change it out or switch to an AV and ESC, it'd be really easy, actually. We'll have to see how this one goes. Maybe that'd be worth thinking about. All right, so we have uh, the light here. We've got the rudder here. We've got the elevator here. And then, of course, the throttle, which has sort of got pulled back as I was screwing with it. And it looks like there's kind of a box up here and I can point at it, it's right here. I'm touching it with my index finger. I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see, but that box goes to the top of the wing. So I'm sort of in a little bit, a little bit of a daze here. I'm not sure what to do to reach these all the way through the fuse. They did provide some cables. I don't know if they're extension cords or just Y cables. So that says gear. So that's obviously for the lights. Okay. So they gave us a three-way splitter here, which goes up to the wing, of course. And then this one goes back to the other one. Then it looks like flaps and ailerons. Now in our case, if I set up reflex, the flaps will be attached together and they will have one cable. But if we do full reflex, then that means that we're going to have two extension cords instead of one Y cable to go from the ailerons. If the aileron cables are long enough, then we don't have to worry about that. But my big concern is, are we gonna have enough cable to reach all these different places? So I think what we might do is, now that we have everything physically assembled, except we don't, let's continue onward. Let's keep building. Because honestly, I'm gonna just keep thinking on that. I don't know the solution yet. Um, we gotta get the nose gear on before we can put the prop on, right? Uh, yeah, that's what you said earlier. There's a screw that seems to be going in to here. You guys see that? Mm -hmm. It's a Phillips screw and it's located on this little collar down here. You see this here? Phillips screw backs off. This slides down in. Oh, it's actually not bit on anything because I'm gonna push down, just give it something to bite. Hold on. See, it's just loose. There we go. Now that I've got that down, I'm pushing down to give some bite for the thread so it'll back out. Okay, once it backs out, this will drop down in. This is a machine screw. Okay, pretty simple. There we go, just kind of lift up and down until it goes. Okay, so now I can tell you this from infinite amounts of experience. <laughs> breaking, infinite. breaking gear. Oh. Um, that one screw seems weaker than the spring, okay? So even though I can sit there and do this, and that's a cool novelty item, I have a stinky suspicion that the plastic is gonna be weaker than that spring, okay? We'll have to wait and see, but I'm kinda guessing that ain't gonna hold up very long. And to take the cowl off to get to it, you're gonna take your prop off and stuff. Yeah, right? that's not that big a deal. And probably when we're done putting that, that cowl on, we're probably gonna put a clear piece of tape in a couple of different spots that can be cut with an X-Acto knife to pull it off. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, honestly, the other thing is we can get down here though. This is very cool. Show the people this at home. If you take a 1.5 millimeter drive, you can actually adjust your steering wheel. See? So you loosen this and then you can adjust this. 
Oh, dang it. I was still hanging on. Okay. Now I didn't adjust that right, obviously. So now I need to center that, which is not a big deal. We're going to do that next. Hmm. That is nice though, that it's accessible. Mm -hmm. So we got the XBC battery checker again. We're going to hook this up to the rudder. The rudder, just get your polarity right and plug that in. Click the center button, scroll down to servo setup. Okay, so it's centered. Turns one way, turns the other, and then sweep. Okay, so as you can see, that's not moving. It's not hooked up. Oh, yeah, exactly. Okay, so now I have it currently centered. And we don't even care where that's hooked up because it's centered, that's the key. So we need these to match. We need this to be centered. And so I'm just looking at the, the, the seam and I'm lining it up with the seam of the aircraft. In fact, I'm gonna take the tail of that and I'm gonna line it up down here with an imaginary point and just kind of straighten it up. Does that look pretty good to you? Yeah, good? it looks. Okay. Looks good. Mm -hmm. So now I'm gonna to torque down this little collar in here. And then, actually we can leave it. Those are nine gram digital servos. Looks like they're plastic. Yep, both of them are plastic. Looks like a decent amount of throw. There's actually three holes on here, so if you wanted to have more output, you could move it to another hole if you're so inclined. And it looks like we're on the next to last hole on the output side of that. So if you want more output, you can get it. Okay, so that's centered and we're done with that step. Some of these steps we do in our builds are to fix screw ups that we make along the way. Some of the steps that we do are to avoid screw ups that haven't happened yet. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so we also don't have our antenna on the top of the wing. We are going to wait until the last hour. So if we forget to show this, our apologies in advance because there's a good chance we're gonna forget to do that. Um, all right, so the, the gear's on. That's pretty sweet. Looks good. Now, the next thing we got to do is we got to get this cowl back on, which takes about one second. So it's on. That was simple. You don't actually have to do anything to hold this on, but we're going to do anything to hold this on. And the reason we're going to do anything to hold this on is because I know that cowls are one of the things that like to break free. And then what happens is you end up with a cow that gets thrown into your prop and then it's ruined and it looks like crap and your plane is like this beautiful plane, except for the cow where the prop hit it. So I'm just gonna take a little piece of tape. We'll actually go kind of a long piece of tape. We'll cut the tape so that we don't have that weird ribbing on there. And then I'm gonna kind of push this. I'm gonna be very particular about lining up my lines. Then I'm gonna cut this and let it rest on the scissors until I'm ready. Okay, now I'm gonna drop this down. I'm gonna kind of even up my lines as much as possible. Okay, then I'm gonna just tape it right along the detail. And you're like, well, why did you tape along the detail, Brian? Because then when I cut it, everything has a good alignment point, plus those edges are strong and reinforced. Mm. Okay, and we'll do that on both sides quick. And then believe it or not, that'll actually really, really, really hold that nicely for us. And, um, you know, like sort of into perpetuity, it's, it's just held until we need to get in there. And then we just cut it with an exact knife when we're done. And you can just reapply a new piece of tape at that point, just like a UMX plane. I'm gonna hold this somehow and straighten. Okay, so there you have it. So now that's held on there. It's actually quite strong to hold that way. And if we have problems, we'll do another piece on the top. Okay. I'd like to put this here, but I don't know if it'll reach. Yeah, it does sort of reach. So now we need to do the prop. So this is where we're going to find out if we did that right, that last step. Okay. So the next step is to mount the prop and the prop is a pretty simple prop. 
Looking at the instruction manual, do they talk about it a lot? I am not sure. We had not got to that. I think it's the end. So. I don't even think they talk about it. So, they don't even show it. Right. What? Oh, no. I don't even see it. Evidently, you don't need the prop. That's hilarious. They didn't even show how to put it on. They just assume you know how to do it, which, you know, I mean, that's probably a fair assumption. So on this plane, there's actually um, a snap-on spinner. I do not like the style because they're prone to disastrous results, okay? I like the kind that screw on because what happens is you're likely to break them just getting them put on for the first time. See, pulling that out a little bit, pulling that out a little bit. It's beautiful, but if it breaks, then how beautiful is it, right? Not yeah. very beautiful. Ah. And I, I've had this happen before too, where you just have a heck of a time getting them off. Okay. That's off. Now, one other thing too, sometimes with three bladed props, you have to line them up exactly. I don't know if that's gonna be the case this time. So this goes back. Okay, so in order to get this off, you have to have a tool that goes through there. So I'm just gonna find an appropriately sized tool. Get in there, there you go. Okay, so now the trick is we've got a cowl on here. The cowl has to be installed in order to put this on, okay? Because this is bigger than the hole, right? Right. So there is no way to get around this step. It's just always awkward. So I'm gonna use probably something like this to hang on right here. And I'm just gonna try to, I guess I could hold here so I've got somewhere to go. Just to break that free. Once that broke free, once that's broke free, and just unscrew it. Now you don't have to use the spinner either. I just think it would be ugly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's just threaded. It's aluminum, it's very light. Then this is gonna go on there and it's gonna key up. Okay. Hold the threads and push it back as far as it'll go. That's as far as I can get it to go. Then we have to put the prop on. This prop, it just slides on. There's only one way it goes. Then this is going to go on, then this is going to go on. But this is where it's kind of tricky because sometimes they don't line up the way you expect they will. You can hold this now, which is nice. Okay, so you see what I'm saying? This, I don't know exactly where that lines up, so we have to kind of test fit this, but you don't want to snap it on. Mm. Okay, yep, so we got to bring that back quite a bit. So it's almost in the middle. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you can actually get that to snap on. I wonder if this will go through. Yeah, it does. I don't know why I didn't use that in the first place. Okay, so I'm trying to hold kind of three things at once and just torque this down. And this is where you just kind of do what it takes to get everything to work. I don't want to break this Chinese screwdriver when we got like 47 more. I know, that would be devastating. Okay. So there you have that. This is a beautiful spinner, by the way. One of the prettiest ones I've mm -hmm. seen. I just wish it wasn't a snap-on style. So get the first one on and you kind of lift it in. I feel like the prop is not allowing it to go. There we go. That's beautiful. Got a little bit of wobble to it, but that's mm -hmm. fine. I can live with that. Oh, it looks nice now. That's beautiful. All right, cool. So we've got that in. Obviously the wires are coming out the bottom, but otherwise it's quite beautiful. So now the big question is, how are we going to get wires through this plane? Are we gonna put everything from the top down? I think that's what we need to do because there's just too much going on on this plane. Yeah. So we have to have our wires fed through, which means we have to make a final decision on how we're gonna configure the wing because if we're gonna do reflex or crow, then we need channel, we need a channel, and we need a channel. 
So the ailerons, which are here, are going to need to be separated out if we're doing that, okay? And if we're doing that, we need to indicate which one's which so it's easier for us in the future, okay? So in order to do that, I'm going to label these in a way that's hopefully easy to find. We could either put a piece of tape on there. That's going to be actually a huge pain in the butt. I've changed my mind immediately. We're going to write on the black. It's going to be hard to read. What color is the underside of the wing? White? White. So we'll get a blue for marking the center of gravity here shortly too. Or black. Got another Q-tip too. Oh. So this is going to be hard to read, but we'll be able to read it nonetheless. So this one's going to be for the... That's the right wing. So I'm making an R. R. R A for right aileron. Okay. And that will be hard to see. Everybody knows it. Okay, so this is going to be the left aileron. So I'm going to put an L on the underside. And then I'm going to put on the other side, left A for L A for left aileron. Everything else is already labeled. I'm a little bit concerned that the labels are not going to hold up to pulling through that little chute that they built for us. Okay, mm -hmm. so as a result, it'd be nice if I knew I could put this on and feed these wires through and reach. But I know for a fact the flaps aren't going to reach. So you can see flap and flap. There ain't no way that's getting through. No. So in order to get the flaps through, we have to, this one's not labeled, so we'll just leave that one aside. That's for the ailerons. Okay, so we're just gonna stuff that in there. Okay, so flap to flap. Now these are good retention style clips. Okay, then flap to flap. Whoops. Now remember, if you were hooking this up to your receiver up here, you'd have the vast majority of your cables all hooked up and you'd only have to pass the throttle, the rudder, the gear. Elevator. Yeah, elevator. So four wires, but really coming from down, it's kind of like the same. It's going to be the same. So we need to even that up. You see how those were different lengths? So we're going to want to even that up at some point. We'll probably tie it all again a couple of times just to get everything down. These ones are labeled for ailerons. And then this, I believe we have enough length to get all the way through the wing. So this plane did come with zip ties. So we're gonna go ahead and take advantage of the zip ties that it came with. There's no reason not to use them. Zip ties are nice because they're light and they keep everything nice and tidy. but try to use an appropriately sized zip tie or you may run the risk of cutting your cables with them. All right, then we'll probably tie, you gotta go all the way through the fuse. So I, I'm thinking we'll make it. We should make it. I think, I think so. Yeah. But see where it comes out is another story then too. Do you wanna put one like right where you're pinching though? Just to make it easier? Yeah. To get them through? Yeah, probably. Probably have to. Probably have to in this case because of the nature of where it's coming through. You can put a string through if you need to or whatever, but I, I, I would say you're better off to just pull the things through. Plus then if we put the receiver on the bottom, we can bind it easier and all that. Yeah. Okay, so then one more zip tie here, and then that whole bundle will be done. So cable management is one of those things where, you know, everybody kind of has their own taste. My taste is do the best you can, make it look nice. It's not really a big deal one way or the other, just so long as it's not like wires draped into pinch points and hot spots like next to ESCs or, you know, motors or stators that are spinning or whatever it happens to be. Just do your best to make it so that the wires are unlikely to become damaged during normal function, like getting caught on the rudder. Okay, so you see how this is lifting here a little bit? Mm -hmm. I don't like that particularly. I thought I threw another piece of tape somewhere on a bag, but I threw half of it away already. 
I we... think it's probably going to be okay. Okay. Maybe I can just put a piece of tape. Let's do that. Remember I was telling you about that goo that comes out? See this? Oh, yeah. There's, there's a ball. Look what I'm going to do. I'm just going to grab it. Nice. And we're just going to use it to our advantage here. Okay. Oh, wait. Yeah. There's, there's nothing up there that it hits on. It doesn't key no. on this, does it? Okay. No, huh? It's flat. My only concern is you may actually be able to see this spot. Okay, this, this has some glue coming out the bottom too. Do you see that? I don't know if you can tell, but show the people right here. You're gonna have to get real low for that. See? So I'm gonna take that out right now as easy as possible. Just get it into that Q-tip. See how it's gone? Looks nice. And then that little booger, you can just pick it up. Okay. You do have to periodically check wherever you've glued together because you will get stuff like that once in a while. And there's not a lot you can do to prevent it. Oh, there's the neighbor cutting the hay. Mm -hmm. Alfalfa. Alfalfa. All right, so we've got that taped so it keeps it nice and tight at the top. I was kind of hoping there'd be a cover because that's a glass canopy. Well, it's plastic, so you can actually see that. So obviously this is gonna go underneath, so we'll have that later. And then this will not be necessarily used. We may have to replace it with our own extension cords because we're gonna do reflex. Have now, you, you don't decided that yet? What, that we're for sure gonna do reflex? Yeah. 100%. Okay. I'm doing it. Does it need reflex? Probably not. But you can't really go back. We don't lose anything because we have enough channels to do it. Okay. We're not doing a panic button, don't worry. I'm past that point. I'm panicking has already happened. Camera crew does not like it when I set up things that we don't need like panic button. I'm like, we're not doing the panic button for me. We're doing the panic button for people that are trying to follow along at home. So. I don't know if that's come out the bottom or not. Can you see by chance? No. Where does it come out? Uh, it's kind of in the middle. That's the problem. Yeah. Here, let me just flip the plane. All right. Oh yeah, it's coming through. Is it? Oh, okay. Yeah. But I just don't know which way I need to go with it. I don't think I'm coming up where the batteries are. I don't think so. Well, actually, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to get out of there no matter what, but then I'm gonna probably have to push it back through to the other side. Right. Because otherwise we're not gonna be able to reach to get those LEDs hooked up, okay? You have to just narrate. I'm caught, I'm caught on something. I don't, I don't like lifting like that. There we go. You need to hold the wing. Um, just warn me if I'm gonna knock anything off and okay. have it fall to the ground. Uh, there oh, it there goes. we go. Yeah. Oh yeah, nice. Okay, so we got pretty good, pretty good umbilical there of wires. So now that we kind of have that, We can uh, drop the wing into position. I'm gonna show the people what I'm doing here. Got two plastic pieces that are gonna key in here. They're not keying in very good. There we go, there we go, got it. Now we need to put the top on. Is it screws that go on the top there, Cam Crew? I'm honestly not sure. I mean, it's gotta be. Yeah, it looks like 3.2 shows two screws. They were probably the ones in the bag with the zip ties. Oh, that's the only... yep. Okay. There's a bunch of nuts and stuff in there too. Mm, more than nuts for. The nuts are for those wing struts. Trucks. Yep. Okay, so it looks like the screws that go in are actually, these might be these, no, the short ones have to be for the struts. Yeah. Because they look round headed. Well, the big one, then there'd be one extra. Yep, one extra makes sense. One extra. 
They didn't give us one extra for screw the for the strut, strut, but there's one extra nut. Oh yeah, it's in the bag. See? Oh. So that's one thing that's nice when the manufacturers give us all the parts that we expect. It's easy to deduce what you're using mm -hmm. and what's an extra. Because there is a nut cert under there. Oh yeah. There, yep. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's that's gotta be it. I think so at least. I didn't pay attention to what size it was. Was Probably it a 1.5? Two. The other ones were two, yeah. I don't know, it's looking really nice. This isn't one that you're gonna wanna have to take the wings off of. Yeah, no, definitely not. But there are people that will take the wing off. I really love the matte decals. I know, they look super nice. Yeah. Is that going in? Yeah, it's pushing down. We're pulling down. It's so weird. Some of these planes, you know, you put them together and you're putting them together for a long time. Ooh, that sucked in really. You see what happened? I was looking back here. Oh, yeah, I was too. Yeah, I, I want that to pull down, but it didn't pull down the way I expected. Uh -uh. But anyway, you get these planes all built together and you're thinking like the individual components don't seem very strong. And then you get them built and you're like, oh, that's actually pretty sturdy now that it's all together. Well, other times you build planes and you're like, yeah, that's still not very sturdy. <laughs> <laughs> the newer planes are getting so much more sturdy and strong. It's kind of incredible. For being foam planes, it's incredible. See how I'm kind of helping that along? Because as I do this, it's really yeah, sucking really down. That, down it, it was pulled down before at the beginning also, just to be clear. Yeah. All right, let's look at this. Oh, yes. Oh, that looks so good. The perfect little teeny tiny bit of dihedral in there, just like it would in real life. Not hardly any, but a little teeny bit. Oh, that looks so nice. I'm happy with that. That's, that's sweet. Awesome. Love the tricycle landing gear. All right, excited to see this going together. But also now we're to the point where we have to kind of do some of the not so fun work, which is trying to get all the wire everywhere. Um, I don't know if the wing struts, if we're really in a position to put those on yet. Should we wait? Um, I'm just afraid like if the glue isn't quite 100%, we might end up bumping it and yanking it out or something. Yeah, I think they're just gonna be in the way. So. Yeah, they are. That's true. Let's wait on that. Okay, so now we have to start figuring out a couple of different things though. Um, let's pause, we'll come right back. All right, so we've got the wing installed and we've got the wires all kind of coming out the bottom. And camera crew and I were talking about which receiver we want to use. This is an AR630. This is an AR631. I typically recommend the 631 because for five bucks more, you get the antenna. I like the idea of an external antenna. This one has an internal antenna. Now, I'm not sure I'm crazy about the concept of an internal antenna, but the thing I am crazy about is end pins. Now why Horizon in their vast wisdom doesn't offer this in an end pin is beyond me because I prefer end pins on like virtually every airplane. That being said, we're gonna use the 630 and really go out on a limb here, okay? Now the reason we're using the 630 is because the end pin, not because of the absence of the antenna. We could work the antenna out, but here's our plan. The wires come through this trough here. We obviously need to retain this area so that we have room to get a battery in. It's tight. It's not going to be fun to put a battery in this plane, okay? Plus, it's on the bottom of the plane, so that's going to be a pain in the neck. That being said, we can run the wires back. We think we have enough to reach, okay? But we only have enough to reach in, you know, if we have the end pins. And we can basically place this whatever direction we want, whether it's this way or that way. And then the antenna just kind of causes some grief for us in this case. So we're gonna use the Air 630 for this installation. And okay? then you should still be able to reach in from the back yep. to hit the bind button once we get everything landed. Yep, and we're gonna use the gear wires that are actually the LEDs. We'll plug those into the bind switch, or the not the bind switch, but the bind plug. Okay, now just to be clear, this cabinet is bigger, but only because it protects the pins, okay? Some end pin designs, the pins stick out. 
So you can see it's otherwise the exact same size, okay? But the switch is in a slightly different position, okay? But otherwise the same size cabinet and enclosure. So that being said, we can start landing wires and uh, we have this, gr this weird cable here. Oh. This cable is the weird one that needs to go between all the gear channels. Now we might still need extension cables to get the right and left ailerons plugged in just because they're just really not that far. The other thing is throttle, we're gonna gain a lot of length by going back here. Okay, so throttle is obviously gonna be in port one in this case. Now, how do we know what, what way they line up? It says S plus and minus. So minus is black or brown. Um, signal is either white or orange. And then red is red is positive voltage, okay? So that's for sure gonna get us energized when we're ready. This one is the left aileron. So I don't know if that's gonna be number two or number six, but it's gonna be one of them. And the way we know that at this point, okay, this is gonna go somewhere like this. I think it's gonna stick to the, to the top surface. So when the plane's upside down, we can see it. Now, the reason we're doing that is so I can press this bind button to initiate the bind process. That's really it. And we've got this accessible cabinet or this uh, cavity here we can get into. So that's gonna work really nice. I think our limiting factor is gonna be the length of these two wires. Everything else should reach okay from this side and then everything else should reach fine from this side. So the reason we go over all this with you is just so you kind of know our rationale for the decision we make on stuff like this. We have more gear wire over here than we do over here. So I'm gonna start with the single from this Y cable and I'm gonna plug in this. This is the lights. Some manufacturers have gotten away from using servo plugs for these sort of things because it causes people confusion and they've gone to uh, like a two wire. I kind of like this because then I can use it for something else if I decided to, okay? So now all these three need to get all the way through. This whole lot needs to go like that, okay? One of which is gonna plug into the receiver and then the rest of which. Then we can plug everything in up here and then slip it back, okay? So that's gonna be a bit of a bear cat to get through, isn't it? I wonder if there's a way I could just, I think I should just zip tie it all together yeah. and then send it. That'll be the easiest way. They're all labeled. We only have the one splitter, it's just the LEDs there. So we'll just do this. Okay, this will be just one of those idea things. You guys come and watch, watch your channel to get some ideas. Okay, so now you can grab that, that single piece. And in my case, I'm gonna see if I can reach all the way through with my forceps. I can see them down there, but you see I'm kind of, the geometry is not ideal. Yeah, I can see them in there. And I got a hold of the zip tie, uh, sort of. Oop, I missed it, I let go of it. It's pretty much all the way over here, so that makes it pretty easy. Okay, now I can click onto it. And just kind of yank the wires through carefully so they don't get unplugged basically. Okay, now they're through. So that, I mean, that wasn't super easy, but it wasn't super hard either. Could have been a lot worse. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so now the thing that's nice about that is look what happened to all my wires. They all got centered in a spot where they're not gonna manipulate or be screwed up by. Yep. Okay, so now what else are we gonna do right now? Tape those down. We're gonna tape them in position. And we're gonna tape them in position for one reason and one reason only, and that is so that we do not have complications from servo wires getting tangled up with our servo linkages. Okay, this is, again, one of those design features that's like, really, like, I don't wanna do that. I want you guys to do that. Okay, that keeps them out of this movement, mm -hmm. right? So now, we can come back to the whole concept of having all the wires free, which means I can cut this 
And yes, I did cut it in such a way to salvage the zip tie because I'm a cheapskate. What? <laughs> oh, oh, the camera crew loves that, that stuff. That accidentally falls in the garbage. It wasn't me. I bet it was. So then we have cables here that are red and black and it's very easy to distinguish them. Those are of course gonna be our LEDs. They're all the same. They're all just in parallel. So it doesn't really matter what plug they go to. In fact, they could be run in parallel to any of your servos because there's no signal lead. It doesn't matter. Okay, now I can just plug these in one at a time. Just make sure that your negative lines up with your negative. Okay. Okay, so the black goes to the brown. Black has torn my belly. Okay, so here it is. There it is. Okay. Then this one, black is away from my belly. Now it's toward my belly. That's lined up. These retention clips don't work when you only have two pins, just so you know. Okay, now that we have that done, now this becomes one thing that plugs in to the receiver. In our case, we're gonna use the bind plug, okay? So because of our, the nature of our routing for the cable, we gotta be a little bit careful to keep everything from getting too tangled up here which is gonna be easier said than done. But we do need this to not be a giant tangled mess either. And I'm concerned about it at this moment in time because it is kind of a tangled mess right now. Mm -hmm. It'd be ideal if we could have all these wires sort of secured together, the ones that plug into the receiver, you know? And this is the early stages of cable management, you see? So now we have everything kind of where it needs to be. And then this is just this peripheral tumor of cable. <laughs> it's not a tumor. Okay, so zip tie here. Now we're not gonna pull this totally tight. We're just gonna pull it so that it's kind of wrangling the cables. And then as we get those plugged into the, into the actual receiver, we can wrangle them tight. And then that'll allow us to feed it back and then know with some level of con, you know, uh, confidence that we're not gonna have an issue. Okay, so now this, see, we're left with one lead. Oh, dang, I forgot one thing, throttle. Remember how I was trying to go through there? Oh, in that bundle? Yep, my bad, my bad guys. All right, time to get some more zip ties. All right, so, I know you guys kind of get what I'm doing here, but it'll make better sense. If you don't get what I'm doing, just watch a little bit longer and you'll get it here in a second. The whole idea of getting all these things where they need to be is that you're not tripping over your cables and you'll know what your shortest length is. Once you know what your shortest length is, then you can start making decisions on how to flip cables above and below each other. Okay. Cause that's, that is an important step because otherwise you're gonna have things that have pressure on them and you could unplug in flight if the plane flexes a little bit. And make no mistake, they flex. Okay, you see this? I think we're gonna wanna kinda bundle this crap up like that and just make this tumor all one big chunky tumor. Okay? Yeah, that's what we're probably gonna do because I think that's gonna work. There isn't like a right and wrong way to do this, by the way, it's just the way that I happen to do it today. Like if I did this tomorrow, it might be different. Mm -hmm. So if, if you're new to the hobby, just remember this is a, kind of a subjective step. You can kind of do it how you like. You know, you'll note that I did tighten that though. I didn't just leave it slack. It's gonna be pretty nice and clean install. Considering where we were five minutes ago, this is much, better than I expected it might be. Don't you think, camera crew? <laughs> All right, so now the next step is we gotta figure out the receiver. So now we've got everything to this point, we're ready to basically start plugging in wires. So in order to plug in wires, we have to know what channel goes to what plug. So on this AR631 and this NX8, we have to set them up together. So that's gonna be kind of our next stage. We need to bind the thing, and you can actually bind it now 
and have that step done, and then you don't even have to get to the bind plug, but I'm a, a bind button or bind plug. In our case, I think I'm gonna do that now because that worked pretty good the other night when we did that on the, the other one. So signal's up at the top, so we can plug that in. We don't even really care where this sits, okay? Because it's just temporary at the, at the moment. So the next step is gonna be to set up our radio setup. We still haven't even glued in the antennas yet. We still haven't put in the, the wing struts, but it doesn't matter at this point because it really doesn't matter. Although maybe we should mark the CG while we've got the wing struts out. Because we're going to forget that step. We always forget that step. Yeah. We don't forget to mark it, but we forget to do it until the end and it gets married into the radio setup part. 60 millimeters. 60 millimeters, yep. No range. No range, so it's exactly 60, huh? Exactly. Zactamundo. If it's not exact, it will crash in a million plane. pieces. Okay, so 60 millimeters. Good enough there. Ooh, there's almost that little, like, oh, mm -hmm. no. Pretty close. Okay, so there you go. And I like to try to keep them somewhat symmetrical from the left to right side so it doesn't look like completely dumb. But to be perfectly frank with you, CG marks, if they're dumb looking and you can find them, then that's great. If they're dumb looking and you can't find them, then that's not great. And really that's as simple as that. So when we put in the battery, we're gonna make sure we can position the battery forward or backward to get the thing to balance out properly. So now really our next step is to set up the radio so that we have a model built. And we do need a battery for this step. <sighs> Looks like this one is a 3S 2200 Gen 2, which means there's just a discharge lead with a smart plug on it. You don't need a Gen 2, you don't need a smart battery at all for this plane, but that just happens to be what we're gonna be using. 30C exceeds the 25C that's required, and it does need a 3S or 11.1, .1, I think is what they call it. They call out that voltage, I'm not sure. Yeah, Some manufacturers call that out, sometimes they just say I want 3S. Three cells in series, that's how they get the voltage. The cells are 4.2 volts, at a charge state and 3.8 at a discharge state. Well, that's partially discharged, okay? So now, when we do this, we need to have a model created, so we got our battery ready. So our next step is to actually build the model in the radio system. So if you're just doing this for yourself, you can copy another model. I don't talk about that like ever, but if you have another model with the exact same wean type, you can copy the whole thing and then just fine tune it. Okay, we go through the full steps here on Brian Phillips RC because we know that you might be just looking at this one plane, you've maybe you've never seen our channel before and you want some help getting from that box to the air, okay? And we know that there's a lot of steps in the middle that this manual does not cover, okay? We're here to help fill the gap and then help you make uh, good choices on what you like to buy because sometimes you see a picture and you're like, man, that looks sweet or you see this guy on, you know, on the, on the interweb that's flying it and it looks great and you're like, there ain't no way you can fly it that good. I'm, I'm not skilled enough, whatever. Uh, you can take your doubts, you can apply them to what you know about me and then you can make your decisions. And when you do, buy from the links below, you'll help support our channel and we appreciate you doing that. Also, we have Patreon and PayPal. PayPal gets some money to us uh, with less fees. Patreon has more fees. But we do offer that option because we've had people asking for years and we've been very reluctant to do it. We just said, buy the planes, just buy the planes, you know, don't, don't just send us money. We felt like weird asking for that. We don't really ask for that. We just do it as an option for people. We know a lot of you guys out there want to support us and that's how you can do it. Buy the planes, enjoy the planes, come back, watch the videos, like, subscribe, and you know the normal drill. So we're gonna jump into radio setup right now. NX-8, we're gonna power it on. First thing that happens, the last plane that came up, of course, this is 1220 millimeter FMS Ranger. It doesn't even have flaps on it. So very simple setup, but we did do flap runs, okay? So we wouldn't copy that in this case, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you exactly how to make this model from scratch. So the first thing we'll do is we'll click, scroll down to system setup, disconnect RF. You'll know if this light goes off, that tells you that your radio frequency is off, the actual transmitter's off. Now we can go to model select. This is where we look away for just a second. We add new model. Okay, now you can look back. We can create any type here. In our case, we're gonna create an airplane. 
You could also copy one and you could do that in the model menu. And then it's the same exact thing, but it's not bound to the new plane. Okay, so we're gonna go to create. It's gonna create, it takes a few seconds. Once it's created, then we can start by naming it. It says 58 colon space, and then we use a legacy keyboard if you don't know how to do that. I do not like the new keyboard, but if you like the new keyboard, good for you. If you like the legacy keyboard, it's very easy to do. Ask in the comments below and I'll answer for you. So you scroll over, highlight, and then change it to whatever it is. So in my case, I'm gonna type FMS, uh, Sky Trainer 182, 1400 millimeters. We'll be back in a minute, we get that typed in. All right, so we have the Sky Trainer 182, 1.4 meter. So make sure you put a size in there because you'll get another model that's similar and you'll regret not having it in there. Then aircraft type, this is where you can set up what your wing is gonna be like. In my case, it's gonna be one, two ailerons and one flap. And you're like, but I thought you said flap rods and crow and all that. That's the way you do it. And I'll show you later. It'll show up in the other menus. And then the tail is normal. And we'll scroll over here and we'll change this acro image to a plane that looks more cool. Uh, which one do we have? Do we have a tricycle general aviation uh, plane? Mm. Oh man, that's a bummer. So the closest we've got is this. That's probably closer. And then flight mode setup. We do need to set up a flight mode to make it as easy as possible. So you can set up three different switches um, to run flight mode. So in this case, we're just gonna set it to switch A because it's easy. Flight mode one, flight mode two. Now I know channel B goes to auxiliary two, so we're gonna eventually change that, but I'm trying to think if we'll set that later. I think we'll set that to something else later, but we'll just leave it there for now. We always seem to have to switch it. I know. It's because we used panic last time. So. Right. Here, you know what? We'll just set it to I and then leave it. Then we don't okay. have to mess with it. Okay, so the reason we did that is because I, now controls auxiliary two, as opposed to B controlling auxiliary two, okay? Because you use B for flaps. Yep, exactly. So now the first thing I wanna do is throttle cut, because that's the most safety oriented thing. Also my knob is in the high position, we'll put it in the middle. Okay, so the knob. Oh wait, you changed that I to. I accidentally switched it. So click, switch H. See how it's going back and forth? And there's like a light and a dark. Dark is the one where it's on. So if I move the stick, it's still at minus 100. Now when I turn it off, I can move the throttle through its range as appropriate, right there. You can see that in the monitor. Okay, so now I wanna do flap system, turn it to switch B, and there you go. Flap, elevator, and crow. Cool, right? Okay, so position one is gonna probably be like minus 100. or plus 100. And then it's gonna be plus 100. And I don't know which one's which yet, we'll find out, okay? And just to make sure we don't overdrive things, well, we don't need to worry about it because we had a servo tester hooked up. Oh. Okay. So elevator correction, let's just try like, let's try 10 and 16, okay? And then Crow will mess with a little bit later. Speed, let's do two seconds. Okay, so this is where you're gonna make your ailerons respond if you want to. You can also tie that in in another place too. If you wanna do a mix with your ailerons to rudder, you would do it here. You would go down to inhibit, change that to on. Ailerons to rudder. And you can also tie that to safe, okay? So the whole idea is now that we know what channel's what, we can go in here and hook up our servos on the receiver and get that mounted. So let's do that next. So we'll just, so earlier we were talking about binding before, but we've already got this set up, so we'll just plug stuff in. It's not a big deal. 
Okay, so the throttle's already plugged in. Then we have this one here is right aileron. I know that from the R, that's on channel two. So you can see here it's channel one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so throttle, then right aileron. You can just take my word for it. See, that's gonna be our limiting factor is the length of those. Ooh. Yeah, exactly. But we'll be tucking it down in there mm -hmm. shortly. Then elevator. Okay, so here's elevator. So just remember, you gotta get the brown or black down. Okay, then after elevator, we're gonna go to rudder. Here's rudder. Brown is down. Then we have to go to flap. So here's flap. See how this stuff's all coming together now, finally, guys? If you haven't ever set up a model, this is how you do it. It's pretty much always the same, just a little bit different wing type. Then left aileron. That one says LA, so that's it. So I'm to try to kind of feed that through for good cable management. It'll look nicer if we can. Just kind of like push everything else away from it, to be honest. Okay. Then we have gear. What's gear? There's no read tracks on this. That's going to go into the bind channel. Don't worry, since we're not actually binding that way, it doesn't matter. But you could hypothetically hook up a bind plug. Now, some people do have problems with that. If you hook up like landing gear or something in that port, it would potentially cause, now we can, we can tighten this, it would potentially cause it to think that you have a bind plug plugged in. So just be aware of that. It's not impossible that we would get that here, but I doubt it. Okay. So what does a bind plug actually do? It shorts the signal to ground. So you'll note that they're all plugged in. Now I'm gonna take this, now that we know where all the wires need to be to keep that nice and neat, I'm gonna to torque that down. That will keep the pressure and propensity to wanna to unplug this on any one particular wire. So now we need to figure out a way to get that down there, but first we're gonna bind. Now, I'm going to level the plane, even though it's upside down, it doesn't really make a difference yet, but just as a means to an end, I want to be able to get to stuff easy. Okay. Note that we have a throttle cut turned on. Throttle cuts on and tested. Okay. Also, the timer, we never set up a timer. What, did it say how long? I, not that I read, but sometimes it's in those first pages. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's look at what the timer is because we, we need to set that up too. It's just all these things that we're used to setting up. I don't want to forget to set it up. Mm -hmm. A little voltage cutoff. Sometimes it will just say, are you clear to the back or clear to the beginning? No, there's one more. usually like in a random paragraph if it says and it doesn't always. I don't think it's going to say on this one okay so we're just going to set it to five minutes okay. so in order to do that that's super easy we'll just click we'll scroll down to timer it's set to five minutes so if you wanted six you could do six actually you know what let's just set it to ten I don't want to lose the plane let's do eight Let's do five. Let's just do five. I mean, that's it. <laughs> and then one out is active. Next. And then we're going to turn off the one minute warning. We're going to turn off 30 seconds. We're going to turn off 20. We're going to set 10, 10 seconds to voice expiration to tone and vibrate. And then every minute thereafter will beep. Okay. So now when we give it throttle, it's going to start counting down. It's going to keep counting until we clear it. Also, we need to rename our flight modes and all that good stuff. But we'll do that in a minute. Throttle cuts on. Everything should be safe to go for this step. This step is gonna entail plugging in and the motor could come on. You need to be aware of that. If you're concerned, take the prop off of the machine. I, I don't do that. I've never been cut, but I know people have been cut. So you need to be seriously careful in this step. There's basically two ways that people get hurt in this hobby. And it comes from being cut by props and lipos. Lipos are the most dangerous part of this hobby. Be careful, treat your, treat your lipos nice and they will treat you back nice and not burn your house down, generally speaking. But you need to be aware that lipos are the most dangerous part of the hobby. I don't talk about it hardly ever because I can't control it any more than you can control it. 
The best way to control your lipo safety is to discharge them when they're not in use. It will help to keep the chemistry as close to safe as possible, but there's still a risk all the time with lipos. So just be aware of it. Okay, PSA over. We're gonna plug this in. You'll note that my elbow is above where the prop is if it would start. This is an IC3, it plugs into an XT60 just fine. Okay, very cool. Doesn't matter what position this is in, I'm not gonna be able to bind, so I'm turning this off at this point. It hasn't started yet, so we should be safe in terms of not getting cut, but I'm still not gonna trust anything. Now, all I have to do is press this button and it starts flashing. You see the flashing? Yep. This is spatially aware, so it does matter, but we're gonna do forward programming later where we teach it the spatial awareness. I'm gonna get away from there at least two meters. You don't have to be two meters away. No, I know, but I can see the flashing in Pressing the bind button and then press the power button to wake it up. Okay, it comes on, it says binding. Bind failed. This seems to be the normal protocol these days. So I'm gonna come over by the camera crew. I'm gonna click, scroll down to bind, bind. See, see the flashy light still? Okay, let's go back a little bit, camera crew. We're gonna try again, bind. Got it. This is where you wanna be extra careful. Now it's gonna do auto configuration. You can see a solid light on there. Okay. Now everything's gonna to come to life. Our elevator and rudder are not hooked up. Our ailerons are hooked up. Our takeoff flaps and landing flaps, totally sweet. Going in the correct direction. That's always nice. Okay, so we don't have crow set up yet. It doesn't matter yet. We also need to set these up. So let's go ahead and do that while we're looking at it. We know that this is neutral for the elevator. We also know that that's not lined up. Okay, so what you're gonna to wanna to do is you wanna look down the length of this surface here I have the added benefit of being able to hold my thumbs here and here to make sure it's flush, all right? So all we're gonna do is we're gonna take like three fingers, like thumb, pointer, and middle. And then we can brace that as we spin. Then we're gonna get that so that this lines up perfectly with the center hole of the top. Do you guys follow what I'm saying? Let's try that. Yeah, that looks pretty close. I think that's gonna be our best first starting point. Make sure you don't bind it. You don't want this to be like cock, cockeyed like this because it'll put pressure on it as it's not being used. Okay. I overshot. I need to come back out. How do you know you need to come back out? Show the people. See how this tip is pointed up? That needs to be flush, flat, mm -hmm. level. There's one full turn. Eh, it was not there though. It was dang close, I agree. I might need even a little bit more. I think so. Maybe. I don't know. I think we're gonna go with it. Okay, now we check the elevator for movement. That's wrong, it's backward. We'll fix it in a minute, but it's working, it's moving. This is not the time where you get everything perfect. Okay, I can turn this so I can see easier, but I don't want everything to fall out. That would be awkward. Okay, so now we can see where the rudder is. We can see for alignment here. Okay, so we need this to come out. Same thing, index finger, middle finger, brace, and then spin. Another half turn. Okay, gotta go a couple more, one, that's one turn, that's two turns, let's try that. And this is just guess, guess and check until you get it. Ooh, went too far. Let's try that. Nope, I've gotta go out another turn. Whole nother turn for sure. And let's try that, see how we look. Well, that's, nope, I've gotta go another half turn at least. I'm gonna take it a full turn because of the way that this is bent. You see how it's kind of bends? Mm -hmm. Now it's bent back down. It'll be better for the geometry of everything. Oh wait, that's too much. I gotta go back. That means I'm gonna be stuck with a weird bend in it. Oh, 
looks pretty dang good. Now, why do we care about these being aligned? Well, the better it is now, the less you have to trim. Yep. And the more trim range you have. Okay, so it's moving. I don't know if it's going the right way. I didn't pay close attention. Doesn't really matter yet. Also, I want to talk about these little rubber things. This is a fuel hose. Okay. So when that moves, you don't want, you see that? You don't want it to bind. See how it's touching? So you mm. need to have it back just a hair. So now it's not touching. You see what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. The top half of that fuel hose would have been touching in the previous position. Okay, so we've got that all done. So now at this point, it's time to basically get everything put into the plane. Uh, because the next steps we're going to be doing is forward programming. So at this point, we can power everything down, do a full power cycle. Because there's no reason to be at risk of getting cut with a prop. And then this will also help to commit everything to memory, which is nice. Okay, so that's all. All right, so we got everything powered down. And now we have to figure out where we're going to put this thing. So we took the, the little bundle, the extra bundle, the tumor, and stuffed it back there. And then I'm, I'm sort of reluctant to get myself hamstrung here on battery space, but I'm also at a point now where it's like, do I actually have any way of getting my hands in here to stick this on the underside of that thing? I don't think I can because I just don't, I don't know how to get my body in there to a way that I can do that. Now, if I can stick this in here, see this is where your 631 would have been kind of nice because then we could we could stick that in there and then all the wires would be sticking out. It just depends. Sometimes you run into weird situations mm. where your plan doesn't exactly work. Oh, <laughs> weird. Okay, so you see this? This kind of just sits in, it's barely in there. So we could put this right there, I guess. I just hate having to work around that every into time. perpetuity every yeah. single time we load the battery, you know? So I'd like to be able to stick this into here if it's at all possible. I just don't think we have enough clearance. And that, like if this was a regular non-stabilized receiver, that would be fine. But this is a stabilized receiver. It has to know its spatial awareness. So that means it has to be mounted in one of the primary axes. So let's try, go I'm going to try just stuffing it back there and see how close we can get it back there. I don't think it's going to go. I mean, it'll go, it'll go, but I don't think it's going to, like, it's trapped. I mean, geez, it's in there so tight. I mean, we could almost just stick it in there and leave the dang thing. It's a little bit tempting to just leave it in there because it's in there. As long as it's in there tight, it's going to stay. The problem is I don't know if I, I have enough leads to actually pull that back. So let's, we're just pushing it through. We'll see if we can get it all the way through here. And you certainly don't want to get to the point where you're yanking so hard that your cables come undone. Okay, now I push that back, going back to the original plan now. Now that it's back there, now I just gotta see if I can get a hold of it somehow. Oh geez, that isn't even like halfway back. But can you get a piece of double-sided tape on it and just put it where it is? Yeah, how the heck am I gonna do that though? Like, I mean, it's not easy to get in there. I know. So, what I need to do is I need to try to get, the tumor's kind of in the way now. So now I'm just trying to push the wires towards you. Okay, so I got a hold of the wires, but I don't necessarily have hold of the transmitter, or the receiver rather. Oh man, that's what I was afraid of when I did this, is that it was gonna, we'd end up with like hamstrung on length of our cables. And that's kind of where we are right now. Sorry, I just bumped the bike guys. And what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to just try to kind of work that all the way through. Is it kind of poking out at all? No. Not even close? No. Okay. I can't even see the receiver. Oh, you can't? Nope. That's super convenient. Oh, maybe um, that's it over there. Not barely. Well, you can't, but I, I mean, I can, I can touch it. It's up in the air right there. Just rather difficult to get down. So obviously we got to get this thing mounted somehow. So I might be able to even turn it sideways and just get it trapped and then we can go with that somehow. But whatever we do, we're going to have to get to it and then commit to it. 
So I might fight this and come right back when we figure it out. Okay, so I came up with a plan. The camera crew is gonna shoot from this angle so you can see. This, I want this here, but I wanna get it as tucked in as possible, okay? The wires are namely my biggest concern, okay? Because the wires need to obviously be cared for, but they, they need to be out of the way too. So you see this? I'd like it to be in that little cavity there, okay? I can't put it at a bit of an angle because a bit of an angle will cause this plane to be, it needs to be either this way or this way, or this way, or this way, or this way. But it can't be, you know, like at an angle because that'll cause problems. So what I want to do is I want to basically attach this here, but I need to make a pocket so that those wires can go up there. And I'd like to keep it pointed this direction. So I'm just going to get in here and just go to town for a minute. Okay, just making a place for the wires to exit. And yes, that is the linkage that goes to the steering gear or the steerable nose gear. So I'm just grabbing my pliers or my, okay. Forceps, just taking out a little chunk there. Let's see how we look now. This is gonna be, if I had, I picked an end pin the one time that an end pin didn't help me. But we thought it was gonna help. We thought it was gonna help because we thought we had a plan and our plan didn't work out. So then we had to be kind of creative and work around it. And that does happen once in a while, especially on plug and fly planes, okay? And yes, you're probably watching this and you know, you've, you've already seen how we fixed it. And so you're like, well, Brian, just do that thing you did in the future, future you. Future you knew exactly what to do. I agree, future me did know exactly what to do. Okay, so just doing a little teeny bit of excavation here. Okay. And then we just use our forceps to reach into the white abyss and grab that off of there. Okay, now we should be able to get this and try to stuff it back gently. And then that's what I'm kind of going for, folks. Get the wires where the wires need to be so that they're satisfied. You see that one brown wire does make me quite nervous. I don't know why that one looks so weird. I'm gonna just make sure that it's relieved of pressure. That is the flap wire. It's part of the flap circuit. So we'll just verify that that doesn't cause problems. Okay, so we have problems immediately because it's pushed in further than we wanted it to. So now I have to pull that back out. Not a big deal, but it does have to be dealt with. So now we'll look, see the brown wire? That brown wire is actually the left aileron, not the flap, okay? So now this can go either way, but I want the wires to go that direction toward the tail of the aircraft. So I almost feel like saying, if we were to take this and put sticky on this, we could actually stick it with the front end toward the front of the aircraft, mm. okay? As opposed to trying to tuck this all the way in there, which actually that'd be way better if we could do it. I just don't think it's gonna happen. I think it's gonna be stuck on the, on the end here. And then it's gonna be trapped in the back, okay? So I'm taking this ultra sticky double-sided tape here and it's ultra sticky, just take my word for it. I'm gonna cut it off. And I'm going to cut it off so that the extra is not in the way because it's in the way currently. Use the exacto knife here to actually peel off the backing because this backing can be pretty terrible to get off of here. We ran into that the other day when we were doing another model. This does not come with the transmitter or with the receiver rather. And I just find that very strange because you pretty much need to mount them somehow. But there's more than one way to skin a cat. Let's just put it that way. Okay, so now this is where I need to be a little bit careful to not have it shoot too far back. So I'm gonna be a little bit more proactive this time with my cable management and all the goodies that go into this. So I'm gonna stuff that back first. That's a 40 amp Predator ESC in case you guys were wondering. Okay, now I need this wire to be out of the way and I'm just gonna kind of roll this into position if I can get what I want out of life here. Okay, so we're going in, we're going in, we're going in, we're going in, pushing, pushing. And now we're gonna relax a little bit and not go over too much. And then I'm gonna pull up a little bit. And now I just need to push the tail end of it in a little bit deeper without pushing the nose in. Okay. 
And I'm just hoping that I didn't lose my actual bite with the double-sided tape, which is mm -hmm. what looks like happened maybe. Mm -hmm. Can you tell? It does look like it's pushed in a little bit further, but I don't know if it's still stuck. Yeah, good, good question, right? I don't like the way that that went, but you know what? It's in there. I don't think it's moving. I don't think it's going anywhere. Are you happy with the squareness? I am very satisfied with the squareness at this point. If I was in any doubt, if I was legitimately concerned about that, now I can put that back where it was too. Then what I would do is I'd probably come in here with foam and pack around it, you know, like here. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, I would take this piece of foam that's in my hand right here that came out of this, where the wires came out and see if that fits. It's a little bit too big. And then this little piece of foam, that's too small as well. Okay, well that answers that question. That was kind of a cluster, guys, and I apologize for making that so cluster-esque, but it is gonna work fine. Okay, so without further ado, we're gonna basically get our wing struts on right now. The plane is already bound, so we technically could uh, continue on with setup, but we're up against the battery window. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this put back together so you can see what it looks like. We'll get everything glued into position. And then we're gonna pick up our radio setup after we're done with those steps. Obviously we're clear here, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. So our wires that we taped down are still taped down in a good way. This is still good. All right, so now we need to put the wing struts on. This should be a pretty straightforward process. There's a nut that goes in. It's gonna be kind of like blind to us. That says R. Oh uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay, so this is gonna go something like that. And then that'll pull the wing into position. So we're gonna get that going real quick. Uh, we do have nuts and bolts over here. It needs a Phillips screwdriver and then the nut's gonna be held by the plastic. So all that needs to happen is that just gets dropped in there like that. And then we're gonna use the Phillips screwdriver to hold the screw. And uh, of course these are removable, but I would kind of expect that the people that are buying this plane are not gonna be taking this off every time. So it'd be a bit of a pain in my opinion. And it looks like we need a bigger screwdriver too. This, this one's just a little bit too small. Hmm. I'm gonna grab a number two screwdriver. That should give us a better crack at success because I wanna torque these down nicely. This is a structural member on the plane. Yep, so you wanna get it tight because it is actually bearing load on the plane itself. So one more screw, one more nut. Okay, so I'm gonna hold this nut in the back. So folks, we do these radio setup videos and uh, build. And we know that sometimes they get a little bit tedious. Believe us, <laughs> we know they're tedious. We're here. <laughs> We're here. <laughs> Um, this is just informational for you guys. I'm just taping this. Yes, the tape is not gonna look pretty, but it's gonna give me a level of confidence as that glue continues to dry. And then after the glue is dry, if I so choose to take the tape off, I can do that. But that's just gonna make me feel better that that's not gonna pop out. But my idea is I wanna get both sides done. And then when we're doing our radio setup, we can actually put it on its feet or on its landing gear, so. Okay. So this side is gonna be done in just mere seconds. Same exact procedure. Can actually kinda, it is labeled left here too, which is interesting. Not like I knew that when we were doing it. Mm -mm. It been kinda handy, but it wasn't hard to figure out. Okay, so guys, we know that sometimes the tedious nature of these builds has to lead to some frustration for you. Um, but we really appreciate you guys coming back for more. Obviously we fly the flights at the beginning because not everybody wants to watch the build part of it. But we do want you to know we don't pull any punches. When we do our videos, we show the whole process and that includes radio setup and everything. I'm gonna need some help on this one here because I can't be in two places at once. I need that wing to be lifted just a little bit. 
Okay. If you just, yeah, there you go. Got it. If you can lift up on the wing, that'd be great. Okay, stop. You see how the whole plane's pivoting? Yeah. Keep going until it hits. Okay. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, let go. Okay, I'm hoping that doesn't pull out because it sure feels like it's gonna pull out. Tape that one. I'm gonna tape it, but I still feel like it's gonna pull out as it is. See, yep. pulling out exactly as expected. So I'm not sure like if we're just gonna have to let that glue set up longer and then come back to this step. But obviously this is a structural component and it does matter. So I am gonna have it in there but I just don't know exactly when that's gonna happen because this glue has to be totally set up. You see how it's wanting to pop out? That is not very cool at all. So we'll tape that in place for now. We'll tape this in place for now. The other side seems yeah. to be okay. Well, we did tape the other side too though. Yeah. And I wonder why that's pulling so hard. Makes me quite nervous because I don't know if that glue is ever going to be strong enough to resist that level of pull. Mm. I don't think we have it wrong, but it's possible we got something wrong. At any rate, we'll flip this plane over. We're going to have to resolve that at some point. Boy, it looks good, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. So now that we have it in the upright condition, we should be able to put these on. These ones have a spear. Like a, like a, you can pierce those in. Oh yeah, that looks so good. So now the next step is I need to glue those things down and then we'll be done with the assembly of this model. And the only thing left is going to be to basically finish the radio setup. Boy, that is really pretty. Yeah, it is. Very. Love the chrome spinner. I hope it doesn't make a ton of noise when I run it. Okay, so just a little bit of glue here. That dry fit is a good idea. I'd highly recommend it. So that must have been the one that I have loose, right? Yep, you screw. got the screw. Yep, I got it. Yep, both. Okay, so we'll just get that glued and then we should be golden. So now it's just a matter of popping these things out, let the glue work. I got a little bit extra on one of them, so I'll get that cleaned up. So in the meantime, what we're gonna do is we have to get a battery issue worked out on our camera, and then we are going to come back and finish our radio setup, which is gonna constitute the forward programming portion, and uh, we'll be back, stay tuned. So we're going to finish this radio setup on the NX-8 here with the Sky Trainer 182. First things first, we were running out of battery, so we apologize for the weird interruption. This AR630 is kind of stuffed in here sideways. I took hot glue and just ran a bead down here and a bead up here. And that just kind of keeps it in, in position here, okay? So also our struts are not attached at the top. On either side, we just have the nut screwed in there. So that will get us by for now. We just wanted to mention that so that you don't think we're trying to pull a fast one. Um, <clears throat> the antenna are gonna make this thing pretty hard to get the battery in. Oh yeah. Just full disclosure. So if you're thinking about putting those antenna on, you may wanna think twice about it because look how I'm having to do this. And this is not exactly the easiest connection to make. Nope. So as you can see, not exactly convenient. <clears throat> okay, so we're gonna let that initiate. We're not super worried about the exact position of everything at this point. It may not even initiate. It did, okay. 
So elevator is wrong. Rudder is correct. Ailerons are correct. Okay, so let's switch servo setup, travel, reverse. Elevator, up, down, roll left, roll, roll right, take off flaps, landing flaps. Okay, good delay, good correction. It's going the correct direction, it's going down. Okay, so then we've got yaw left, yaw right. So all the correct directions are working. So now let's sit down and we'll look at some more settings here. I like to do this setup with the plane pointed away from me so that it's really easy to test all these things. You can see the lights are really nice. Mm -hmm. The anti-crash beacon's a little bit schizophrenic. I'd like to see it a little slower, mm. but it does look nice. It does look nice. Okay, so. Dual rates and expo. We're just gonna do our standard setup. Five, 10, and then 20. and then back the rates off to 90. We'll start in this setting, okay? We're gonna do that same for all three axis of control. That just means that we have a little bit of expo minimum. We have about double as much expo where we start and then we'll have double again. I don't know why that scroller's been doing that lately. It's kind of frustrating. We do obviously use our transmitter quite a bit, but Still don't know what the heck that's all about. There's certain menus where you scroll and it'll like kick up to the, you know, way further than you mean to go. And then there's other menus where you scroll, 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 and it doesn't hardly do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's where we're gonna start. Throttle cut's already set. <clears throat> Incidentally, let's test that real quick. Yep, it's tested. We haven't actually run the throttle. Let's try that. Nice. Yeah. Way, way better than the last one yeah, we did. Yeah, that sounds good. The uh, 1220 millimeter Ranger had some major oscillations, so we had to we had to balance the prop. Okay, so flap system looks good. So we're good on everything there. The only thing I want to just show you is if you're going to do crow, this is where you could do it. I would like crow. So the way crow works is they go up on the ailerons go up and act as ailerons and that will help to spoil lift as well on full landing configuration okay <clears throat> now for now i'm going to set that to zero you can also set them to be flaps hmm. which is pretty cool so you could have a full length flapper on Take off flaps and then regular, which is pretty cool. It's all mixed in. You don't have to mess with it at all. And then all your safe and AS3X will be working through those channels, which is pretty cool. So I think at this point, I'm just going to set it so that it's like uh, a 40% flapper on mix. So the full landing configuration, you're just going to get a little bit more down. Okay. All right. So back from that, then we're going to go timers already set telemetry. We don't worried about forward program we need to do. Actually, you know what? Let's do this first. Audio vents. Flight modes. Flight mode one. This is going to be safe. Or excuse me, this will be AS3X. So I just have to type that in and we'll come right back. Okay. And then we want it to speak. AS3X. This is one of those times where I want to be able to scroll fast and it just takes forever. Because it's way toward the bottom. There's safe mode, AS3X mode. Flight mode two, AS3X mode. Flight mode two. Okay, so now we're gonna change this to say safe. Okay. So now that says safe, and then we're gonna get that to say safe mode. Safe mode. Except really, really, really slow.
Okay. So slow. All right, so that's done. Now we can go into forward programming. So it's gonna connect, use telemetry to go back and forth, gyro settings, first time setup, it's gonna blah, blah, blah about a lot of stuff. Just remember if you change any servos, this is where you have to reset it, okay? So continue, now we're gonna put it on its nose, highlight continue so you're ready to go. Set it on its nose, that helps it to determine the direction that you put the receiver, which that looks pretty correct, doesn't it? Yep. Okay. Is that the first time we've done a sideways one? Uh, yeah, I think so. You did. <clears throat> okay, so gain channel apply. I'm gonna set it to this channel, which is the right knob, auxiliary three. Okay, automatically knows it. We're gonna apply the changes. Just be prepared in case a motor starts. This is the only time where I would be concerned about a motor starting because it reboots the receiver just in case you have some weird symmetry, asymmetry in your throttle or trim or something weird. Okay, so let's go gyro settings. First time safe setup. So we have to set, as you can see, Continue, just ignore the lady. That's her timer. So now, <clears throat> it's already set, continue. Next, next. You'll note that I have to do this twice. That's not normal. It's just the way it is. This is where you can make correction if the plane sits funny. Like for instance, this plane might have a tendency to climb a little bit with safe as opposed to going level because the nose gear holds it up a little bit. Okay, so we may have to make a small pitch correction like this, but we're just gonna fly it at first and see what it looks like. Okay, so this is where you say in flight mode three or safe mode, which we've called it, we want it to level and limit, okay? Now it's going to reboot. One dance, two dances. All right, so now we can go back out. Now we're going to test everything. First things first, this is our gain for our AS3X. You'll note that nothing's happening yet. Throttle cut is on. That's because we haven't given it throttle yet. Throttle cuts off, 25% or greater. Now listen. It is working, but I can't see the surfaces move. Then let's go AS3X mode, elevator up, safe mode. I don't see a difference. So in safe mode, I'm gonna look at the ailerons. Trying to find the quickest route home. Okay, and it's going the right direction. So that's important. Now, I'm gonna go into this forward configure, the forward programming again. Jarvis settings, yes, 3X settings. This needs to go up to four. It's tied to this knob. So now watch what happens. We've already given throttle, so it should work. Toward the camera crew, toward me. Up, down. Aileron up. Ooh, it's going the wrong way. Did you see that? Do you see that? I can see it in person. I don't know if I'll be able to see it. It's going the wrong way. It's going the wrong way. So it's a good thing we checked that. That would induce a roll and cause us to crash. So I need to look inside here real quick and see what's going on with my receiver. Did it pick the wrong position? The Spectrum logo is going toward the green light, okay? And the pins are going toward the tail, okay? So we're in agreement there, correct? Okay. <clears throat> so let's go back in here. So we know that we have movement, so we'll just leave it at four, four times. System setup. 
orientation, set manually. See that? That's backward. There we go. That's the way it should be. Oh. So it got it wrong. It's gonna reboot. Don't worry. It's all part of the show, people. Two. So we're in safe. So it thinks it's upside down now. So you have to relearn. So forward programming. Gyro settings. Well, we're in safe. So let's come out of safe real quick. Let's just test this. So we're out of safe. Okay, so safe is on in the wrong time too. So we'll go back to forward programming. Gyro settings. Safe settings. Excuse me, flight mode setup, there we go. Okay, so you see how on flight mode, ooh, see that's, see, it's not actually controlling it. Flight mode setup. It's not looking at the right channel. <laughs> but that is the correct one. That'd be switch I, gear. Now we'll go next and see if it wakes up. Well, that's interesting. Okay, so we might have to do this again. System setup, relearn servo settings, apply. Complete. Gyro settings. F mode setup. See, it's still stuck there. Let's change it to something else and then we'll change it back after we come back in. Okay? So this is gonna be That's correct. That's correct. Now let's change the channel back to A. Okay. It still thinks it's in safe now. That's not changing it. And this is also not changing it. So I think it's a good time to reboot the whole system. So in order to reboot the system, see, it's not upside down now, according to it. Right. Okay. So the way I'm gonna reboot the system is really easy. We're just gonna go in here, unplug the battery, plug it back in, which is easier said than done on this because of the nature of the plane. Oh, sorry guys. Okay. I want to put this plane down and it's probably going to give us trouble because of where we bound it. Ah, it didn't. Ah, see, but it still, it thinks, still it's thinks it's upside, upside down. down. So if I go into forward programming, Okay, so not sure why this decided it's gonna do this, but we'll figure it out and come right back and tell you all about it. All right, YouTube, sorry for the interruption. We ran into a scheduling conflict, so the camera crew had to go, and so I ended up figuring out what was going wrong, and we fixed it. So first things first, let's look at all the control surfaces. The control surfaces are elevator up, elevator down, roll left, roll right, 
yaw left, steer bolt to the left, steer bolt to the right, and yaw right, okay? So as you can see, now we have takeoff flaps, we have landing flaps, and we have some extra down on the ailerons. The whole time we're keeping and maintaining. Okay, so there's two things that we did to resolve the conflict. The, the conflict we had with the aileron roll, so let's show you that too, turning the gain all the way up on the knob. We haven't given any throttle, so we'll do that now. That's gonna activate AS3X, throttle cuts back on by the way. So when I move this up, that should go up. It goes up, it goes down. It's subtle, but it's moving. I can see it up, down, up, down. Now elevator up, down, up, down. Rudder's gonna go towards you, away from you, towards you. It's hard to see, so I can show you that in the menu. And clear the timer. I'm gonna scroll down to forward programming. What I had to do was I basically redid my um, initial setup by going to gyro settings, system setup, and then I relearned the servo settings, right? and then I redid the orientation, okay? It fixed the problem. One step I did was I ended up flipping both of these ailerons. Um, it's still represented in the menu wrong. So it shows that the, that the receiver um, with, with the bind button is actually going that way. That is incorrect. It's actually spatially going this way, mm -hmm. okay? I don't know why, that's the first and only time in the entire time we're using the AR630, 631, or 637, or 637 TA, which was a bind and fly that we pulled out and used again. So that is the first and only time it's been tripped mm -hmm. by its position in the airplane. I don't know why, it doesn't matter. The point is it's working now. And that's why you too need to verify that it's working. Don't just trust the equipment's gonna work. Verify it before you fly, okay? AS3X setup two times is where I'm gonna leave it. It's at four times now, gains all the way up because it's adjustable on auxiliary three. And I'll show you one other thing we fixed too. Okay, so up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Rudder towards you, rudder away from you. Now you have to look at both controls because these are flapperons essentially, okay? We still have these disconnected too, just to let the glue, glue set up. Up, down, up, down. So it's countering the environmental impact. Now with the plane level, roll left, roll right, elevator up, elevator down, yaw left, yaw right, everything is working, okay? When I put safe on, nothing changes. Elevator up, safe is off, safe is on. Okay, also look at the roll authority in AS3X compared to safe. That's another quick way to verify. Also, it's not trying to correct. I'm putting it back in safe. Now I'm gonna flip the plane over. Okay, so it's trying to find the quickest route to level. And is it? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so it's working. Now we're gonna look at the elevator. Yes, it's trying to bring it level. Yes, it's trying to bring it level. So you need to actually verify those things. Why? Because sometimes stuff doesn't work the way it should. I'm gonna change this back to two. Keep in mind, my gain here at 100% is four times. This is zero is zero is zero. So I just like to be able to write about the middle and I think that's where it's gonna be needed. But just look how much less you can see you can barely see it, okay? Mm -hmm. So that does leave some concern for me. I don't know if we're gonna need more than what I've got here, but I'm just gonna go with it. I think it's about right. Then, what was going on is the F mode setup was I was trying to use channel A, or not channel A, but switch A. The problem is switch A was gear. Gear was that aileron or that one, I don't know, it's one of the two. Mm. And here's what I was doing wrong. I had it set to A, but A is auxiliary two in my channel assignment. 
but I was trying to use gear and A here because that's a default setting. That's why it wouldn't work, okay? You have to go to next. Okay, so now when I flip, it goes to AS3X only and safe is off when it's back like this and when it's forward or toward my belly, it goes to safe mode, okay? So now we can exit. That is very easy to see in monitor mode. If you go to monitor and you flip the switch back and forth, you can see auxiliary two is changing. And also, just so you know, this switch is tied to the flight modes. So flight mode one, flight mode two. Keep in mind that with flight modes, you can set so that your trims are attached to flight mode one and two, or flight mode one and flight mode two separately. So if you want, you can have trims that are attached only when safe is active. So if you decide to do that, I did that tonight while my camera crew was gone, I was flying our Omp Challenger, just for fun, okay? And you can do that here. You go into system setup, disconnect RF, acknowledge it, go down to flight mode setup, or excuse me, trim setup. See how it says common? F mode, F mode, F mode. Hmm. Then your flight mode is going to store separate trim based on your flight mode. Now I'm gonna put that back to common because I want it to be common for both modes. That is really helpful on planes that have unique and strange flap systems. The Challenger has one flap, a uh, full length uh, flapper on. So the entire length of the wing is an aileron and flapper on. So when I deploy them, I had tremendous amount of trim because there was some sort of asymmetry or the way that the uh, thrust was going over the wings, it was causing it to want to yaw. So I had to correct that with rudder and with a little bit of asymmetrical uh, droop on the flapper ons. So I was able to fix it, no problem. Then in the takeoff setting, same thing. I had another flight mode set up. And then in normal flight mode, there was a totally different trim. And it was weird. It was like trimmed normal, then it was trimmed different, then it was trimmed back to almost normal. It was very weird. Hmm. So, and it's very cool that you can do that. But most of the time, we don't need that in planes. All right, so now that we've fixed those problems and we've evaluated exactly what I did wrong, what we know that went wrong was that this thing wasn't spatially aware. So that's very important to check. Okay, so now what else do we need to do? We have safe. Um, named in the flight modes. So it's actually flight mode one, flight mode two. So it's AS3X or safe. And we have the audible, audible, that's set. We have auto leveling set up only in safe mode. And we have all of the corresponding uh, gains attached here. So we got the gains for AS3X mode. Um, we have all the controls going the correct direction. We have throttle cut, we have timer set up. What else do we need to set up? We set up dual rates and expo. Dual rates and expo is set, set up. up. Mm -hmm. Okay. We did that before we ran out of Yeah, phone we did. Battery. Yep, that's right. So we do have that set. So really at this point, I could go out and fly this with the exception of the fact that these wings are not attached here. Now, it's probably not a huge structural issue, but my concern is that I could get one side there. I think that'll go fine. But then this one really kind of has to pull down, show the people what I'm talking about here. You're gonna have to probably get a little closer to show them what I'm talking about. You see how far off that screw is? Mm -hmm. So when I pull on this hard, it's just gonna wanna yank out the glue joint here or here. Right. I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do to resolve that issue. I had thought about trying to make um, a small piece of plastic just to, to bridge the gap or just let the glue cure overnight and then maybe it's strong enough to withstand that little bit of tension. So that is not cool. I'm not big on that. Um, oh, and then another thing that we set up and this was something that I did off camera for a second. So I apologize. I'm not trying to hide anything. It's just, I was dug into it. So that's when I figured out what was going on. Okay, so if you wanna come around here and we'll look at the throws. No, the throws on there. Okay, so there's takeoff flaps, there's landing flaps, okay? And obviously the ailerons keep working. I want to go into servo setup and go to travel. And because this is an FMS and not 
uh, uh, horizon plane, we can probably overdrive our servos. Now, why do we want to do that? I'm going to go to center. I'm going to turn this all the way up to 150 and I'm going to back it off to like 145. Sometimes digital servos get weird at the top of the range. So now look at my right servo. It goes down and it goes up. Okay. And what you got to do is you have to make sure you're not going to bind. So I'm just like literally looking. Okay. So it's hitting there. It's not hitting there. So on the downward travel, it looks like we're bumping, possibly bumping. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to pull my flaps and then see, I think we're okay at that setting. So I might set it to like one, 140. Okay. So now I'm going to look again. Yeah. So I'm going to set it to 140, which the rationale for that is that I want to make sure that if I do have droop on the ailerons, to make this huge long flap, I want to make sure that I still have a lot of deployment in that mode. Okay, because it takes, you know, sometimes it feels like the plane doesn't want to roll when you do that. Okay, so now I have to do that for the right aileron and I have to do that for the left aileron. So I'm going to go to neutral setting and then I can scroll this in to the same amount. And you'll note that on the flaps I have 145 on the top and 125 on the bottom. Now, why 125? Because even though I centered those things, there was a little bit of a deviation here. So what I did is I went to the top setting where they're totally retracted, the normal flight mode, and then I adjusted this value. See what's happening there? It's going up like spoilers. So that's 150. I said, okay, well, I don't want to be there. So I just kind of played with it until I got 125, looked like it was perfect, okay? Then I dropped them down. And then I dropped them down even further and I noted that I could get a lot more throw out of there. So I want to be able to really change the shape of this wing and get some barn door action from those flaps. Now this isn't a Cessna 150, it's a Cessna 182. So it's more of a high performance, faster flying plane. Um, I think we have another Cessna 182 that's a UMX. So, or this is modeled after a Cessna 182. It's not actually marketed as a Cessna 182, but that's pretty much what it is. So I want these things to go down a lot because I want to reduce, uh, I want to increase drag a lot and I want to change the shape of the wing so I can really slow that thing down to a crawl. It's probably going to slow down to a crawl even without this. Um, now, if that doesn't work well, then what I can do is I can change the direction that my flap moves. Now, these percentages are always from 100 to plus 100, so minus 100 to plus 100 um, because of the nature of the flap mode in spectrum, okay? Same thing with the correction there, it's between plus 100, minus 100. But then the crow is the same thing too. You'll note that I use crow as a negative value. Now, if I went to a positive value, see what happens? Now they go up. So we talked about that earlier, but I don't think you guys necessarily will recall, but there was a whole lot less throw because we were set to plus 100 and minus 100. Now we're plus 145 and plus 145, which means we get another half half again worth of play on that servo. That is something that is usually disallowed on E-Flight products because of the way that they set up the absolute positions on the servos, okay? Which is why if you ever split off a plane that's Horizon set up and you just like try to set up flaperons, you'll have one aileron that wants to move more than the other one because they've disallowed movement on the stock one and then the aftermarket one is allowed to move free. Mm. You'll notice that. Um, okay, so as you can see, this works really sharp. That's a lot of crow. I just think right now I want to go for the other way. That's what I'm going to do. Now, you still have a lot of differentiation here, but it's not as much as you would have if you were out of that setting, okay? Because 100 here is the full throw in that other menu, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this back to where it had been just cause that's the way I wanna run these. So full landing flaps, and I wanna keep some for ailerons. So I don't wanna go to full 100, but let's show them what that looks like. So that's way down. So I'm gonna go to like, let's call it 75%, okay? So not only does that look cool, but it's still gonna give us a lot of functional aileron, okay? And your aileron deployment, when it goes up above the wing, you actually get more efficiency on that top part than you do by dragging down on the bottom. 
Okay. Mm. That induces drag. This spoils a lift on this side. So it's just, it's just, it's more efficient here because there's more airflow up here. That's like the absence of airflow. So over there. All right. So what else do we have? Sorry, that was probably a pretty bad explanation, but that's the way I'm going to set it up for now. We'll see how it flies. I'm excited to see it. We've kind of gotten into the weeds big time on this plane, but that's what we tend to do uh, here on Brian Phillips RC. We get really, really detailed in stuff that really probably doesn't matter because we know you're asking for it and that's what we do. Um, we take the simple and make it complex so that you don't have to. And then you can be like, oh, okay, I'll just use the Y cable. Yeah. <laughs> Cause it's probably gonna work just about as good. Um, at any rate, I think this, this plane looks really sweet. I can't wait to see it fly. You guys have already seen it fly. You had the added benefit of seeing it chronologically flight and then unbox build radio setup. So if the thing sucks, you don't have to watch all this. Well, we have to do all this so that we can fly the thing and put it in front of the video. So hopefully this thing is just as good as it looks because it looks absolutely amazing. Uh, short of, I, I would say, honestly, the only complaint I have on this plane so far, which is not the spinner, the spinner turned out to be very good. It's beautiful and it's quiet and it's balanced. Mm -hmm. That's very good. Good job, FMS. What I'm concerned about is this. I think that's gonna be potentially a problem. I did try to really, really, really tighten down these screws here just to see if that would help. And it didn't really make a bit, bit of difference. I think we might be okay when all the glue is totally set up and cured, but I'm nervous that it's still gonna have a propensity to wanna to slowly pull that out. Yeah. Because there's no way for me to pin this no. without literally taking out a drill and then I'm not gonna have any material to bite into. Right. Same thing up here. I could drill and you know, like put some backer on top and bottom and really hold that in, but then you're just gonna pull this one out instead. Right. So my whole take on this is, I don't know, there was those holes, I don't know if you remember me mentioning it, hey, maybe there was like a rod through the plane at one point. I think at one point there might've been a design where they had a rod that went through and held these in. So they had nowhere to go, right? Maybe that's the explanation for what that was. Also, it could be just a molding issue. Uh, you know, maybe ours is a little bit, little teeny bit off. Maybe the two halves of the fuselage got glued together out of square. I don't know. Maybe it didn't get jigged right. I'm not really super concerned because we have another 12 or so hours before we're gonna be landing that. If we land it and it rips out, then I'm gonna have to take action on it. The action may be as simple as putting a piece of tape to hold the thing from here all the way under to the other side and then undergird it from here. That will allow the left and the right wing to have play, but it's always gonna pull the opposite wing so it keeps them true down to the fuselage. So we shouldn't have to do that. This is uncommon for FMS to have a structural issue like that. I'm very, very weirded out by that. In terms of the tail, the tail went together like terrible because of the gluing and partly because of, I don't know, I could say maybe a little bit of lack of skill on our part, but I tend to think it's just not a great design. Uh, yeah. Our expectation is bolt together, LEDs and flaps. They got at least two of them. That's not really good. Not installing all of the control horns. Not, yeah, the camera crew hates that, but they weren't glued on. They were not glued. And they have very good surface contact and the control horns are very strong and resilient and the clevises were strong and resilient. And by the way, they look the same on camera, but sometimes you can break them in half by over bending them. Yeah. And trust me, some of the Chinese brands, they will break while you're screwing them on. And the one thing I can say, even though I was annoyed, when you put them on yourself and you, you know do it on. when things are in pieces, it's really easy to make those fine adjustments and get it really good to start with. This so, thing is beautiful too. It is a plus. It does look really nice. It looks really, really nice. I just hope- Those LEDs are really bright. I just hope that I didn't overcomplicate the wing for no gain. And that's totally possible. <laughs> but if this thing flies awesome and you're like, how come yours flies so much better than mine, Brian? Then you'll be like, well, I don't know. Maybe you didn't do the awesome crow. Then you can take that thing apart. <laughs> that's gonna <laughs> suck by the way. Um, anyway, getting back to the point, I love this plane. I love the looks. Obviously we have a little bit of a special place in our hearts. Oh, I guess I should probably grab this plane and show it since I've been talking about it. What? The Cessna one. Oh. Yeah, 182. Yeah. So this one, oh, it's so dusty. Don't show it too close. Okay. But obviously we made this thing so beautiful. And yes, this was a UMX. It did not have flaps. We added flaps. I have a second receiver in this UMX plane because I so badly wanted flaps. And yes, this thing has always been one of my favorites. Um, in terms of looks. So 
Now here we've got a big brother and in the, the short period of time that we've been doing this, look at this, we've got two more. And then what was right before all this? We have the 150T. Exactly. Downstairs. So yeah. we've gone from one Cessna to all of a sudden five, five like in the course <laughs> of about a week and a half. So without further ado guys, and by the way, I don't even think you can get this one anymore. I don't think so, so my apologies, you guys know I love showing you things you can't get. Things you can't have. You know, we used to do that. We, we would have a running joke that we would review stuff. Of course, we weren't working with any companies back then. And we would review an item like, we did two different items within about six months. And they were both immediately discontinued. It's like, yeah. oh, Brian reviewed it. Discontinue that <laughs> son of a gun. So it was the, the Apache helicopter that got dis from Blade, which was awesome. I don't know why they discontinued it. It's so sweet. And it's still sweet today. I still have it and it still works. And then there was another one that we flew and we had a problem with and Horizon ended up sending me that plane as a replacement for it. Oh, that's right. It was a biplane and I forget what it was called, like the vampire or something. Mm, Viking. Viking. Was it the Viking? Yeah, it was the was Viking. The How do you remember that? I don't know. It was a Viking and I flew it one time and we had a major issue on one of the digital servos that Horizon never wanted to admit was screwed up. And I had video of it screwing up and they were like, it doesn't prove anything. I said, yes, it does. <laughs> so anyway, here, you, there you have it. This thing is sweet. I love it. Uh, I hope it flies half as good as it looks because it looks very good. And as usual, guys, we've already mentioned it a few times in the video, but hey, what's another time? It's already been like four hours. Uh, if you like this plane, you want to help support our channel, buy it from the links below. That's the easiest way you can put some money into our back pocket that helps to fund all of this. Um, you may not realize this, but we pretty much spend a lot of time on this channel. Um, if you aren't already aware from watching the five hour video, it's a lot longer than five hours to actually put this thing from start to finish and actually have it online and producing uh, viewership. So that being said, that's the first and easiest way. Secondly, we have PayPal and we have Patreon. Patreon costs uh, like a lot. I think our first cycle, I couldn't believe it was like 17% worth of fees. So. If you're like me, that just annoys you. So PayPal is the easiest way to do it, but PayPal is not monthly. So it's your, your, your call, however you wanna support us. We don't care if the support just comes from watching videos, liking the videos, coming back, subscribing, and just interacting with us in that way. That really does help our channel too. But the easiest way to help us financially would be to buy the planes because that's ultimately what we're here to do is to help bring people into the hobby, bring people back into the hobby, Prevent one and dones, that's one of our big things. One and dones meaning you buy a plane that's way too advanced and you quit immediately because you crash it and you're like, what happened to my $600? We're gonna help you to avoid that with advice that you don't wanna hear probably, which is no, just like your parents used to tell you, no, don't do it. We wanna help you to find success. We don't want you to just buy stuff. I mean, that's great, but like if you buy one plane and you quit the industry and you, and, and you move on to you know, some other hobby, then what good is that for our hobby? We need millions and millions more people doing this because we need to have legislative clout to keep the freedoms that we enjoy flying these beautiful things. And the, the only way to get that is to have millions of annoying people complaining to their legislators. I'm serious. If, if there aren't millions of loudmouths saying, hey, Amazon, that's my freaking airspace. No, you may not have it. And Google, screw you. You may not have my airspace. By the way, this is a Google hosted video. So Google, please let me keep it. Anyway, um, so what I'm saying is we need millions and millions of people, not hundreds of people. You know, not people in clubs, not the AMA, like over here doing nothing while the federal government crushes our dreams. We need millions of loudmouth, annoying people that call their legislators. That's what gets things done. And then Google spending billions of dollars too. You know, so whichever one, I mean, honestly, we can overwhelm their money by just being super annoying to our legislators. I'm serious. So rant over, this is at the end of a very long video. If you're still watching, you're probably pretty serious about this too. So those are like four or five main details. It's, it's not about like raising money so that we can, you know, like have a habit. I've already got hundreds of planes. I don't need another hundred planes, but do I want another hundred planes? Yeah, pretty much. But I'm telling you right now, what we're here to do is help people learn how to fly, bring, bring in the joy of this whole thing to a bunch of new people, and then also helping to bring people back in that don't understand what binding means 
and helping you to understand that there's computerized transmitters and you can get so much more technology for so much less money now and you could really enjoy it. You too. Um, so if you've got 72 megahertz crystals sitting in your basement and you've got a gasser sitting down there and you're like, Brian, I really want back in. We're here to help you go from where you are right now to where you wanna be in two or three years. Which, and that's the other thing too, guys. Don't forget, what other industry right now is not instant gratification? This is not instant gratification. We live in a world of instant gratification. If you wanna fly airplanes, too bad. It's gonna take you a year and a half or two years to get good at it. So yeah, we gotta talk people into that. That is hard right now. You can get an app on your phone, you know, to wipe your butt. You know, you don't need, yeah, well, I, there's an app, I, I'm assuming. But anyway, there's an app for everything and people don't wanna spend any time on stuff. This takes time, it takes effort, it takes a little bit of money. You don't have to be rich to do this. You can be rich and do this and you also can be rich and not do it because you don't put the time in it. So the idea is we're trying to talk people into this like huge lifestyle decision and we need millions and millions of you. So we have a big mission here. So help support the mission. No, we're not sitting here doing XFly videos. We are not going to um, do political videos to try to talk you into this or that. What we're here to do is help you love this enough to care enough to take a stand. And by the way, also we love these things. So we wanna bring you the latest and greatest and that's why we work with so many different companies, not just one company. We aren't Horizon you know, toys, we're not FMS toys, we're not Bitco Hobby toys, we're not Banggood toys. We, we love all of those companies. And if they bring good product, we're gonna bring good product to you in front of the camera. And if they send us products that don't quite work the way that they're supposed to, we're gonna show you how we come, uh, come back and fix these things so that you can enjoy the product that you thought you wanted. So, which is why we uh, maybe sometimes make fun of Dynam so much, because they're easy. Um, all right, guys, that's pretty much, we've stepped on every toe we can, and we got that all out of the way in the last five minutes. Thanks for watching. Come back for more. There's literally thousands of videos, like 1,600 some odd videos right now. If you wanna watch them all, when you get caught up, we'll be working our best to make sure that you aren't caught up by the time you're done, because we have more coming. Thanks for watching, guys. Okay, so my wonderful camera crew caught me saying something accidentally. I was saying we don't do X fly videos. No, we do do X fly videos, but we don't do X jet videos, which are pertaining to the FAA rules and things like that. So my apologies. Bruce does a great job on those. I'm gonna just let him have that whole territory because he's very intelligent and he's very good and articulate, even though he's in New Zealand and not on mainland USA, but we are. So anyway, sorry about the confusion, guys. That's what I meant to say, and the camera crew caught it. And so here I am correcting myself, which I'm used to. Come back for more. YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. Look at the Sky Trainer 1400 by FMS. Beautiful, scale looking. Look at the pilot. Look in the windows, look at the instrument cluster. Beautiful flaps. We set this thing up with some reflex. In this case, we've got everything going downward. AS3X and safe equipped. It is just a gorgeous scale creation. And we're gonna fly it right now for you. We've got a five minute flight timer. So we're gonna see how this does. We'll back taxi it out, take off flaps deployed. Beautiful scale looking thing. Can't wait to get this in the air. This is a plane I've wanted to have for a long time. We've been doing lots of different Cessnas. Oh, look at that beautiful bright LED, green on this side, white on the front of the wing, and then of course red. Oh, good turning radius. Mm -hmm. All right, take off flaps deployed, here we go. Oh, she's alive. Out of the flaps. Need a little bit more gain on the AS3X. Okay. So far, so good. It's about 60 to 70% throttle there in flat and level flight. We're back to about 50. Need a little bit of trim. There we go. I feel like it's good on the trim for the elevator now. Nope, we're still a little bit, a little bit too much. There we go, a little bit better on trim. There we go. Oh yeah. 
She's feeling rock solid, man. That thing is so pretty. Hey, can we go up a little bit, please? Mm -hmm. Feeling a little bit of roll there. Giving it three clicks of trim on the ailerons. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Seems to be stopped now. I'm gonna probably have to go up to four times on the uh, stabilizer. That's surprising. I didn't expect that. Mm -mm. Okay, now we did set this up with some pretty aggressive flaps. Looks like we need a little bit more down elevator correction and then full landing flaps. Oh man, that thing slows down a lot. And we've got a little bit of a roll or excuse me, not a roll, but a yaw with full downward flap deployment. This is something I just experienced the other night with my Omp Hobbies plane. And so I set up flight modes to deal with it. Guys, just look how slow this thing is now. That is awesome. I love the way it looks. The down elevator correction seems pretty stinking good. Obviously, when you've got the full flap deployment like this, the full length wing, it is quite insensitive on the roll authority, but that is correct for flying, of course, because you're not gonna be doing a lot of rolling in a landing sequence. So let's go ahead and get out of that. We're gonna go to the takeoff flaps, out of the flaps all together, get a little extra speed going, about 50% throttle flying into the wind right now. We're gonna turn around and try to bring it under the power lines and see if we can do a touch and go. This thing flies way more scale than the 100, or excuse me, the 1220 Ranger that we just reviewed. Touch and go, nice. We put the wings next to each other on the Ranger and the Ranger's wing was almost as big as this in terms of its front to back measurement. This one's a little bit longer and way bigger control surfaces, but they are needed. Whoa. Definitely a much more challenging plane to fly. Not hard to fly, just more challenging than an extremely easy to fly plane. Look at that beautiful shadow on the ground. Oh, that is so cool. Gives you a real feel for the scale. Takeoff flaps coming in. Gonna get that nose down just a little bit. I need to do a trim adjustment, or not a trim. Okay, full landing flaps. Let's try to bring it in for a... <laughs> Boy, those landing gear really wanna, they wanna get you lined up with whatever direction they're going. There is no play on it. Man, it looks good. Okay, so a couple things to check. Let's go back in the shade so we can see. We need to make an adjustment to our gains, okay? So we're gonna click. This may not work from this angle. You need to be over here because then I can keep the antennas closer. Okay, forward programming. What are you, I'm not sure I can see. Gyro settings, AS3X settings. Change it to four. Whoops. Four times. Okay. Now we can turn this gain back to about half. Then I want to go to flaps, flap system. And I think I want to go, was it going down too much or up? Oh crap, I can't remember now. Let's do 13, we'll see what it looks like. I think that's what I was having to do was, I was having to ride the elevator. So we'll try that. I might be backward on that guys, I apologize. We'll give you a follow up on that. That's a five minute flight so far. There's no way we're out of power, so we're gonna go ahead and continue onward. Take off flaps deployed. Oh, beautiful. So much more rock solid, folks. Look at this. I've got it rock solid to where it's oscillating now. See, full speed, oscillation. Now backing it off, as you can see. Oh yeah. <laughs> About 50%, that's where we want it. Okay, four times it is. Man, that looks so good. What are you thinking, camera crew? It looks really good. Out of the takeoff flaps. 
So we're gonna see how the trim looks going forward. Right now, we're gonna be out of the controls, safe. We'll get up a little more altitude, show you the limits. There's our limit for roll left. There's our limit for roll right. Boy, it's a kind of a lot of limit. Okay, mm -hmm. let's get you a flat and level and then we'll show you up. Okay, it's about 70% throttle, limit up, limit down. Okay, let's show you safe with takeoff flaps deployed, 50% throttle, full landing flaps here with safe. Look at that thing, out of the throttle altogether. Okay, so we got a downward and right dip, okay. So just kicked it out of safe and you can see the jolt. Just wanna show you, it'll do some aerobatics, but not much. Surprising with such a huge, gigantic aileron. I just don't think this thing's designed to be uh, an aerobatic plane, which is exactly to be expected. Okay, here we go. We'll do a big loop. Not a very clean one, by the way. Goodness gracious. Don't want to rip the wing off. You can see that left wing is really not happy with me on that maneuver. Just like a real one would be. I'm going to get a little altitude. We'll see if we can do one barrel roll. Okay, as long as you keep off of it with the heavy G's, then you'll be good. Okay, full landing flaps. Let's watch a steep approach. Keep in mind with that setup the way we are, you need to be prepared to use your rudder to help roll the plane. Okay, out of the flaps. Wind's coming from left to right, so let's go into the bowl and we'll try for another approach, except this time we're gonna actually fly into the wind, which is always desirable. Full landing flaps coming in. We still have plenty of throw to actually get the thing down. A little bit of slip there. <laughs> Woo! That was a nasty bounce. We're gonna back taxi and try that again. There is no way I'm gonna put up with that for a landing. Okay, takeoff flaps deployed. All right, let's try this too. I wanna try something real quick. We're gonna click in here to the flap system and we're gonna go with, we're gonna do proper crow. So 100% on the bottom position. Did you mm -hmm. get it yet? Yep. There you yeah, go. Hold still. Okay, so it was minus 75. All right, so here we go. So we're gonna walk out of the menu. So when we get full landing flaps, you see how the ailerons go up, but they still act as ailerons, okay? So our takeoff flaps are unchanged. And I feel like we got our correction factor right. And yes, my gains are about halfway, just a touch over half at four times. That's pretty incredible. Okay, here we go. Nice scale looking takeoff here. Oh yeah, beautiful. I think this could use a, uh, okay, out of the flaps now, getting up to speed. We're gonna go straight around into the bowl back toward us and then we'll double back around and kind of come in for a left hand base leg. Take off flaps coming in. We're gonna watch how this crow works. Right over the tall tree and full crow. Very easy to control. Can't, can't tolerate that guys. So this is our 10 minute timer coming up. We set a five minute timer and we're back to the second one. Okay, so it looks gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. That red light looks nice. Okay, full crow coming in. Just relaxing. Gonna lose some speed. And there you have it, guys. Very unexpected flight performance compared to the 1220 Ranger, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot different. Very, very, very different flight performance, folks. 
This is definitely not a beginner plane, even though it's called the Sky Trainer. I would say if you're looking for a trainer, stay away from this one and go with the 1220. You're gonna be a lot happier. This plane is absolutely gorgeous, but it is not forgiving at all in any way. Very surprising, very, very, very necessary to use the AS3X. Safe does work, but I would definitely say this plane on takeoff, on roll, on flight, looks beautiful. But boy, it is challenging to get those wheels to sit down exactly right. But look how freaking gorgeous it is. Oh my goodness. Spinner is absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. We had some challenges building this. You notice the anti-crash beacon on the top of the tail? That turned into a bit of a challenge. We also had a challenge with kind of getting the wires out the bottom. There's a bit of a, like a, I, a laundry chute that goes from the top of the wing down to the bottom so that you can pass through that glass canopy. Another challenge is that the uh, canopy itself is not very thick of a plastic, which is good for weight, but it's bad for uh, when you go to pick it up, don't grab it, it'll break. I didn't break mine, luckily. And then challenge number 14, the antennas that look so dang good on the top, just don't install them. When you put the battery in this thing, it's a bottom tray, mm -hmm. bottom load. I feel like if you're gonna do crow, crow goes up or crow is off. I'm gonna turn crow off, crow is off. Crow is off, okay? We're gonna go back up. I trust that we got enough power for another couple of circuits and then we'll check, check the battery. If this thing dies, just so you know, we're at uh, about 10 minutes of flight time I'm gonna just reset the timer because I've been taxing a bunch. Okay, takeoff flaps, beautiful scale. Takeoff, little bit of crosswind, as you can see from the change in the position of the plane. We're not gonna do anything fancy. We're gonna literally come around. You wanna come to where I am, please? That's not where I am. Okay, takeoff flaps. Landing flaps. She's still alive. Woo! Okay, I'm not taking that. We're gonna go around and do it again. I think part of the problem too is we flew that Ranger 1220, which is basically a beginner plane in really calm conditions. Takeoff flaps coming in, landing flaps coming in on this base leg. We're gonna try to keep in about 15% throttle and then just fly it in like you would a real one. That tricycle is not forgiving, guys. We're gonna turn that into a touch and go just because of where I ended up on the runway. The tricycle will tip you over just like it does on the F-16, for instance. You wouldn't think so with such stout landing gear, but it, it is pretty much making it uh, happen. Oh man, I wanna show them grass offs, but I'm not getting this plane dirty. It's too beautiful. Okay, a little bit half altitude landing here. You can see it handles the tight quarters just fine. Whoa, buddy, no way, no way. We're not putting up with that. Going up over the tree line. We're gonna go down to this low point and then double back like we usually do. Try to counter the uh, cross winds. Okay, full landing flaps coming in. Full up elevator, by the way, right now, guys. Look at that. I had no idea how much the crow was helping. That's incredible. Mm. Okay, all right, we're gonna turn crow back on. I just gotta make sure it's not, ro it's not rolling. Okay, so we're going back to, gosh, flap mode, flap system. We're gonna do 100% because it's working good. And then we're gonna take off here. I'm, I'm gonna double back around actually if I can. Oh yeah, we should be good. Let's take off with the wind this time. No flap takeoff. We'll try to bring it up real slow and scale-ish looking. And she's alive whenever I want. Beautiful takeoff. Takeoff flaps coming in now finally, now that we're in the air, which is kind of an unusual way to do things. Let's do some bull flying for a minute. Yes, we are pushing the limits of the battery which I'm just kind of realizing just how long it's been. It's about 12 minutes 
six seconds right at the exact moment. Getting into dangerous condition here. We've got crow deployed. I'm just gonna watch this thing fall like a brick. Look at that. Look at that thing. Look at the rate of descent. Control the rate of descent with the throttle and boom, bam! I can't end with that. It's not enough for me. I gotta do it again. Okay, out of the flaps for efficiency. I'm getting to where I'm going. I've got a meeting to get to. Look at this. Take off flaps coming out. Watch this rate of descent. 15% throttle not changing it. Locked in the throttle. Look at that rate of descent. Into the takeoff. Now look at the rate of descent with, jeez. You do have to control the rate of descent if you do 100% crow, guys. That is really cool and also makes for a very easy landing. Takeoff flaps. Okay, we're just in takeoff flaps. Let's shoot this again, going down to the low point and then base leg. Now, crow, look at that thing come down nice and level. You have enough power to get out of the trouble, but not so much that it's not scale looking. Okay, so takeoff flaps there, about 50% throttle, no throttle. Crow, out of crow, crow, out of crow. Oh, out of, out of flaps all together. Look at that. Woo -hoo -hoo! Okay. That was crazy. Did you guys see how fast it dropped when I shut off the flaps? I'm telling you, these scale planes with the long, narrow cord, just like this, they need flaps. And I think that's part of the reason why I bust the chops of all these manufacturers for not giving us flaps, because I just want it for fun. Okay, so takeoff flaps coming in, about 10% throttle here. Okay, now we're gonna bring it down nice and low this time, and then crow at the last second. Look at that. Oh, yes! Okay, we're gonna try a steep takeoff. Look at that, see, you got power. Doesn't look very scale. Gosh, it looks good. That wing is not happy with us right now. Takeoff flaps coming in, one more approach. Trying to keep it nice and flat. Okay, full landing flaps. Also known as crow, about 15% throttle. There you go, guys. I wanna keep doing it. I wanna do it like 50 more times, guys. Let's see if I can turn around without getting in the grass. What do you think? Probably not. Mm. Well, not ah, dang it. Okay, so just so you guys know, that was uh, 41 seconds past the third five minute timer. Okay, so on 2200 3S, we're gonna go grab that and put the XBC battery checker on it and see what it looks like. Okay, so as mentioned before, Loading the battery in this plane is not, not a great aspect of this plane because it's under, it's on the underside of the plane. Also, they have no strap. So what I did was I took and made a Velcro slide to hold my batteries because I don't like to put Velcro on them, okay? So we'll go ahead and just lay this down. Do you hear that hawk? Hawk keeps crowing about yes. something. 16% left. Huh. That's actually that's actually pretty good because I wasn't being super hard on it, but I also wasn't being super easy. So what that means is I'm gonna go to my timer and I'm gonna change that timer to, why don't we call it, if we did 10 minutes, let's do 12 and a half minutes. Isn't that what we ended up with on the, 1222, the 1220 million? Or is that where we started? We started high on this one and then we backed it down because we weren't sure. Yeah, we weren't sure. Yeah. So yeah, uh, 2200 Gen 2, 30C packed. It did plenty good. It's not overly hot or anything. So I would say that that's pretty normal for a, a flight pack at the end of a flight. Um, thoughts on this plane though, I could tell you this. I was surprised how much adjustment it took to get this thing to fly the way I wanted it to. Um, surprised, not necessarily super disappointed. I wish the spar went a little bit further into the wing. I don't like to see that bend here. Um, if I'm gonna see a bend, I wanna see the whole thing bend. Also, that could be part of our problem too right there. 
And this is something I was going to address too. In our unbox build radio setup, um, we glued these things in and then I taped them additionally just to see if I could get them to stay. And as you can see, they wanted to pull out. Okay. I'm not sure what I'm going to do to keep those things in beyond basically releasing the pressure and letting them sit and then just sit and relax. I mean, obviously it flew, but the thing is the only way I can see to fix that is to take like a long piece of tape and go from here all the way down the length and then carry it way out the wing so that you've got this huge piece. It's just overwhelming whatever sort of pulling pressure there is. Mm. I don't know why we had that issue on this plane. I don't know if maybe ours is molded a little bit weird or if that's just a common problem on this plane. I'm gonna call it probably a fluke, but it might be a real thing. So if you get the same problem, glue them in, know that you're not gonna be flying that thing for a few hours because that thing has to set up. I'm gonna take a clear piece of tape and run it along here and run it out to probably about here. Good news is it's a white plane, so it should be no problem to get that tape down there. That's gonna help the glue until the glue is like set up to the point where it's not gonna come out. Um, also, some of you guys might not be in the same circumstances we are where we build it and then fly it within a few hours. In our case, we built this one yesterday. It sat most of the day, I would say 20 hours on that glue. It's very unusual. We glued the tail with the same glue. Mm -hmm. Everything is fine there. We glued these the same glue. We glued these the same glue. Couple other things too. The antenna, as much as I love the look of them and I don't know that I could go without them, they do get in the way loading the battery. If you're gonna lay this flat on a table, the antenna do not come out, they're glued in. So definitely something to consider. I do really like having this hatch access. In fact, we would have been really, really screwed without it. Yeah. You need this hatch, hatch access. And also we were talking about this laundry chute. You can see it right there where the wires go in from the wing. There's a laundry chute in there, that square thing. And that gives you a place to chase your wires down from above. Now we set up curl on this plane. It does not need crow. You could just do uh, the regular Y cables for flaps and ailerons and you'd be okay. But here's the thing, if you've, got the, if you've got the receiver and the transmitter to do it, it's very fun. It adds that extra element of adjustability and cool factor. And I love having crow on a plane that wouldn't ordinarily have crow because you can get them in and you can make them really sink fast like what you saw there. I originally wanted to run it as a full length flap as you saw in the video, but I just felt like the performance was so lacking that it's like, yeah, we're gonna go back to regular crow. And also you wouldn't have to run them up quite this extreme uh, to get that fun effect, but that's 100% up. So, but there's still plenty of roll authority. I felt like it was still very alive on the roll. Um, whereas when I had them down for a full length flap, flapper on, spoiler on, right now is what they are. It'd be flaperons down and they still act as ailerons. Um, I felt like it just really killed your roll authority and it makes for a very kind of scary landing. Yes, you can get it to work and yes, I could do some fancy mixing or shut off the expo in that setting or something like that. Um, but I just, I don't wanna go through that hassle. I'd rather the thing just fly good. And plus I love watching a plane that's coming into final and I can turn a feature on and make it sink faster or make it stop sinking, which is really cool. So I love those things, especially on a plane like this. What am I gonna do with this plane? It's not like I'm gonna go out and fly upside down and do aerobatics with it. It's not gonna hold up. You'll break the wings off. Um, but what you will do is you're gonna take off and land like a champ. Like you're trying to re-up your, your flight certificate so you can take your, your, uh, your buddies with you on a, a golfing trip or something like that. But I'm gonna sit there and just do take off and landing and take off and landing and take off and landing. And that's what I'm gonna do. I don't know about you guys, but yes, this plane is super gorgeous. It looks great. It flies good. It's completely unforgiving uh, on the landing approach because as soon as you stick this thing on the ground, it's going that direction, that direction, exactly. And uh, there is absolutely no forgiveness there. The landing gear are very stout and I didn't have a bit of problems with the nose gear, which is where I thought we were gonna have problems. Mm -hmm. uh, it did track very straight. So to its defense, that's great. Um, the spring is a little bit hard on the nose gear. I feel like it could be a little bit less hard, but honestly, it's fine. It's not like the spring is really doing much of anything for you anyway. This thing is so light. 
plus you're pivoting here. So I just don't feel like the spring is necessary. It's mostly a cool factor thing. And she could say like, hey, you guys, look, it moves in and out. Well, okay, well, it's, it's not really that necessary. So in terms of design, I love the design. In terms of scale lines, I love the scale lines. I love the way the pilot looks. I love the way the instrument cluster is laid out on there. You can see a, a, a glass screen sort of display. Did you show them that? Show them from just mm -hmm. in the canopy. Also, this is this little bit thin, which is not desirable, but it's also not a big deal. Uh, you don't want a super heavy canopy because we've seen that in the past and it almost always kills the performance of the plane, but it does help with structural stoutness. So in terms of problems with the plane, I would say the biggest problem is the wing. If it had a little bit more strength from here to here, it would go miles to help this thing fly better, which is strange. I didn't think that'd be an issue. Uh, it would help with the aerobatic capabilities as well. Even though I don't think most people are gonna fly this aerobatically a lot, I still wanna be able to do it. Okay, also, where else does this plane struggle? The plane struggles in the assembly. The tail is very challenging to put together because there is a single wire with like a 1S plug on it, a, a, 1A, a 1S pH micro plug, and it goes through the center of that assembly and you have to feed it through with glue on it. So again, could you do it in a different manner and get luckier than we did and have a better experience? Sure, you probably could. But at the same time, you know, we build a lot of planes. It's not like I don't know what I'm doing. Even I know it doesn't always look like that, but we do kind of know what we're doing. And we felt like it was kind of tough. So that being said, if you're a beginner, this is definitely not the plane for you, okay? Get the 1220 Ranger. It is very good and you will be very happy with it. This plane also, I think this plane, while it looks good in the sky, I felt like the 150 or, that's a Cessna 150 is what's modeled after. The Ranger uh, 1220 is very beautiful in the sky, mm -hmm. very striking colors, very easy to see up from down. This thing, it's, you, you don't get upside down, <laughs> you know, yeah. there's no reason to. I think for the average new pilot, this is gonna be um, a novelty item that you think you want and you think it's going to be easy to fly and you'd be wrong because it's not. It's actually harder to fly than I thought it was going to be. Now, is it hard to fly? No, I mean, it's not like, it's not hard to fly. It's just not as easy as some of the alternative choices that are going to give you a better outcome. So that being said, do I love this plane? Oh yeah. Is it for everybody? No. Is it for you? I don't know. You have to be the judge for that. Now, that being said, um, is it a stole plane? Yeah, you can force the thing in the air, but it looks stupid. I want it to be drawn out. So that leads me to my next point. And that is, are you gonna fly this off of grass? Probably not. I mean, wheel pants like this are gonna get clogged up really quick. They're gonna get dirty. And just look here, we have some pretty well manicured grass here. Let's see, look how the prop clearance is. You're gonna be cutting the grass right there. Yep. And think when you try to go live. Now it's not gonna tip over on you, but imagine how dirty that plane is going to be after you take off. It's going to have grass all the way down the whole fuselage. Yep. Now, does it look cool in the grass? I don't know. If you have a really, really, really short Bermuda grass, you know, like a golf green, oh yeah, you can fly that all day long. But you better have, <laughs> look, look at the prop clearance. It's like nothing. It's like three, eighths of, well, I would say that's three quarters of an inch on a good day. Plus you've got spring here, so it can, it can just about hit the ground. So anyway, in closing, definitely some major pros on this plane, definitely some major cons, which I was super surprised by. I figured this would be the upper echelon of the uh, Cessnas that we flew in the last few days. But really, I'll tell you what I like a lot, is I like the 1220 even better. It's another FMS product, very, very solid easy assembly, right? Do we even have any problems on assembly? I don't think so. That one was it, super easy. But it didn't have flaps. Right, so that like, was your biggest okay, complaint. Okay, so my biggest complaint on the 1220 is flaps. So put flaps in. So spend the extra 20 bucks, get an extension cord and one servo and some music wire that you got lying around and you can do it with one servo or just get two servos. You're on here. Or just get two too. servos and uh, you know, a Y cable that already that you already discarded to do your crow. And then you can yeah. set up crow, you could set up your wing type just like this plane, just follow the video, do everything we did on this one and you'll be golden. That thing would be so much fun. It's gonna do all the stuff you want it to do. It's gonna be like a little teeny tiny carbon Z 
150T, except it's, a, it's not a tail dragger. <laughs> and then also, um, this thing just looks great though, guys. It does. It, it, sitting in the hangar, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be the talk of the town, I can tell you that. So I would say, if this wasn't an issue, I would be a lot more inclined to highly recommend this plane. But that is, I don't know how to fix that, you know? Because there's not really a good way to solve it. So other than that, it's a sweet plane. So guys, you know why you're here? You're here to find out what I think of this plane and then you can apply that to your own uh, perception of how great it is, whether or not you wanna buy it. Obviously, if you're um, uh, intermediate to experienced pilot, you can totally handle this. If you're a beginner pilot, you can handle this plane. It's just that it's not gonna be as easy as you think. And so what's gonna happen is when you get a plane that's not as easy as you think, you're probably gonna crash it. You're probably gonna break it. And when I say break it, I mean break it to the point where you maybe don't wanna fix it. I mean, everybody noses over planes once in a while and they break a tail and you fix that thing. It's not that big a deal. You know, you, you pop a prop into the concrete and you gotta replace that thing. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about coming in on final and it hitting the ground and breaking the wing in three pieces and you're like, screw it, I'm done with it. So we want to avoid one and dones on this channel. And I don't think this is going to lead to one and done. So that's why I can say if you're a beginner pilot, you can do this. Um, this plane is definitely doable. If you do break it, it's going to be an easy fix. It's just foam. You know, it's not, not like it's going to be super hard. Uh, the spars stop about here. So I just feel like the support out here is a little bit weak. The lights are really bright. So this is gonna be good on a calm evening. We do have some wind out here today. So the wind is definitely a factor. But I think on a calm sunset evening, this thing is gonna look absolutely glorious because FMS gave us flaps and LEDs. And here's the funny thing. I still like the one that they didn't give us flaps and LEDs on better. So that's something for you. Um, also, this, I believe, has been out for a little bit longer. So I think some of the newer building techniques were applied to some of the other uh, Rangers, uh, the, the Ranger 850 and then the Ranger 1220 are newer releases. So they have some of the more easier building techniques uh, applied, which makes a big difference. We had to put on every... Every control every horn. Control every control horn. Linkage. Yep. Well, not the linkages that go to the fuse. Okay. Those are yep. already on there. Yep. So Flash that's just arms. something that, that we come to expect um, from some of the inferior brands, uh, not FMS so much. So that was a bit of a disappointment, but to be honest with you, it wasn't a, it wasn't a deal breaker for us either way. Uh, also the cowl is magnetically attached. We opted to tape ours on and then cut if we need to get in there to work on the, the motor. It's very big open cavity in there, which is super nice. If a guy were so inclined, you might be able to work out having a battery going from the front, which would be a lot easier than this. Mm -hmm. I find this kind of hard to take off. So have we touched on all the details? I feel like we've been very exhaustive on this build. This is a long video, guys. Um, when we have a long video, you can conclude one of two things. We either hated the plane because it was terrible to put together, or it was an awesome plane that was hard to put together. There's usually not a lot of middle ground. This one's probably somewhere in the middle. I feel like the long build uh, was long because there was a couple of different design issues that could have been worked out, but it's not beating up this plane. If you like this plane, just go through the trouble. It's not that big a deal. It's not like a Dynam here, no. okay? We're not talking about Dynamesque issues. We're not talking about where you can't get bolts to line up and you gotta like do surgery to get the thing to, to go together. Yep. No, it's nothing like that. But I will say this, it took a lot more work than the other more modern style builds. And so you need to be aware of that also. Um, and, and to the tune of like couple hour build. Yeah. If you really get right down to it. And if you're doing an NX8 with an AR630 like we did, we did one without antenna this time and we actually tucked it on the side. We ran into one other problem on that and that was that it never got its spatial awareness right, but we managed to get everything working fine anyway. So just keep that in mind. If you get an AR630, it might have the same problem. And we laid it, I don't know if you guys could see this earlier, it's right there. And yes, that's a little bit of hot glue just to kind of tack it in place. See how it's in sideways? That receiver thinks it's facing that way and it's actually facing this way. That should cause other things to not work right, but we got around it all. So I don't care as long as it works, I'm satisfied with it. And it works in every facet. Safe works, 
AS 3X works, the correction on all three axis work, and that's part of the reason why you go through the trouble of doing all your safety checks before you fly. If I wouldn't have done the safety checks, my aileron roll was backward. That's what led me to the, the fact that that was being perceived backward. So we ended up going through the setup twice, and on the second time, it fixed the problem. And then also, I made an assignment to a switch wrong. So a couple of different things that we did wrong on the build. But boy, a lot of learning opportunities on this video. If you're an intermediate pilot, I would definitely watch it. You'll kind of go through the struggles with us and you'll learn some things that you may not have known before. So that's what we do here on Brian Phillips RC. How can you support us if you want to support us? Buy the planes from the video description below. If you don't like this plane, if you want the 1220 instead, we'll have links down a little bit further. Obviously, the 2200 Gen 230C, 3S pack was great. We got a really good flight time, 15 minutes, uh, plus a lot of jabbering time, which you already know. And then the NX-8 has been great too. The XBC 100 battery tester, if you haven't gotten one of those yet, one of the best tools in the tool bag. And we did use that a lot on this build. This thing's like under 50 bucks. I would buy it if you don't. This is not just a battery checker. It's also a servo tester, mm -hmm. but it does a really nice job of servo testing because you can you can do a lot of different uh, tricks, which you'll see in this video later. So if you guys are getting this, and then also you need foam glue when you buy this plane. So you might wanna get some foam to foam. You might wanna pick up an XBC 100 battery checker while you're getting these things, cause then you don't have to pay shipping or whatever, cause you'll hit your thresholds to get free shipping from Horizon. Um, but yeah, really, really good plane. Um, probably not the easiest going together and probably not the easiest flying, but when we shut off this camera, I think you'd be pressed to not see me out here taking about 50 more takeoffs and landings. Yep. Because that's what I plan to do. Yep. Anyway, guys, we might try to get you a short clip in the evening with a sun setting and just hopefully it's dead calm and we'll have a beautiful sunset, uh, golden hour flight with this thing because really where this thing shines is where it looks good and touchdowns and takeoffs are gonna make this thing look good, but they are not easy. So just be aware. All right, guys, you know where to find it here on Brian Phillips RC. We're gonna do the unbox build radio setup next. Support us, buy this thing from the links below. If you don't wanna do that, we got Patreon and PayPal as well. Thanks for watching, guys. Come back for more. YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. Look at this, we've got the Sky Trainer 182 by FMS. This is a beautiful, beautiful bird. Show them the glass screen simulated there on the cockpit. Mm -hmm. Beautiful chrome spinner. This thing, we set it up with Crow, which is really cool. And I hope that you'll enjoy that. We did have a variety of different sort of run-ins with this model, but we're gonna take off and just show you what it's like. 2200 3S Gen 2, 30C pack here we're flying on. Take off flap styled in. Look at that beautiful red light. Very bright, but directional. Look at that, that's so sweet. Nice calm afternoon, early evening. It's about 60% throttle there. Just relaxing into the speed. We're gonna come out of the takeoff flaps there. Gain a little bit of speed without adding any extra throttle. Just give it a really, really nice scale looking appearance chopping the throttle just a little bit look at that front facing light looks absolutely fantastic this plane is a scale flyer folks if you're expecting it to do acrobatic or aerobatic you might want to step back there you go you're probably going to be a little bit disappointed because it has definitely got some power but the wing is not gonna support the load if you do a lot of craziness. Okay, landing flaps here, coming in, and crow, 15% throttle, 30% throttle. Look at that thing. Just slows down, like, amazingly. So evidently, I didn't get the memo about mowing right now. The entire surrounding 15 lots, everybody's mowing their properties today. Oh man, that looks so good when the sun goes across the wing like that. So realistic looking. 
So from a standpoint of a scale plane, this thing is absolutely killer. Right in the ground effect, you can do no wrong. But I'll tell you where you can do wrong, and that is when you go put those wheels down, you better be going the direction you want to be going. This is our second flight. I've been disciplined to not fly it while the camera crew was out on family business today. We set this plane up with safe and AS3X. Okay, so here's 75% throttle out of the takeoff flaps, full throttle. Very good sounding plane. No vibration, no noise, a little bit of coordinated turn action there to get that low right overhead. Beautiful. Looks super fantastic like it's in a full cruise. We'll try another high speed pass here just so you can see what it looks like right over the tree line and then down. We'll go up for a bit of a stall turn. As you can see, very realistic scale performance. Don't expect what this can't do and you won't break your wing. Take off flaps. Going under the power lines again here. As you can see, it's pretty, uh, pretty amazingly smooth flying plane. Let's get up here and show you some safe action. Look at the shadow up there with it, so beautiful. Okay, coming out of this turn, we're going into safe now. Limited up, limited down, limited roll, still let your nose slip down, limited roll. Back into AS3X mode here. We're gonna scoot along to get it here in a hurry. We're about 80% throttle now, 90, 100% throttle, and right in there. Just beautiful. Got the sun in front of us, so it's changing the lighting quite a bit. Let's take a couple of passes inside here, camera crew, you good? Mm -hmm. Take off landing flaps with the crow. Okay, this is with full crow, about 40% throttle, 50%, 60% throttle just to carry out of there. Go into the takeoff and out of flaps altogether. We're gonna go back here kind of behind the house. We'll do a barrel roll for you. If you keep it nice and controlled, you can do whatever aerobatics you want, but it's gonna look a little weird in my opinion. Shooting the gap there. Love seeing those shadows. Matches our house nicely. <laughs> it does. A little bit of rudder turn there. Okay, let's go into the bowl. If you wanna kinda go up toward the edge of the house. That's good. I can live with that. Are you good? Mm-hmm. Okay, we'll go along the tree line and then enter. Okay, we got the crow just to slow us down. Trying to get into this nice and flat so it looks nice and realistic. Then we'll probably take a little bit of a turn for the uh, rear of the property here. Just really being reserved on uh, the use of throttle here to try to make it look ultra scale. Keeping it flat here. Had to get it in the throttle a little bit on that turn. Oh, I love watching that thing go through there. That is so pretty. So guys, if you're in the mood for Cessnas, you've really liked our channel in the last two to three weeks because we've done a lot of them. This one, of course, is modeled after the Cessna 182 because this is the Skytrainer 182. Touch and go. That windsock is nice and limp, the way you need it for this plane to be enjoyed properly. Not that it can't handle the wind, it just does better with none. And that's pretty much true for most aircraft. 
But I'm just gonna tell you this, guys, you're gonna enjoy the experience so much more. Okay, full landing flaps there. We're gonna slow it down, see if we can get a touch and go, possibly full stop. Ooh, that was pretty good. It's a little bit of wiggle just to help slow it down. Boy, that thing looks so real on the ground, doesn't it? I don't know yeah, if I'm gonna make it. The turn might be yeah. a little bit too sharp. Oh, there we go. Okay, so we are at uh, five minutes into our 10 minute timer, or 12 and a half minute timer. Man, look at that beautiful roll. That was no elevator. That was just speed and takeoff flaps. You do have to fly this thing into the ground. Let's do a takeoff flap landing here. Go around this one last tree and then kind of take it in nice and level. The lowest point there in the trees. See, even on that relatively decent landing, we had a nice bounce, but it went straight, so it was okay. It's calm enough, I can try to do a landing the other direction as well. That's what we're gonna do next. You doing good on zoom and stuff here, camera crew? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Whoa. See what I'm talking about, guys? Mm -hmm. Those mains are not forgiving but they also don't bend, which is very nice. The nose gear has a bit of a spring in it, but the spring is very hard. So watch this now. We'll try the same thing, different approach, 15% throttle, full landing flaps, gain a little bit of throttle, and it's got almost a built-in flare, which is just so cool. And we turn that one into a touch and go. I don't know, some of you guys are gonna think, wow, Brian, you've made a beautiful plane look cool, but it's kind of lame. I disagree totally. I love watching these scale looking planes fly like this. It's one of my favorite parts of RC. Full landing flaps coming in. Oh yeah. Another touch and go I can't resist. You guys may notice I get a little bit cringy on that direction going through the bowl. I'll go the other way, no problem. Did I hit the grass there? I don't know. I thought I heard it. I was looking up, I heard something. Okay, we're gonna try a no flap landing here. You gotta get into the speed. And I got a nice flare with the nose wheel up. Could have gone full stop, but we're gonna take off again just because it's so dang cool. I told you guys at the end of the first flight, which we'll probably plop that in the video here somewhere. I don't know if it's gonna be the second or third video or excuse me, the second or third part of the video, the unbox build and radio setup will probably be the middle. But just so you guys know, this is the type of plane you're gonna get and you're gonna admire its beauty and then occasionally you're gonna go out and do 30 or 40 or 50 touch and goes and you're gonna love every minute of it because that's just what you do with this plane. This is not gonna be the type of plane you go around backyard flying in the bowl trying to do crazy things. You could maybe do that but you'd have to have runways everywhere. So I can definitely say this, it's got power. I haven't really showed the power much just because look how stinky gorgeous the thing looks. AR-631 is what we're flying in that thing. Excuse me, AR-630 mm -hmm. is what we're flying. We went antenna less on this. And the reason we did that is because the nature of where all the wiring ended up, we just didn't really have a good solution with the antenna and we wanted the end pins. Then come to find out where we ended up plopping the receiver probably would have worked perfect with the uh, wires coming out the top. Yeah. We thought we were doing the right thing. Yep. So guys, if you're in the mood for Cessna action, this plane could be your thing. I've probably only broken 75, 80% throttle on three or four passes this whole show. I'm not even going to do it. I could tell it's going to be junk. I said, forget it. Okay, so, see, can't even hardly quite make a loop there. Oh, we'll try. There you go. We got a, at least one loop in there just to help you guys know it can happen. And then I'll go way out here and I'll try some inverted flight. Just so you can see that it works. Okay. Inverted, 
pretty lame looking. Why would you be flying upside down unless you were on your way to the ground in a fireball? And not enough to pull out this way. Oh yeah, actually there is. That wasn't too bad actually. Now it's making me want to challenge and tempt fate, but I just kind of hate the idea of making such a beautiful plane do these things that they would never do in real life. Okay, so that's our timer. Takeoff flaps coming in. I'm gonna bring it under the power lines right toward us going to the bull and then we'll probably go around for another touch and go or landing. Just going for maximum beauty here, you good? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go up over the tree line and then get into final. Through the bull, you good where you are? Mm -hmm. So guys, if you are remotely interested in this plane, I understand why, because looks, especially when it comes to these aircraft, really do matter. And I can tell you this, if you're after performance, you may seriously consider going with the Ranger 1220 because I feel like the performance is just a little bit, a little bit better in some ways. But this thing looks so much better than the Ranger. The Ranger 1220 doesn't look bad, but it's more cartoony. Mm -hmm. This thing looks so realistic and so scale. You play with the footage on this thing, it's gonna look like an absolute real plane. Out of the flaps there. Bring it up to the park and the tees. Just absolutely beautiful. Love the windows. And if you guys were keeping track on the time, that flight was 12 minutes and 30 plus one minute and 30 with virtually no downtime. So what does that put us at, 14 minutes? Yeah. So 14 minutes of solid flight time 2200 3S, throttle cuts on. We said we ran into a couple of different issues, so let's just run through those right now. Obviously, the end result is good, so this is not a dynam we're talking about here. These are issues that are definitely, uh, they are surmountable. So, there's a wire that goes to the anti-crash beacon on the tail, that was an issue. It's hard to feed the wire through a glued horizontal stabilizer and then also feed this. It's just challenging, okay? Not unsurmountable, but challenging. Secondarily, well, there's a second was we had to install every one of the control horns. Again, not a deal breaker, but kind of a pain. Thirdly, you have to glue this in. You have to also glue that in. Now, if you look really close, no matter how beautiful that looked in the air, I have tape run here and tape run here. And you're probably thinking to yourself, are you kidding me, Brian? No, I'm not kidding you. This hardware is fine. This hardware is fine. This hardware is fine. But because of our proximity to when we built to flying time, we couldn't get these things to stay. So I took a clear piece of tape and ran it all the way down the length of this because it is a structural component. And then I used a piece of tape like this and a piece of tape like this, and that just holds it so it doesn't peel back. Now, my hope is in three or four days, we can peel that off and we'll have no problems with this stuff pulling out of the foam. Because sometimes that foam glue doesn't set up as long in, it doesn't have a lot of tensile strength, okay? So it's just wanting to yank out the one half, okay? That being said, additionally, structurally, I think the supports go out to about here for the strut. This gets a little bit foldy out here, but if you're not doing extreme aerobatics, it's not gonna matter. And this plane is definitely so beautiful, you're not gonna wanna do it. It's just gonna be like, no, I can't do that. So, also antennas, you may wanna think about not installing them. It makes it very hard to get into the battery area, mm -hmm. okay? The battery area is down here. We put our receiver right there. You'll see it in the unbox build and radio setup. We tacked it in with a little bit of hot glue. We did run into one problem on the Air 631 as well too, or 6, 630 rather. And the problem we ran into, oh, by the way, there's no straps in this. So I made a Velcro loop, which I use to hold the battery in. Works really good. 
I can still get to my bind switch on the top of this receiver. There is no antenna, so it worked out nice. We did have to carve out a little bit of foam to get all the wires through. And there's a trough that you can see right there. That trough goes from the top wing all the way down. If you look past the pilot, can you see it? Is mm -hmm. this a good enough angle? Yep. There's a trough that receives the wires from all these, okay? It works okay. Oh, there's also wires for the LEDs that chase down. It works okay, but it is challenging to come up with a good place to mount your receiver. You may think about putting the receiver upstairs. If you do that, you're gonna need a few extension cords. Standard servo extension cords will do the trick. They give all the Y cables you need to hook up all the lights and all the servos. But in our case, we split off the aileron so that we could do uh, crow, which really helps to bring this thing down if you're flying in a wind and you can bring that thing down and shut the crow off and turn it back on. It's really cool. If you turn it on, all you have to do is control throttle to change your rate of descent. Very, very easy landing setup. Uh, we are in four times for our stabilizer, mm -hmm. four times. That's the first time we've ever done it. And you'll see that our gain is just a little bit past center. The thing flies rock solid. The stabilizer really works on this thing, okay? Um, that's the highest gain we've ever used on any plane, which is very strange. I think we can get away with a higher gain just for the simple fact that this thing doesn't fly exceptionally fast. Um, beyond that, what you see is what you get. It's a very good plane. It is worth the effort it takes to build. It is definitely as good as it looks, but it is definitely a lot harder to build than we thought. Mm -hmm. um, definitely, like I said at the beginning, surmountable. That's what you have to think about. It's surmountable. It's not like a Dynam where you go through tons of effort and then you end up with a crappy plane at the end that barely does what it's supposed to do. And every single, every single time you take it out, you have to fix it before you can fly or after you flew because something broke on it. Yep. That's not what you're gonna have here. This might be a little bit of an isolated incident. Maybe our glue wasn't quite right, but I don't think so. I think our glue was fine. Although that was Dynam glue. <laughs> I've used it on everything else. <laughs> Exactly. But if you know what you're getting into, like you can't show up at the flight field and think, oh, I'll put this together in 20 minutes yeah. and then fly with my friends. Yeah, That's you're not, not going to happen. Yeah, unless your friends are coming back tomorrow. Right. If you have a whole Saturday afternoon that you're going to sit around and enjoy building your plane. Yeah. Then you're okay. Yeah. But, but that's what you're going to do. Yeah, right. You're going to do it all day. Yeah. So that being said, also there's glue in parts. Mm -hmm. So you're probably not going to be flying right away. Yep. So you need to be aware of that. Also, the nose gear is springy, but it's so stiff that it's almost doesn't really do anything. Uh, it's cool. It's, an easy fe it's a neat feature, but it doesn't really do anything because it's so stiff. Um, if you took out the spring and you cut it in half, I think the spring would be more effective and it would help to dampen that nose uh, bang it down. But my experience on this plane, it sits like a real one does, which is pretty much nose up. So when you come into land, you're darn near dragging the tail. I mean, you have to have a perfect touchdown and these landing gear will shoot you. If you're off by three degrees and you're crabbing, it's going to shoot you the direction the wheels are. As soon as you touch down, there is zero slip. I don't know why that is. Um, if the runway was wet, maybe that wouldn't be true. But I mean, it just, if you're off at all, it's gonna suck you in the wrong direction. So again, these aren't necessarily complaints as much as they're more like, this is what you can come to expect from a plane like this. This is a very good plane actually. And I think they've had this one out for some time, but it's definitely worth a second look. If you, and this is 1400 millimeters, so it's a big plane. I mean, I'm six foot tall, so you can kind of get a scale for that. Um, not, it's not going to be anything near as big as, you know, like the Carbon Z Cessna 150T that we just did the other day. Um, that's going to be another 60% bigger than this. So it's, it's, yeah, it's pretty much twice the size of this. So just a touch under twice the size. And flight experience is very good on that too, by the way. But if you're looking for a scale, general aviation aircraft, which I think is a super underserved part of our RC uh, selection, this is a great choice. And this isn't cartoony, it's super scale and it looks scale. You know, there's not a fighter pilot in there with, you know, with a mask on or something. You know, it's just a regular general aviation looking guy with a normal looking face. There's and really nothing, nothing to complain about about yeah. that guy. No. So, are you gonna fly this thing off grass? Uh, probably not. Mm -mm. I mean, you could if you had super, super short grass that was really well, 
like super thick, super short grass, like on a, a green and a golf course. But I would say, generally speaking, if you don't want to be cleaning this thing every time you take it out, you're not going to want to do that. Um, also, there's a magnetic hatch uh, for the front, so you can get in there. We opted to tape it shut. The prop was balanced perfectly. We didn't have to touch it. The spinner, I was complaining about it because it's a snap-on style, but man, it is beautiful. Look at that mm -hmm. thing, and you spin it. You can probably see the camera now because yep. it's such a high shine. <laughs> so, in closing, is this definitely, it, this is definitely a good plane. It is definitely not for everybody. It's not as easy to fly as you might think, but it's not hard to fly either. So is this a beginner plane, a sky trainer? Uh, no, I don't think so. Mm -mm. I think if anything, you get the 1220 millimeter and you're gonna be a lot happier. The cord on the 1220, which is a much shorter wing, is, is wider than this. So just to give you an idea, it's gonna fly a lot more cartoony and fun and enjoyable and aerobatic. This one here is gonna be way more scale flight. Now, if you're into scale flight like I am, then that's not a bad thing. It's just a thing you wanna know. So, if you're choosing between this and the 1220, and you're a beginner, get the 1220, hands down. You're gonna enjoy the flight experience better. It's gonna make you feel better about your skills. If you get this, you're gonna feel worse about your skills, and when you do crash, you're gonna have more damage to fix, and it's gonna be a lot harder to fix because there's this plastic and things like this here. That's the first things that break and they're the hardest to fix. That being said, I don't think it's overly hard to fly this plane. It's just more a matter of, it's hard to get a greasy, perfect landing. That's, that's what I mean by hard. So if you wanna have perfect landings and you saw what I did there, what did I do? Take off land, take off land, take off land, take off land. And I love doing that. So. As soon as we're done with this flight, I'll probably go get another battery and do it again. This thing probably could handle a bigger battery, but the thing is, the bigger you go, the harder you are on your mains. The mains are very solid. They are very beautiful. They spin free. They're a little bit noisy. Um, not sure if there's really a great solution for that, short of putting like grease in there on top of the washers. There's a, the two washers on each side, it looks like, and that spaces the wheels inside the wheel pants. The wheel pants are very good on this plane. Some planes of this caliber have wheel pants that bind immediately. I mean, you don't even fly it and they're bound. Um, we haven't had any issues with these so far. I mean, granted, we've done two flights. So, any thoughts to add, camera crew? It's, it's a beautiful plane. It's very nice looking. If you want something that's going to be, like, I can tell you like flying it when you do takeoffs and landings. There's a bug. There's a bug? It's oh, extra it. scale. Extra scale. Comes extra with scale, bugs. yeah. The it's lights like a, are bright. I mean, it's the sun is shining right at it, and I can still see the lights. Yeah, right. Lights oh, yeah. Really good. It's going to be better when the sun sets. Mm -hmm. So that being said, not sure. And by the way, I don't mind the tint on the glass. I think the tint looks cool, but, you know, some people aren't going to be into that. Oh. So I would say the tint could be a little bit darker, and it might hide some of the indisparities of the cabin, but I'm okay with it either way. And the thing does taxi very, very good. I don't know if you guys really got a feel for that. Um, but it taxis exceptionally. Very sharp turning, very easy to control, looks super scale. Good ground clearance when you're on pavement with no rocks or any sort of debris. And when I say good ground clearance, I mean there's about three quarters of an inch. There is ground clearance? Yeah, there, yeah that's what I mean. There's, there is, <laughs> exactly. Man, look how real it looks though. I like that all of those cables and stuff are hidden. I know you have to fish them up through there, but oh, yeah. it looks really clean and neat. And the trough? Yeah. I agree totally. It was I worth agree. the three zip ties we used. Well, and there's we've done a lot of planes that are like this, and they end up, there's always something that gets shown that you don't want to see. Yeah. And I feel like this plane did a really nice job of really kind of hiding that stuff. And that's that's very cool. It's a mark of a well-designed plane in my opinion, especially when it's a scale plane. So in closing, help support the channel. Follow the link in the video description below if you like this plane. When you buy it, we'll get a small financial boost. And then if you're not into that plane and you want something else, we have tons more below. We also have master links to a bunch of different companies we work with that are just below this stuff. And we also have Patreon and PayPal 
The fee structure is a lot higher on Patreon if you're into efficiency with support. Uh, PayPal has like virtually no fees unless you're coming from overseas. And then I think it still can be zero fees if you do friends and family. But other than that, guys, that's it. That plane is awesome. The build is long, tedious, and extremely boring in my opinion. And I'm sure some of you guys will love it because we struggled with several steps. <laughs> and it seems like the more we struggle with these builds, the more you guys like them. So stay tuned. We're going to show that one next. And then at the end, we'll go ahead and plop another flight on there from earlier today. We had the sun to our back, so you get a different vantage point. It was a good flight. It was a little bit more windy though. There was some wind coming from the back and it was making this thing fly a little bit different. Also, we worked through the bugs on uh, flap settings and things like that. So you may wanna watch it just for the simple fact that we go over where we ended up. We can show you right now if we can get the exposure right. Actually, yeah, you can see. This is how we ended up with the flaps. Okay, and then you can see my gain. This is where I have the gain set, so it's just like one notch over. Or you can look here and you can see what the percentage is. So it was like 22% over. And then look at my trims, barely, a little bit on the elevator. So the plane flies really good though. And if you wanna fly it in safe, it'll do safe okay, but again, if you need safe to fly, this plane will hide the fact that you're flying in safe, but the landings are still gonna bite you because you really gotta grease it. That's it guys, stay tuned. So much more to come. Best audience in YouTube history right here on Brian Phillips RC.